Come on, man. Black people don't do and go no research like that. She hears somebody say it. She probably is doing her hair in the beauty salon. Somebody said she was in that garbage. Come on, give me a break. She just repeated what she heard. What a way to get started. All right. Hey, Gumbo, you got the scriptures? I, I didn't hear no scripture. I'm sorry. No, I thought, uh, Judd, didn't you just call it scripture? Uh, baby, you said it prove all things. I just asked her sister to disprove it. I mean, it was simple. She got mad. I said, sister, just where is it? She was like, ah, well, see, we should be talking about group economics and, 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 and Frosty the Snowman. Whatever. That's a liability. Mute my mic. Hey, can you All activate right. the chat? Uh, Hold on I, one sec, Sean. No, if, if somebody, if people want to say something, they need to come on stage. Y'all, people be acting crazy in that chat, and we be getting held accountable for what people say in the chat. So we ain't doing that. Like people come on stage when we when we get a topic that may not be too uh too hardcore, we're open to chat. But nah, people can jump on stage if they want to talk. And uh, speaking of that, Shron, um, we're going to come to you next. But before that, let me go ahead and plug the room, everybody. Y'all go ahead and share the room on all your social media platforms. Just got started, and Lord have mercy. Um, a hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter. And follow the moderators and the club room right here. And you can always email us, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. All right? Uh, hey, Shron? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I just still want to point something out. You notice how she would not recognize that kids come through the father first. Oh, definitely. Right. They, women don't want to recognize that. They just want to say, hey, if it wasn't for your mama, you wouldn't be here. I'm like, well, <laughs> I think if it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't be here. Right. Kids come through the father first in ter- in reference of, uh, I mean, in terms of um, ejaculations, correct? Yeah, the seed. The seed comes through the man. So if the seed comes through the man, right, What what's the egg then? The egg begins as a female every time. The, well, both chromosomes are, are in the man. This is why this is a very uh, difficult question to answer and just to concretely say... Uh-huh. One or the other is a prize Not because you know who's that? Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying, you know, I I just don't understand it. If the kids are inside the man right now, moving around life, right? The eggs, it, well, women eggs, they they stay for a while, they go and they die, right? It's only a certain amount. Men can have kids forever because the life is in the man. So I don't I don't get I don't I don't understand why that's a like. It's almost like asking somebody what color is jesus and they get mad it's like what's so if it's not a big deal what's so wrong with just saying the truth the truth no i get that i get that i'm not that, I, i'm it, not talking about that i'm uh, talking about as far as the topic of the room yeah yeah but I'm, but I'm just talking about this that topic. the truth is that the kids are in the man for mo- the majority of their life or how the gender of the children is in the man because yes you do possess both chromosomes but every life that's crazy begins as a female see how rude she is <laughs> the the seed is in the man the seed is in the man the seed is not in the woman life is comes begins with the man that's the truth it is what it is but people so the woman is just fertilizer, exactly. Exactly, <laughs> and, and damn, is, you are the fertilizer. <laughs> yes, I was just gonna say that you are the, you, fertilizer. the man is the fertilizer. <laughs> the is the fertilizer. <laughs> no, the woman is a fertilizer, <laughs> bro. Yo, see, fertilizers are egg. <laughs> our egg. Damn. That's why we have ovaries. So is is it life in the man or is it life in the woman right it's now? That's the problem. Is Y'all don't understand man. science. Is life <laughs> right is right now. Right, right. Y'all got everybody, y'all. We got sperm. Which one has life in them right now? The man. Exactly. The so man. how the hell are we the fertilizer? Where, we, where, we, where, we, where are we, we talking about? The kids we, are with the man right now. The kids are with the man, but we carry your You have no way to manifest it without a Drop the mic, Judd. Drop the mic, Judd. Drop the mic. 
kids are with the man right now. Y'all yes, know. for sure. We we understand that, but the man has to plant right. his seed in and the soil. You, right. You got to plant your seed in the soil. So we just hey, the soil. Hey, we're not the hey, fertilizer, baby. Hey, 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 no, so now let me let she said we don't understand science. Let me give you a little science. According to science, after the woman 1035, half of her eggs is gone. That's science. So what that means is that means eventually she has no more eggs. That means she cannot do no more kids. The man, it don't matter what age he is, he always can make kids. He always can put his stomach there, make kids. That's what that's right. Science. But he has to have a woman to and lay in. Not denying that, sister. That's science for you. You got men that tap out at a certain age. Yeah, that's the thing. We're not denying that we have to implant our seed into the woman. We're not denying that. But the thing is, is that women have this push of, if it wasn't for your mama, you came from a woman. And it's like, well, what about the man? That shows the feminism and sexism in our women to basically separate the kids and life from the man that that's what we're showing we're showing that every you know i think one of the sisters said we should be trying to figure out how to get work together but how are we gonna work yep, together? that was me the one y'all saying ain't oh, married and it's oh. unruly and rude <laughs> Cut me off. <laughs> you keep cutting people off that's why we can't believe that you're married unless you're married to a sip so but um but like i said women will quickly separate birth and bringing in life they will separate the man completely from that and not feel any type of way about it just like nah y'all niggas ain't shit you came from your mama it's like well when i came from my father first well 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 it's like yeah that's not the energy i'm coming with personally i can't speak for nobody else we're gonna be honest you know i think we understand the the role of the man and the value of the man we just don't want to be devalued for our part and our role in our position but we respect and value the role that god has the the authority that god has placed on the man who who said that away from you did not does not bring forth children. Who said that? Who on here said that? Because I didn't say that. Uh, she said, I nobody know, said that. that. I, nobody I, said that. We all recognize that women give birth to kids. Well, Judd, women, I know who said it. The sister's said? mind, the mind, their mind said it. They uh, interpreted that way. That's what it's just uh, okay. their mind. I'm telling yeah, you, you know, women do that sometimes. I understand like, that. Um, all the time. Pro black, somebody will say, "Well, that must mean you hate white people." You right? It's that thing in their mind. Fight, fight, fight. Which is why I made the point to say that questions like this only lead to more infighting. They don't really provide solutions because now we on here debating and arguing about who's the prize, and is that really helping the collective? Uh, what? Well, I don't know, know who the prize. You need, need to know. know. I think it's a good thing because you just. Oh, Lord. That's because y'all out here trying to talk to sisters who don't already know that y'all are valuable. That's crazy. Well, I'm married. Sister, I, you know, we married. I'm married, sister. You know, I've been married Likewise. for three years. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? I don't know what you're talking about, neither. I'm married with two kids. My wife understands. She's she online right now. She's somewhere down there. Matter of fact, to clarify, everybody, every moderator y'all see with the green bean, we're all married. And we're giving this topic because we understand it. So let's just clear the air real quick. My wife said that I'm the prize. Damn. <laughs> My wife understand that too, Chef. So I, I don't know. But I mean, uh, I understand my husband to be a surprise, a, a prize, but he uh, also understand me to be the same. So <laughs> I'm surprised you. Oh, you heard that little stutter? That that Freudian slip. All right, let's get back to the topic. We're speaking out of order, Michelle. A woman got us out of order. We had a um, a cue, but. Oh, I'm going to leave y'all to y'all peace with y'all biblical peace. Have fun, guys. Good night. <laughs> All right. So uh, we were right there. Right. You can't have order. If she stayed in the room, we wouldn't have no order. Straight liability. Moving everything you said. All right. All right. So we were on Shrine. Um, 
I, you know what, sis? I have not the slightest clue whether or not you even weighed in on the topic. I just heard a lot of yak, 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 a lot of talking. Did you ever say anything about whether you agree or disagree or what's going on here? Did you say something, Shrine? Kane, um, I said it was kind of difficult to concretely say who is the prize because scriptures um, supports that both man and woman is the prize. Um, you have, in the beginning, you have, uh, the woman who was made for the man, of course. Um, Uh and then you have the scripture that talks about a man that finds, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. And then I think some, someone says something about, um, the men being the provider and, um, you know, like the man being a provider, you know, his, you know, the responsibility load does make the man a prize. Also, it kind of makes a woman the prize as well. So it was kind of like a balanced thing to me. So to say, oh, the man is the prize concretely or and to say, oh, the woman is the prize concretely. It's just kind of it's just kind of difficult to kind of label that, you know, um, but that's, I, like, that's, I like that scripture you just said. You say he that fine of a wife. Fine is a good thing. How does a woman uh, learn how to become a wife? Well, <laughs> um, speaking from experience, a woman learns how to become a wife. Uh, if she... <laughs> I don't want to offend nobody. Okay. Yeah, Okay. I was um I was in my father's house. I did everything scriptural as far as like staying in my father's house until I was married. So that's how I learned how to become a wife by um being obedient to the order of, you know, being under my father's household. So would you say that you learned how to be a wife uh, from your father? Surprisingly, yes. Surprisingly and ironically, I didn't didn't learn how to be a wife from my mother. Even though my mother was married for 27 years to my father, I didn't learn how to be a wife from my mother. I learned how to be a wife from my father. Hmm. Interesting. That, that that's some it. that's some good stuff right there. All right. Well, hey, appreciate you, Sean. We're gonna go ahead and move on down the list. Hey. Quite a few people jumped uh, on. Read the scripture, read Sirach 26 and verse 14. Because one thing we realize is that we have a lot of it's a lot of women that we have a lot of women. You know, uh, black woman is probably the most beautiful woman on the earth next to the Hispanic and Native American Indian woman. Um, shout out to Judah. But, um, you know, her mind must be instructed. Uh, read that, Sirach 26 and verse 14. I'm trying to save you, Gumbo, with saying Sirach. You, um, you know. <laughs> I, my apologies. I'll say Sirach. <laughs> <laughs> but, struck, bro. <laughs> like I was, you know, for those who may be reading along, don't know Sirach, but I got you. Sirach, the book of Sirach, chapter twenty-six and verse fourteen. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. That mind has to be instructed, and if her mind is not well instructed, then you know she's going to be spoiled. You know, what, what's that description with a no hedge is? I think it should be right in there. You got me, Gumbo? Yes, sir. This is the, this is Sirach, chapter 36, and verse 25. <clears throat> Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. So that hedge is the instruction of the man. Was there was no where there's no hedge where there's no instruction for the man, that possession is spoiled. So 
if a man is going to find a wife, she's going to know how to be a wife from what the instructions that the father gave to the mother. And then the mother teaches it to the daughter. But if there's no instructions from the father, a man can't find a wife. So it seems to me, biblically, when we talk about a prize, because if I was given a woman with no instructions on how to be a wife, then she's a liability. She's not an asset. So, but the only way she's going to become that asset is from the man giving those instructions. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still lost here. You know, I'm still lost on this. Who's the prize? It still seemed to me that biblically, the man is the prize. But um, that's my opinion. Well, that's what the Bible say. I, you know, but I'll mute my mic. Who went to war? I mean, I would, I would agree. The man is the prize. Um, I'll praise the sister. You but, can't but, say but, you but, but, <laughs> but, you can't but, say but. Hey, clip just that. As clip the that. woman clip is it. the prize, it could be one more than the other. Because honestly, I okay. My husband is the prize. I'm going to keep it real. I have the luxury to stay home, homeschool my children. You know, I have the luxury to be on my own time. I don't have to go to a nine to five clock in. You know, I have the luxury to have, uh, you know, I get a, a weekly allowance. Um, he supports me in my endeavors and things like that. So, yes, that, that he, he, he is my prize. But at the same time, I cultivate his household and I cultivate and I nourish him. And our children. Hey, sis. This King. Get uh, first. First Peter three and seven. Hey, I think sis just proved a point for the whole night. I mean, I. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Just out. I, 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 whoever that brother is, he good with me. I like that brother right there. You know what I'm saying? Think about, think about not only he being the prize to you. But he's the prize to your kids. He he's enabling you to to set those kids up in a place to where they're going to be above and beyond when it comes to uh, intelligence, comprehension, um, just so many different things in front of other kids that don't that wasn't given that luxury to where you will be able to sit back and homeschool them and give them that one on one attention that they need. Like that's that's invaluable. Like you can't put a value on what, on what he's given to you, and for sisters to come on here and be like, "You came from your mama." It's like, good lord, what about that hardworking brother that's working, handling his business, providing the chief things of life for sister Sharon or Sharon? I know I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. To where she's able to do basically what she want to do. When it comes to take seeing them kids every day, she don't have to send them kids to a dirty daycare where they get um what's they call that? That uh diaper rash or whatever that thing is where kids get it from daycares and and they don't have to hear stuff like, Are you a virgin? You are that you know, they, they don't have to hear none of that. Like they get to be born pure, you know, because we all know sending your kids to school, you know, you they get um access to you know kids who parents are ratchet as hell and not raising their kids the right way and next thing you know that's when they come home talking about this talking about that like to, i mean to me that's like i don't think you can put a, a value on that I, I, don't, I don't know that that brother right there he, hey salute salute to that he a top g top g salute to the top g you know my most definitely, I, I, and I have a lot of respect for him because um, technically, my first my first two born um, teenager sons they're not his sons, so he basically helped me raise my boys um, since they were like toddlers in the adolescence. And the sister, and um, I'm just gonna say this is he definitely a pro. You, I, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> return on well but i am you should be like this man is i don't know i don't know how can i if i was a woman and i had kids from another dude that 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 did he leave or did he did he pass i don't want to call him a no-nothing ass nigga if something bad happened to him that's why he ain't in his kid's life 
He's not he he's not in his children's life because he just don't want to be. Okay. You know? So you, um, you had kids but, by no nothing ass nigga. Yeah, he is. Urban, he a no nothing ass nigga. You know, I urban, try urban. I try not to uh But you ain't gotta say it out loud, I can say it. Just let me say it. He came, so this man came in like Superman, just fool. Don't worry, I got you. Let me take care of this. I got this. I got that. I got that. Bam. Here you go. This and that. Oh, yeah. Here you get some money. Take care of your nails. Get your hair done. Oh, yeah. You got to Here you go. You, you need a car. There you go. Bam. You in the house. Bam. And then you about to fix your mouth to, to say something after you call him the prize. You should be like, nah, my man, the prize in the store. Man, I, I don't know, man. I'll I be wanting to say these. Oh, man, this I is, can't argue with that. I'm not even going to argue I'm, with that. You should have cussed that other sister out. You should be like, look here, sister, you ain't, you, you shut your damn mouth. These men are the prize. I'm well, a well, actually, I know the other sister. And, um. Oh, shit. It's just a long story short. And I just chose to rather not say anything. Because outside of Clubhouse, it's a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of animosity in, in the sister circles. So I just chose not to say anything. I didn't want to interrupt the room any further than what she was doing. Yeah, that's the other sister ain't married. Let me my mic. Hey, Judd, if I may, I'll get a script real quick. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, give me uh, Ciroc 3 and 9. Now, we know Genesis 3. This is going along the lines what Judd was going, going into. He already proved it through scriptural, the man is the prize. But this is further proving the case. What, what the Lord say here. Now we know Genesis 3, 3, Genesis 3 tell us the woman entire desire is going to be towards the man. And that's in anything. Now read that for me. This is the book of Surat, chapter 3 and verse 9. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. Now how does the mother, the curse of the mother root out the foundation? Meaning she does opposite of what the foundation the husband has laid down. The husband has laid down. So let's say his, his foundation is, I want you to homeschool the kids. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. This, anything you do opposite of that, God is saying you're rooting out the foundation, the structure, the pillar that the woman should be. So without that structure or that guidance from that father, God is saying the house is destroyed. Now, I know the mindset of a woman. She's going to automatically think, well, my baby daddy wasn't shit. We ain't talk about the nigga that you slept with. We talk about a husband that's a godly man. That's what we talking about. That's what God is talking about. So now if you dealt with a man that ain't shit, then you're going to get ain't shit results. But if you're dealing with a man that's scriptural base, you're going to get what God is saying here. Read it again. This is Sirach chapter 3 and verse 9. For the blessing of the father establisheth the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations meaning she's going opposite against her family she's going against the foundation the laws and root order order that the man has set forth now one more scripture give me first corinthians 14 uh 33 i think it is or 34 start at 34 now the point i want is verse 35 but i got to start at 34 to give you the context of what paul is talking about and who he's referring to but i want the point at 35 read it for me this is the book of first corinthians Chapter 14 and verse 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Okay, I didn't want it for that context. We're not in that topic. We're going in for the next verse. I just wanted to know, let you know that who Paul is referring to. He's referring to the woman. Now, this is what he said in the continuation. Read the next verse. Verse 35. And if they will learn anything... Now, Let that's the point I wanted. If they will learn what? If they will learn anything, uh huh. let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, a Judd alluded to this by saying, or, and, and one of the women confessed it by saying, she learned from her father to how to be a wife. This is the structure. This is how a woman learns how to be a wife. She learned it through her father, then learned it from her husband, and therefore she instilled it in her daughters and her kids. That's But if she go opposite of that, God is telling you in Sirach, you're rooting out the foundation, the structure of the house is going to be split, and the family is going to be broken. I'm going to mute my mic. All right, excellent stuff, excellent stuff. So, um, hold on 
on sex series. All right, so, hey, y'all continue to share the room. Appreciate all of y'all. Y'all go ahead and follow the moderators and the club room. And, again, if you want to reach us outside of this chat, you can always reach us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. Again, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. All right, so next up I had on the list, Nikita. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's going on, sis? What you think about the topic? Men are the prize, not the woman. You agree or do you disagree? I love this topic, and I'm so um, feeling and waiting for these scriptures and things. Now, what I will say, I disagree that either are the prize. And where I'm coming from is the perspective of a prize means a reward for victory. Death is the ultimate enemy. That was not the part of a part of the original. And where I'm leaning to, because I know I had to step out of the room and come back in. I don't know if you all have read this, so I'll just cite my scriptures. If you want to read them for the edification of the room, if they haven't been read, great. I'm going to cite 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 51 to 54. Has that been read I'll, yet? I'll read it. Okay. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And so that just speaks to my point biblically of, as long as we're in the flesh and blood, none of us have the victory, be it Adam or Eve, man or woman. And where I also cite is Revelations chapter 20, verses four through six. Would you please read that for me? Hey, but since before you read it, hey, but so you're saying until we get our new bodies, we're, we're both in captivity we, or none of us are the prize. Is that what you're alluding to? That's what I'm saying is as long That's as we're flesh and blood, of. we all fall short and we all okay but no, okay we ain't talking about uh captivity okay with our lower state today on this earth there's still a hierarchy believe it or not that is there's true and i had a scripture for that because you are so right brother okay and but wait wait, wait, wait. okay you're not but you but you made a point saying we got to be translating and we both we're both for the prize but if you if what the statement i just made is true that that means what you're about to prove is 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 no make no sense because it, it isn't hierarchy within our lower state why are we here on our fleshly bodies so that hierarchy you're right can we have first corinthians 13 and verse 3 because yes there is a hierarchy i'm not blind to that while we in flesh and blood can we read that please this is the book of first corinthians chapter 13 and verse 3 and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and no, though, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 3. But I will have you know that the head of the man is She's talking about 11. She's talking about 11. 11, uh, yeah, 11. 11. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And, and the I say, head of Christ mm -hmm. is God. And I say that to say you brothers are absolutely right. The man is the head, hands down. And I will never deny that. While we are in our flesh and blood, I can't speak to everybody else in the room. But I will say for me personally, my husband is the, is the prize. And why I say that, and I'm not throwing no shade to my head. Because first of all, my husband is how I know God loves me. And how he hears my prayers. And this is talking to before I even came into the truth. I remember being a young girl in my 20s in my parents' house praying for a husband. Not a boyfriend. Not a Mr. Right. No, my husband did not have everything on my Mr. Perfect list. But he had everything that I need. 
my husband, before I came into the truth, the fact that the Lord answered that prayer and my husband is who brought me into the truth. That's how I know God hears my prayers. That's how I know God loves me. And so, I thank Nikita. God every day for blessing me with my husband. So for me, yes, my husband is the prize. Because oh, I don't know where I would be without that man. Oh, praise. That's that's two. We two. We got we we uh we we uh two two for one. And the other sister, she uh she ain't like men, but two for one, two for one. Clip it, clip it. <laughs> and I just say that to say my point really is while we're in the flesh. You know, we all are subject to making mistakes and we're not perfect. So I'm simply just saying prayerfully making that first resurrection. That's the victory. That's the prize. But for me personally and following the order of things, my husband is the head. He is a servant of God. First and foremost, he is a beacon of light to me and to our children. And I don't have no outside kids. All my babies are that man. Uh, this is so, all praises, sister. Hey, all praises. That's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, but getting it going into that second resurrection, uh, getting into the kingdom. When we think about the makeup of a kingdom, the leaders of the kingdom. When we talk about these earthly bodies here, I'm going to ask the question about a, a asset or a liability. Read Revelation chapter 14 and verse uh, uh blah, 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 verse three. Start at verse three. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 3. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. So these forty-four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth, meaning they were they had earthly bodies they were earthly men in the flesh but they were redeemed from the earth and how were they redeemed from the earth keep reading verse 4 these are they which were not defiled with women they were not what not defiled with women the the 144,000 meaning the lead, leaders the government structure that's going to be set up in the kingdom of heaven they were redeemed because they were not defiled by women just like from the very beginning it was a defilement from the woman from the beginning samson the woman ahab the woman uh uh, uh solomon um solomon the woman it's so on and on and on and on it was always a defilement of the woman idol worship isis uh cakes for diana uh, Ezekiel, the idol worship, over and over and over again, it was a defilement caused by the woman. But guess what? That leading government structure that's going to be set up in the kingdom. Read verse 4 again. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. These were they that were not defiled with women. Read. For they are virgins. They are virgins. It don't mean they didn't have sex. Right. Second Corinthians 11 and two explains that going into that they were uh, presented perfect or clean to Christ. Read. These are they which follow the lamb whithsoever he goeth. If we follow the lamb. Now, what would what did Paul say? Stop men from doing the work. Their wives, the women. That's why he said, I would rather that you abide that all would abide as me. Right. So we can attend. Matter of fact, we're going to get the scriptures. Go to First Corinthians uh, seven real quick. What the prize is. Give me our uh, first Corinthians chapter seven and verse twenty seven. It's the book of first Corinthians chapter seven and verse twenty seven. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Read. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Go to verse 25 real quick. I'm sorry. Verse 25. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. Yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Read. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. Present distress I, going through all the afflictions Paul was going through while he was trying to teach the word. You can read about that in 2 Corinthians 11 
22 through 33. Read. I say that is that it that it is good for a man to let me say that again. I say that it is good for a man so to be. So it said it's good for a man to be a virgin, not to deal with a woman. Read. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. But he said, if you marry, don't try and get a divorce from that woman. Take care of your responsibilities and keep the commandments of God. Read. Art thou loosed from a wife? But if you don't have a wife, read. Seek, seek not a wife. He said, don't seek a wife. Read. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. So he's letting you know, but if you get married, you're going to have problems. You're going to have trouble in the flesh. We're trying to get the kingdom. We're trying to spread this word. We're trying to fix our communities. We're trying to wake our people up. You get married, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. You're going to have to deal with that. That's why Paul said, hey, look, it's good for a man not to marry. Right? Uh, drop down to verse 32. Verse 32. But I would have you, but I would have you know, I'm sorry, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. That's why we read in First Corinthians, I mean in uh Revelation 14, it says, These are they that's not defiled by women. Why? Because when you single and you about in this truth, you worried about pleasing the Lord. You worried about doing the things that's going to bring forth the kingdom that we're waiting for. That's going to speed up that uh, that second judgment and that second death that sis was talking about. Read. How he may please the Lord. Verse 33. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. How he may please his wife. Now we're talking about assets and liabilities. Right? To the movement that's not an asset. That's a liability. Instead of him worried about how to please, because if the woman was right, then it wouldn't be an asset. I mean, a liability. If she'll be encouraging you to go and go, hey, look, you don't need to be here this weekend. Go do what you got to do. Hey, I know you got class. I know you got to go do this. You got to go there. Go, go. I'll take care of the house. But the scripture's letting us know that that ain't how women are, right? Uh, one last scripture, drop down to verse 35. Verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit. He says, not, look, I'm telling you this to help you out. <laughs> Read. Not that I may cast a snare upon you. I'm not trying to stop you from having kids. I'm not trying to stop you from having sex and the pleasures that come with that. Read. But for that which is comely. And that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Guess what? He says, look, if you marry, it's going to be distractions on you trying to attend to the Lord. He's like, I'm trying to just throw you a little game. Just letting you know that woman, is, it can slow you down from doing the work of the Lord. So, I don't know. Assets, liabilities. I'll mute my mic. All right. Hey, some good stuff coming out here so far. Good stuff. Uh, hey, with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on down, move around, move around. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to go like this. Shanice, I'm going to give you, I'm going to get you. Then Kia, I'm going to come to you. We're going to uh, keep on going from there. So Shanice, can you hear me? Uh, Shanice, Shanice Hammett. If you're talking, sis, your mic is muted. Oh. I just got some background noise. Can you come back to me? Yeah, you yep. said come. Thank you. I got you. Uh, Kia, you there? Yes, I'm here. What you got, sis? What's going on? What you think about the uh, the topic? Um, I feel like both men and women can be deprived at some point. Um, like the sister was talking about, um, her husband and how he provide for her and the family and make sure everything good in the household. I would look at that like he, I would look at him like he's a prize too. Um, but I also feel like the woman is a prize too. Proverbs 3.15 says her value exceeds pearls. All you desire can't compare with her. When one finds a worthy wife, 
her value is far beyond pearls. That hey, that's a great scripture. Who who what caused her to be a a worthy wife? Where did the instructions come from? Um, I would say God and his laws. God and his laws. Oh Lord. God God ain't never talked to the woman. God spoke, God spoke to the man and he gave the man instructions. And then those instructions were given to the woman by the man. Scriptures that were brought out earlier. Jesus, Jesus appeared before Mary and um and her sister before he appeared before the men and told them to go tell them that I rose again. So he do speak to the women. Well, well, that's that is Jesus. Um, uh, that's not God. You know, he has a father. The laws were set up by him, but I'll give you that. But Jesus didn't tell women to go out and spread the gospel. He told the men to do that. I feel like we all play a part in spreading the gospel. He didn't ride. He he didn't roll with twelve sisters. No, he didn't because men. Um, I don't know exactly, sis. Just say it. Just say it. You just say what. <laughs> It's like, because men are, what, the teachers? I mean, I mean they're stronger, and God made them to be the head. And um, and the teachers, the instructors. It's not. It's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's nothing, nothing wrong with that, but what's wrong with that is that women have been put in a position to teach the men. By who? By, because, what you mean by who? They've been by put in who? position to do it from men that don't stand up and take care of their responsibility. Well, well, let's 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 talk about this for a second, because uh, fifty one percent of black men are single with no kids. Fifty one percent of black men is single with no kids. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm. I I, Make you think when you're looking. <laughs> Most women are having sex with the same men. They're wow. having kids by the same. Damn. These numbers, you go to blackdemographics.com, you can look these numbers up. These you can't you can't go against the percentages. The percentages on whether a kid is going to grow up with uh being depressed or having mental problems um go up when they're raised by a single mother. But when they're raised by a single father, it's it's the percentages are the same as if they were raised with a father and a mother. Right. I I, I mean I think the man is surprised. By I the think I, I don't I can't really say I, I feel like if you want to see the success of any husband, all you have to do is look and see who his wife is. Okay. All right. What? I don't know about that. Hey, I don't know. I'll make it make sense. And I, and I don't think a man can function without a woman. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like women... Wow. Women, wow. Women, I feel like women is heavy. Oh, hey. Y'all know it's true. Y'all know it's true. Come on. I feel like women is heavy. That's not true. Feminism right there. That's not true. Feminism That's not just a question. No, it's not. Who was Jesus Christ's wife? The most high said, it is not good that the man shall be alone. Hold so, on. why hey, else would we be created for the Ron, oh, Ron, listen now. Jesus Christ's wife. Christ's wife. The, probably the greatest man that ever lived on the earth. Who was his wife? <laughs> Crickets. Okay, Wait, now. now, now let's, Did he have a wife? I didn't think he had one. Exactly. Now, let's think about Solomon. What was the sin of Solomon? What caused the nation of Israel to split? His what? His wives. I'm gonna mute my mic. Damn! How did they? How well, did they? Let's, let's add some context to that. His wives, but also his wives was doing idolatry as well. So Yo, if Sif, his get wives the audio. wasn't doing idolatry, I don't think it would have been such a deal of him having his so many wives. But the fact that it was committing was was uh, detouring him to commit idolatry, then yeah. So absolutely. his wife, his wives hey, called. Hey Judge. Oh. Hey Judge. With that, with that being said, okay, well then let's let's use the uh, uh, analogy of King David. Uh, Bathsheba showing yeah. him. 
Bathsheba sure in the hell didn't tell David to stop. I'm married either. Yeah. Absolutely. And guess what? The Most High punished King David for that. He knew better. That's why yeah, the Most High yeah, said, the sword, the sword going, shall not depart from your household. That's going to the point of where you saying that that uh, a man can't function without a woman. Judge just proved Jesus didn't have a woman. He's the greatest man that ever walked the face of the earth. Solomon, he, was, he, did, he didn't come he here. 700 wives. And then David, David brought the sword into his house because the woman showing the hell didn't say no David I'm married to Uriah stop it she laid down on her back spread them legs just like uh, just like the next woman and brought uh, evil inside of David's house so she was the demise of David just as well so you can't say a man can't function without a woman yes they can they do they do damn good for themselves without a woman uh, being a dragon and bringing them down, living off of emotions and guided by emotions and use no rationale like I've heard some of you women on here speak in the matter of three minutes. No rationale. A man can't function without a woman. No, a woman can't function without a man because if she does not have a man to guide her in the way that she would go, she becomes a baby mama. Well, let me just say... Can I just, can I say something real quick? Wait, wait. I want to back him up real quick. Let me get a scripture real quick. First Peter 3 and 7. Just to prove what uh, ZB Real just said. It's the book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. So the husband got to teach the wife. Read. Giving honor unto the wife. Mm hmm as unto the weaker vessel. To the what? To the weaker vessel. Read. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. There you go, sisters. Without that, that man guiding you. Okay, See, okay. So let's let's trying. not use the word function. Hey, trying. Hold on, Sean. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on real quick. I'm going to say okay. even, even this. So do you think God can't lead you? God can't lead a woman. So so a woman that don't have a man, she not led by God. She can't be led by God. Well, no, nowhere in the scriptures were women supposed to be independent and alone and being woman thou art loose is not a biblical thing. Women shouldn't be single with kids out on their own, figuring how to figure out how to change a flat tire and what this red flashing light is inside the dashboard. That was never that was never the life for a woman. A woman went from her father's house to her husband's house. That's the way it was supposed to be. It was always supposed to be that way, right? It should have been that what, way, but the man, the man, if the man would have stayed in the household and did what they were supposed to do, like like be the head of the household, the women wouldn't have to assume men duties. That's because your guys drive them out of the household. No. <laughs> so that, that's the thing, though. That's that's the thing, right? That, that's the that's the the point that that men leave. Because we just wicked and evil, right? Now, how many women go out and have have kids by other men, but they lie to their husbands about it? I mean, you probably you got a lot of them, but you got a lot of men. Yeah, it's a majority thing too. Oh, okay, you got a lot of I, men do the same thing. For some, for some reason, that women will come on here and act like that women don't cheat. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, the man he always got to cheat." Women cheat. Y'all cheat all the time. What what where what are we talking about here? What y'all gonna tell me women don't cheat? Women ain't wicked, women ain't evil. A woman will have a baby by another man and will let another dude raise that baby his whole life. That's the wickedest thing I ever heard of in my that's life. That's very evil. wicked. <laughs> that's evil. that's what a woman will do. A woman will do that. And then y'all keep with this the numbers don't match the words that's coming out of y'all mouth. That's the that's the reason why. People like Kevin Samuels, uh, people like Tate, the whole red pill movement is something that that women don't want on the Internet because the numbers come out and they don't support the lies. The They're delusional, Judd. That's why the numbers don't support the lies. It is what it is. I, I just feel like uh, women have shown 
and prove that we can function without a man. I feel like women are becoming very successful now, and I feel like it's driving the guys crazy, and that's why that's where all that hey, crazy Kia, content is coming Kia. from. That's where all that this crazy is content is coming from. Kia, this is ZB Real. I want to ask you a question since you say that women can function without men. Okay, I'll, I'll give that to you. So men, black men have been absent from the household. Uh, they've been incarcerated uh, at high levels. Um, and women have been have to have played both roles. Mm-hmm. What is the condition of the overall black neighborhoods of America that have been led by women without men? Damn. Damn. Um, the condition is a reflection of the man not assuming his role. No, no, Kia, no, no. You just because said a woman women, can do. No, Kia, Kia, you said women can function and have functioned very well without men. Okay, I agree. Women have functioned well without men. Now, you tell me the estate of the black community in our neighborhoods without men there because women are functioning well and have been running them. What well, is the condition of the black community? I would say um, if you want to talk about the impoverished black community where it's a lot of killing and stuff, I didn't grow up in those areas. So it's a lot of um, black households that was raised by women that's functioning very well. But okay, if you want, where, if you want where, to go to the lowest, they, if you want to go to the lowest at? point, then I don't know. Maybe they didn't have God in their lives, and maybe they didn't lead them now, you know, in, the, in the Word of God. Now, this is how you know what Judge said is true: where the numbers are not matching up with the lies that are coming out of your mouth. The the affluent communities that you are speaking about are two parent households. No. And women in Not those the households time. of good neighborhoods. There are majority women in the poor, impoverished neighborhoods that you are talking about that they are running. So if you want to say that that uh, I didn't grow up in that neighborhood, well, then you got to acknowledge that you grew up in a neighborhood that was full of men and women, husbands and wives, and that's the reason that they are the way they are because the husband is there. Because when women are over the household, you get the poor, impoverished, drug ridden violent neighborhood that to, you just talked about. I have to say that's not true because my neighbors was women. Women, and they, and they did not have men in their household. Not all of them. And these are... I grew up she got one house. case. <laughs> right. It was, it was right. women. Right. And, and guess what? One guess case what? against a statistic. You can't make this up. Kia, listen to me. I said the black community, not the black household. That the poverty community. I said the community, the estate of the black community. What is it like since it's being ran by women because black men are not there. They're incarcerated. They're on drugs. They're not marrying the women in the places that you're talking about that is being led by black women. What is the estate of the black collective community that is being led by women. Okay, it's not good if you want to go there. So why are you sitting here telling us a lie saying that black women are doing very well by themselves? That's a lie. The community the hood it's it's not even it's not called a neighborhood anymore. It's called the hood. It's known as the trap. So that's, so that's the majority of us? Are you putting us all in a box? Single black father. So, so here's my question. I have a question. What's wait, 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 the, out of, wait, 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 wait. Out of the entire on, black on, community, on, what's the percentage whoa, of the black whoa. community that's actually hood? It's a shot. Hold on. Hey, uh, hey, Jared, you I, have something? I, I'll answer her question. The percentage of the of black community that's hood is the, is the community that uh, has one-tenth of wealth of black of white people. Yeah, so, yeah, all I'm asking is, like, out of all the black people... White people, people, listen to me. Listen to me what I'm saying here. White people would have to stop working for 268 years. Listen to what I'm saying. They would have to never work again for 268 years for 
the black community to catch up with what an average white person has in their bank account. Damn. 268 years. And you guys sit here and tell me that we're all doing good, that we that that majority of black people ain't living in the hood. Stop it, y'all. Y'all ain't great women Wait. ain't gonna come in here and bullshit us. All I'm gonna hey, 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 I'm going to see you for the statistic on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go you, know go know so, you know what's so crazy? That's why I keep telling you, man. America messed up these sisters of big time. She said, she said the, the woman can do better without the man. So, listen to this, right? When you look at society, when you look at society as a whole today, you got, right now, a one bedroom, depending on where you rent it, it's a it's a thousand dollars more. You got majority of these sisters is single mothers, single mothers working by themselves, struggling. They got one or two kids. They got to pay rent. They got to provide food. They got to provide all this stuff. Those are the same sisters who think they're better off. No, you're not better off because just like Jude said earlier, God did not create you to be a single mother. You was not bring here to be a single mother. You was bring here to raise a family, father, mother children. We are the only race. We, I'm going to repeat that again. We are the only race in the planet Earth who don't take up our family structure. Every, we, oh, right? Why, listen, why you single mother? You know what that sound like? Baby mama? You know what that sound like? That's supposed to be a disrespect word for, for word. But guess what? The black woman cherish that when somebody call her a single mother, a baby mama. No! That's supposed to be a disrespect when somebody call you that. And guess what? We are the only race who think like that. God did not bring you to be a baby mama. God bring you to be a wife. God bring the brother to be a husband. But because our community is so defectional, we taking that we embrace what we embrace what not normal. Now the unknown become norm. That's the problem we have, and we cannot. That's what the brothers were trying to explain to us, and you can even see it. No. I'm your mother. no, 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 I can see I it. See I can something. see it. Um, I can see it, but just don't blame, um, put all the blame on the woman because what, the man what, plays a big role in the household. And if he's not there, that's his fault. Well, the man, the man's deciding to take a step back from crazy women. Like I said, 51% of black men, 51% of black men are single without kids. And how many of them locked I, up or dead? Hey, hey, hey. How many hey, of them locked hey, up or dead? What? Guess what? And uh, and you got Nick Cannon got kids. P Diddy, uh, they all all these women sexing the same man. They all these women, these smart, independent women. They all sexing the same men, having babies by the same men. And looking then, looking then, for a then, bag. And then, then two hey. or three now nah, they're gonna be complaining about how they husband not in their baby life and how they had to raise their husband without their kids without a father nah. and stuff like that. Hey, it's judge, like, judge. I want to pose a question to uh, the sister Kia, or, or I, I think they said Shanice is up next. I want to pose the question. Do you think that the women that are having babies with Nick Cannon are respectable to be admired and looked up to role models of society in the women in the women's sphere? Should y'all attain uh, aim to be what they are as a woman? Do Absolutely you think they're making the right Okay, Absolutely so are, are those are those women are those women smart and educated women? They may be smart, um, educated women, but they're not making a good decision where that is concerned. So that means so that means that what you said that that women, even smart, educated women I'm gonna have to be I'll be I'll be black with you. Smart, educated women, black women in America are stupid. I mean, yep. I mean, everybody have their day when they do stupid things. Men too. Come on, come Men, on, too. Come Men too. Men too. As I was gonna say, I think it contributes. Hey, 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 you have a stupid. Hey. You don't trip, fall, and spread eagle for a man that you know got eleven no. other baby mamas. That is a premeditated thought, and you know what you are doing. Yeah, like them yeah. Yeah. Um, with future, you know. Hey, but look, when you think about the projects, 
right? Housing, housing, uh, public housing and things like that. You don't think of single men. It's single women living there. And what's the estate uh, of those places? Uh, is it a place people want to live at? Is it is it is it a place where you feel safe, where you can uh, not lock your front door and stuff like that? Because I I grew up, I would say middle class, maybe upper middle class. I didn't I didn't know what it meant to have to know people that didn't have a mother and a father in their household. That's just how I came up, and and it was in good neighborhoods, and everybody had a mom, everybody had. It wasn't until I got older and started going around, going to different schools and going in different places where I'm like, man, this place messed up. And then like you and then people say something like, Your dad live with you? I'm like, Yeah. They like, Yeah, oh man. Hey, you know, I'm like, what the hell you mean your dad don't live with you? Like, that's normal, right? And then once 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 I got older, you started to see the wor- the more worse rundown neighborhoods that nobody wanna be at. It's a bunch of single moms in those neighborhoods. So I don't understand where the mindset that single women are been doing good. Cause I, you go to, we go to projects right now. It's a bunch of single women living in these houses with kids and it ain't no place. Nobody want to be. My well, mind. well, why is that though? And why is the ratio of, um, of black women like 10 to one man? Is it that's because they true. all, because all that the men true. locked up or dead. That ain't no, that ain't true on or no gay? That ain't no numbers. Women gay too. Women in yeah, jail. But I was just too. saying that they said they said it's ten that, women to one man. But that's 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 just one of those things. That's sign language right there. That's even in the Bible it says that, at, at some point it's gonna be seven women to one man. Yeah, because men are the prize. You just proved it. Thank because you. Because it's not that Damn. many. Men. It's, not, it's not gonna be that many men. It's not gonna be that many men. It's not gonna be that many men. Can I say something? Men are the prize. Kia, men are the prize then. It's not going to be that many men. That doesn't mean it's not the prize. Men are the prize. I just feel like the men are going crazy because women nowadays is is bossed up, and we are able to man women selling ourselves. Women selling weave. Women doing nails. Women ain't bossed up. (laughs) They driving trucks too. First, the black man. The black man. man. And guess what? Up in line. All I'm y'all got therapy. Y'all all got mental problems. So be be single. <laughs> that's what you want. Be go for the eggs. No, no, we don't want to be single. We want to well, find a good that's, that's, a good man that we can call the prize. That we can call a prize. Hey, move on, move on the co letter. If these sisters be quiet, they'll find a husband. But they won't. They want to be the man. They want to be that's bossed up. True. They want to be a the, good man. But we all bossed up though. You can't be mad. Uh, Just go to where the good men at. It's yeah. simple. Bossed up, hey, bossed up and gonna be in the hole in the wall club looking for a sugar daddy. Never oh, that. Shit. Never that. Never hey, that. Hey, hey, man. Take care. Yeah, Is Take care. Is Cannon a good man? Take care. Is it um, James it, Abraham? Who's up next, man? Is it Cole Man or yeah. Shanice? Who's up? Uh, Shanice. Yeah, that's all y'all question. talking about. Yeah. All y'all women pay half of y'all. Say, say, Kia. All right, appreciate you, sis. My wife don't work. Hey, Dang, is, Nick uh, Cannon, is Nick Cannon a good man to y'all? He might no. be. Well, to me, no, but he might be a good person. Yeah, I'm not a good person. A good man in the sense that we're talking about having all these kids. Is he a no, good he a whoremonger. Nah, he a whore. Say, yeah. matter of fact, matter of fact, hey, Shanice, hold up, real quick, real quick. Mm-hmm. Let's take let's take a couple steps back. Can we back. go with the cue? Yeah, this is the cue. So... Um, real quick, men are the prize, not the woman. Agree or disagree? Let's start right back from there, and then let's work. Let's work through it. What do you say about the topic, Shanice? Um, again, I think same thing with Key. I can't really agree or disagree. I think some of the statements that y'all made, like this last one, seven women to men, kind of makes you think that obviously, you know, y'all are the the prize. But I think when it comes down to black men and women, you know, when it comes down to our issues. And the fact that there aren't black men in our households, you're correct. In the hood, it is a bunch of black women, and we are not doing well overall. Not to say onesie, twosie, who you know, this person or that person. Overall, the numbers don't lie. But I try to. I'm trying to figure out how to. Did you hear it. that? 
Did you hear that, Kia? Numbers don't lie. She, she, she knows. She knows it. it too. She's not. She's not necessarily. I don't think she's debating that. I think it's more so. How did we get here? How did we get to the Nick Cannon and all these different women? Because that's kind of what's happening. The, the feminist movement. Uh, right. I tell you, uh, Christianity. Christianity mm-hmm. that gave you mm-hmm. black women power, mm-hmm. and you put right. the you put the black man on the back burner, and they exalted you in that church. And made the man feel like he was less of. You took, that, mm-hmm. you, you took that damn spirit home and you and you started doing it at your man in the house. He said, man, the hell with this. I'm out of here and left you by yourself. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That's why black women love church so much. Because that's the place where you go to be empowered by a crooked ass false prophet pastor that tells you that you are the queen of the world and you got two kids, no man, you work and you don't you don't want to have to work get up at six AM and go work and then wake the kids up and get them dressed and cook them breakfast and pick them up from school and help them with their homework. You don't want to have to do that. But you go to that damn black church and they feed you lies after lie and you give them your money Every week, that's why the pastor is rich. Black pastors, they rich off black men giving them money. They rich off black women giving them money because they feeding them lies that make them feel like they are greater than the man. That $400 gave billion. Dollars. ZB, ZB Willow, $400 billion the black you collected from the black woman alone. $400 billion that ain't help none of them single mamas keep a man. I mean my mate. Hey, that's some pimp stuff right there. I'll be wondering how the how the pimps be getting women to sell their bodies for money. When you think about the black church, it's, it's the same dynamic. Hey, ZB Real, that's heavy you said that because that black church is equivalent to that serpent that was in the wilderness that empowered Eve. The black woman problem is she always want to be, if not better than the black man, but at least equal to him. But ever since the beginning of time, y'all been chasing that that that, that lust and that covetousness. Why? Because you want to be either equal to or better or above the black man. And you had that spirit since the beginning of time. Damn, good point, Jay. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. If, we've had that spirit, if we've had that spirit since the beginning of time, what do, what do we do with that? You know what, though? I've been um, kind of getting into Islam and practicing Islam here and there. And it's a lot of the same things that y'all are saying. The, you know, the man goes to um, the the uh, mosque, he gets the word, he brings it back to the house, he teaches the wife and teaches the kids. Um, so it is a lot of a lot of things too with Islam and you see a lot of black people becoming Muslim. Um, it's a lot of those same traits that kind of you know, the women should be submissive and you know, those type of things that you get from, from Islam. So I don't know. I I get it, but it's just like I think it's more so what do you do with it? I think women understand. I don't think well, there are women that are okay with being baby mamas, but I think most of us are not okay with it. And it's like, well, what do you, how do you, what do you do? And we don't usually have a platform like this to listen to men to tell us. You know what I mean? Yeah, hey, most definitely. Most it's definitely. more of a, and, it's, and, and what we do too, we get on here and we go back and forth and argue instead of listening and understanding. Because that's what they want us to do anyway. They want us to bump heads. Because if we don't bump, if we as long as we bump heads, there's no power, and these broken well, families t- can stay like that. I'm gonna tell you this, Shanice, and then we're gonna move on to the uh, next person on the mm-hmm. stage. Uh, sometimes you need a you need a topic to cause some kind of contention to get to a solution. Because yeah. there's not enough discussions inside of our community as is. So topics like this, I heard it earlier. Why did we come up with a topic like this? Well, so that we could stir you up and see show, show a lot of where they're wrong at. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. No, this is going to come out with a solution. So, yeah. Hey, I appreciate Definitely. you, Shanice. No problem. All right. Uh, next up, we have Colette. We have Colette. But, uh, hey, I do want to say real quick, go ahead, hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter. Um, follow the moderators on stage. Follow the Clubhouse Room. OK, as well, um, hash uh, was that uh, share our room on every social media that you got. And you can always reach us at biblical smoke at gmail dot com. All right. Uh, Colette, it's on you, sis. 
uh, what you think about the topic. And everybody else that's not talking, y'all go ahead and listen to that video that we have pinned up at the top. It's gonna, I'm, we're going to ask about it soon. But go ahead, Cole, what you got? Cole, um, if you're talking, your mic is muted. Or you might not be about to chat. All right. Uh, next up on the stage. Next up on the stage, we have Poetic. Shalom. Most high. Bless the most high. Christ, excuse me. Um, I've been, wow, really listening to this topic. And um, I myself think that... Um, as you all said, the the woman is the liability because we do a lot of dragging men into things without them necessarily knowing it. Um, for instance, when when the thing between Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston, everyone was like, "Oh no, he got her into drugs," but it was just the opposite. She actually got him into drugs. Um, so right there, that took away that, you know, blame to him. As far as, as men being carriers of the sperm, it is men ejaculate at least 200 million sperm um, to maybe one woman egg. So you've got all these little chances to, you know, um, hit the egg and start the child process. Uh, men that go out to work, provide for the children, you know, um, you don't have to go to work as a female. You can raise your children because now in today's society, we have too many women don't, that don't take the time to be with the children, to, to properly raise the children, to listen to a man because the ma mentality is, I don't have to listen to you. You're a man. Why do I have to listen to you? Because they weren't raised to understand the the laws of God. And with the laws of God, we we listen. We're supposed to listen. We're supposed to follow the guidelines. Um, All right. No, go ahead. I, I, you know, uh, we have some more people that's on stage. I want you to go ahead and land your plane soon, sis. Go ahead. That's only because you guys skipped me. So, but you know what? On that, I'll mute my mic. Go ahead and let the other young ladies um, say their piece. Okay. Uh, next up on the stage. Uh, so I'm going to go Nishan, then we're going to go Sharice. So, Nishan, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, skip me, brother. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, hey, hold tight, hold tight, bro. All right, hey, uh, go ahead, Nishan, what you got? Um, I'm going to say um, both are a prize if you find a godly one. And I I mean, I don't think it could go any other way. If they're godly, they're both a prize. If not, good luck. So you said both are the prize, men and women. If they're godly, yeah. I mean, if they go by, you know, what God wants them to be for each other, then they're both going to be the prize because they both bring something to the table. I don't think one can do it without the other. You need each other. Okay. Yeah, any other thoughts on it? Hmm. Got any other thoughts on it? Any other moderators want to tap into what she's talking about? I got a question. What is what does it mean to be a prize, though? I think we should kind of define that. What does it mean to actually be a prize? Because what I'm thinking when you say a prize, that means some type of comp a reward, right, to the winner. So. Who's competing, I guess, for the other? 
is kind of what we would. Uh, a, prize, a prize means that that, that you're the, the you're the goal. You're the catch. Without you, this it don't mean nothing. That's what it means. Mm. Okay. That's what the prize means. So I want all you women on here. So this is what you, you women. This is what America taught you. If you didn't pay attention in damn science class, um, where does life start? I want you women to be honest. You want to define who the prize is, because a woman's a woman's being. Your name is one man. Mm-hmm. You came. You, you got your name from a from man. A man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where does life start? Does it start with you or the man? A man. Anybody else on stage? <laughs> all you loud ass women that all don't argue back and forth. Where does life start? I'd like to say something. Uh, y'all, y'all claim y'all to catch. I want to speak but, as well. But what? life starts. Life starts in a man's balls. It does not start in a woman's stomach. But without you are not a, woman's a, egg. You're not a mother. You're not a mother without a man. You you can't even fulfill. Say. You can't even fulfill your godly duty without a man. Are we disagreeing? Man's to that? the prize. Disagreeing to that. I think it takes both to have a baby. Oh, there you go. See, there we go. Oh, See, okay. uh, yeah. I do it. <laughs> you women, you women think because you catch sperm and hold it in your stomach for nine months that you are goddess queens of the earth. You won't even. You don't. Everything in your body is death until a man puts life in it. Well, it, scientifically, it doesn't start until the heartbeat is detected. Okay. So, but I think, but still, you need each other. I mean, when it comes down to it. We're not you saying need, you don't yes. need each other. We're not saying that because God, God said man should not be alone. We're not saying we don't need each other. The problem is, is that you black women in America today, you think that you are the catch and not the black man because the white, because the white man, um, we have to work when we, as soon as we get out of our mama house at 18, because we got to pay bills, because we got to have our own place, so we got to pay the rent, because uh, we got roommates. You get to stay at home until you damn 22, 23 years mm-hmm. old with your daddy taking care of you so you can go to college yeah, had, and get your associate. I had a job at 18. I, ain't talking about I was, I ain't talking I was about working Jesus. when I was a junior. Yeah, I mean, I was where, working you live before at? I got out of high school. Where'd you live at? I lived in Oklahoma, you know. No, where Arizona. where did you live at? I was at home with my parents. Okay, boom. My yes, point exactly. Parents. My point exactly. You was at home. Black men got to get their ass out and go get on and get their own. Get your roommate. Go get your own place and start working when you're eighteen, nineteen, and years old. And you women get to sit at home under your daddy's roof or the white man giving your mama section eight and you can go get your associates, you can get your bachelor's and then you can go get your master's. And by the time you got your master's, we've been working for them uh, since we was 19 years old. We've been working 10, 12 years and we don't have that education that you was afforded because we was out here working. And then you turn around and say, I'm better than you because I got a master's, nigga. N- not all that's women. What you, that's what not you all women are like that. Not no, all I, women are like that. That's a lot of. And my brother, yeah, I know. Hey, listen too. to listen to this, y'all. I know all women ain't like that. The majority of y'all. It's a lot of black men that's yep. educated too. My brother exactly. is a doctor, and he went to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Kia. Uh, who is it, Kia? Thank you for your one-off anomalies. You are the best at that. You got one one neighbor that's fucking that's dykes, and, and they all women. Don't let men in their house, and they speak for all black community. And you got a brother that's a doctor, and he speaks for all the black men that got to work when they eighteen, nineteen years old, while the women get to sit at home and go to school for twelve years and get out and get a master's, and then go into corporate America. And think they better than the black man. Thank you for your one off. Why the man can't get an education? They don't have to. Work. They don't have to. Can go get an education because he got the, the reason why. The reason why because he got to work as soon as he get out. Because you black women, if he ain't got a job, then he ain't shit. 
I worked all the way through college. I started working uh, when I was 14 don't, years don't old. Don't skip what he just said. Don't nah, skip what he just don't, said. You got to skip right over that, don't they? Because when you meet a man, if he ain't got a job, no matter what age he is, he ain't shit. So I'm black. a man knows he got to come out the gate working to even be uh, attractive enough to even uh, be looked at by a woman while you're in college living at home getting stipends and you're on your damn master's and you think you better than him. Is that because the men fail, fail for the matrix? Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. What? You know, <laughs> Z, Z, hey, Z, that's why, hey, that's why the young black man today sell drugs and do scams because going off to what ZB Real saying is true. If the man ain't got money, the woman ain't even looking his direction. He could be a, a 16-year-old selling drugs on the street, toting guns in a gang, all just to get money to impress a woman. Or he could be 40 years old, working since he was 19, getting money, trying to trying to provide for his apartment, trying to get get a woman, trying to impress a woman. And now hear this black woman talk about, is that because it's, it's just, it's, we're just going in circles. It's, a, it's useless. For some some black woman, I ain't gonna say all of y'all, but some, I say most. So going so going back to my point, I want we we straight up. I want to ask you, black women, where does life come from? Because this is gonna answer Shanice's question: Who's the prize? But where does life come from? We've had somebody say uh, both of them are equally important. Uh, they, oh, where does it come from? scientifically since you won't go science you don't want to use the bible where does it come from scientifically um so i <laughs> I, I have a, a i guess answer on a question so i think scientifically it does come from both the egg and the sperm you can't make a baby one without the other but um my question is what does it mean like, how does it manifest itself for one person in a relationship to be the prize? Like, is the other person supposed to be like, oh, I'm so thankful to have this person? Like, how, what does that mean in practice? I, I don't really understand. Proverbs 31. Yeah, I'll show you how it manifests itself. I'm going to show you how it manifests itself. We're going to read Proverbs 31. Now, I'm coming from the standpoint that the man's surprised because I know that God made Adam first and he ruled over the entire world and Eve was a helper to him that ruled the world. Eve didn't have no damn power. Eve wouldn't have had nothing if it wasn't for Adam. Nobody wants to acknowledge that. Eve wouldn't have had shit if it wasn't for Adam being made. I'm trying to acknowledge it, but y'all been ignoring me. <laughs> well, we don't want to hear you right now. So, so you're saying that, so, that it means that the woman shouldn't have power? I'm great. I'm great. Read what it looks like in action, because I come from the standpoint that man are the prize. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her, the heart of her husband, doeth safely trust in her. So when the man is the prize, how does that manifest itself? The husband safely trusts in her. What does that mean? That when he leaves the house, he knows that she ain't got no some secret ass what you women call it today sneaky links. She ain't got a uh, social media. Snapchat. She ain't got no Instagram where she is privately privately messaging man and being and entertaining their conversations when they message her. A husband safely trusting her that um, the money that he make and bring in the house, she's not going to waste it on riotous living, trying to get Gucci bags and Fendi and fake ass two hundred dollar hair weave. <laughs> and and some uh, some seventy five dollar uh, snuffleupagus eyelashes. Her oh heart, his heart, can safely trust in her. Keep reading. So that he shall have no need of spoil. Keep reading. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Ooh, we 
listen to the words of God. When the man is the prize, this is how it manifests itself. Can you read that one more time to the black woman? She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Ooh, that just makes my soul jump out my body. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. All the days of his life. Not when she feel like it. Not when she just when she just agree with it. No, no. God says she's going to do him good and not evil all the days of his life. That's how it manifests itself. When okay. the man is the prize. And so do so black it, women do good? Do they do good to, to man all the days of their lives and not evil? Do they? Okay. Okay, so so it it sounds do, like no. I'm asking you a question. Do women do good all the days of their lives and not evil to their men? I mean, I really don't know what kind of women you you deal with, honestly. So I don't want to speak in generalities, but it sounds like now what you're, you're, now saying, you're not a woman. Y'all women kill me how y'all kill second, me sorry. how y'all try to single yourself out and single women out. When you know damn well y'all all the same. Okay. You and all y'all women are, are women emotional. So it sounds like you have. Uh, so, are women so, are women emotional? Naturally, what? are y'all emotional as a creature? Yes. What? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We know that. I'm, why do y'all sit here? You go sit here and lie and say, "Oh, but, all women." Yes, you are. Stop it! You Stop with your damn women, lying. What made you go to that? How women are emotional because that's something I'm trying to. Because she tried. Because she was about go? to use. She was about to use the example. Example. Oh, I can't speak for everybody. You women are the same. You act like God made one woman and then was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the rest of y'all different. No, we didn't. And just like most men are the same. All you got to do is be quiet, give us some damn food, and give us sex, and we happy. Ain't that what all men say? All I need some food, some quiet, or some sex. I'm good. You don't hear no damn man say, hey, man, I, I need her to fuck. I, I need her to skydive. I need her to be a good painter. Oh, mine got, mine got to uh, uh, know how to damn ride a Ferrari or, or the Grand Prix in the NASCAR for me to accept her. They don't say that. Man said, be quiet, give me some food, and sex me, and I'm good. Man say that. But you don't hear us say, oh, yeah, well, 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 every single one of us is different. No, we all want peace and quiet. We all want some food, and we all want some ass. But you women yeah, but like, that, oh, no, I'm different. That, oh, I'm different. No, I'm alone. different. No, you ain't. You ain't different. But that alone isn't going to make a person want to stay with you. I mean, just yeah. having okay, a Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's ask the man on stage. Brothers, if you, if you had a wife that was quiet, that fed you, and sexed you, would you stay with that woman? Let's I'll ask be, the brother. I've been living. 100%. Damn straight. In there for almost 12 That's years. Oh, okay, boom. Yeah. So, so you're wrong. There, there you go. You're wrong. <laughs> you know, you're wrong. That's why I've been married for 40 years. There you go, sis. You're right. wrong. That's all we need. But you women would get on here. Oh, no. Not all women like that. Oh, I'm different. Oh, I'm this. No, you not. You ain't different. And stop trying to be different because God ain't even about that. God is about us all being the damn same. Now, we ain't robots, but he all expects us to have the same thoughts. The same ways that we we uh the same way we dress, the same way the same we all supposed to eat the same thing. We all supposed to worship him on the same day. We all supposed to treat our wife the same way. God ain't about all this individuality. White men taught you that, and that's why you black women are single. Most of you are single because y'all think you're different. You don't know what the hell a black man wants. All he wants you to do is shut up, feed him, and give you some ass. And you be married and happy. Hey, hey, y'all. hey that's a hard pill for a lot of them to swallow, man. <laughs> hey, thank you all for letting me up on y'all stage. How y'all doing? Yeah, same. Man, what happened to servant? Hey, ho, ho, y'all, hey, y'all, hold on, man. All right, so, um, hey, sis, appreciate you. So we're gonna continue to move on through. 
the audience. Uh, Servant, before we get to you, it's Sharice, then it's you. So, uh, Sharice. Shalom. What's going on, sis? I'm good. Um, so, I would agree that the man is the prize because I feel like a real man come already shaped and formed. And when you look at it logically, when a woman have a good man, they do everything to keep that good man. With that being said, they start to get shaped and formed by their man. Um, because their man is steadily better in them and teaching them how to be a better wife, woman, and mother. And if you think about it, like, when women have a good man, they automatically praise that. So, I would consider the man being a prize. Is is this a discussion, or can we, like, go back and forth, or... Yeah, we, there's definitely there's, it's definitely a discussion. There, there will, as you have seen, I'm sure, I think, a back and forth, but there's a cue. So there's people that's been waiting. We're going to get to you. I promise you. Just stay on the stage. We're going to get to you, all right? Um, unless any of us moderators acts openly, then we'll get to you. Um, so next, I appreciate you, uh, Sharice. Uh, Servant, go ahead, bro. Thank you, brothers, man. You guys jump like a rope, uh, jump rope, but it's all good. I know what you're doing. Hey, uh, hey, to the prophets, hey, man, I'm with you, brothers, all the way. But look, this is a problem. It's a problem from the title. Men's are a men's are the prize, not the woman. Agree or disagree? I agree that the men's are the prize, according to the Bible. A man that wanted to keep the law, such commandments. A woman is a Proverbs 31 woman. So in this world we're living in today, boys, women, girls are the prize and boys are not. So when we talk from a biblical aspect, men are the prize. Okay, we all know that scripture in the Songs of Solomon. Now, these women's got a twist. They all need to read, you know what I'm saying, the Willie Lynch letter and see how this man Esau, the white man, that tr- turned everything upside down, okay, and reverse everything. That's what the devil job is, to reverse everything, okay, and make us like we're nothing. When they see a real man, they go against him, as we've seen tonight. The point is this. The point is that we, as men, to keep the law of such commandments to the best of our ability, we got to filter out the girls and get a Proverbs 31 woman and this you know it's gonna be solved after that but yeah man i appreciate you brothers all you sisters read the willie lynch letter and you're gonna see the game plan right there and correlate that with the bible because the bible speaks of those things adam was made first god seen that he was lonely and he made him a help mate not a help leader so you guys is serving a whole different purpose. With that, brother, the water, and I yield. All right. Uh, next up on the stage, uh, we have Talia. Talia, can you hear me? Talia, can you hear me? All right. I'm going to go ahead and move right on down. Um, I'm sorry, but you skipped me, sir. I'm sorry, who was that? Zin. Oh, you you must have left out and came back in. You're at the bottom of my list. She I think you need to refresh your page. You've been skipping everybody, sir. Yeah, she next. Go ahead, Zin. Uh, Shalom, everyone. Um, I wanted to say, um, agreeing with the topic that, um, before I grew up and understood what the whole game plan was, I was tricked into believing that we were the prize. But when I started back sitting down and thinking, like I used to have a lot of discussions with my male friends. We saw all get high and talk and have these kind of conversations. And I guess we have forgotten that after the 60s, we threw away everything and started acting like women rule the world when the world was functioning with us supporting our men like in our in our proper role and this scramble for power has been destroying us and we refuse to see it and it's 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 really an issue with us i don't know what it is but we have this jealousy and, complex and, 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 women women don't women 
don't refuse to see it. They see it. They just don't give a damn. You know what? I, 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 look, look, hold on. Let me prove. Let me prove this to you. I'm gonna prove it to you. Go to Genesis. Watch this. I'm gonna prove it that they see the destruction and it's destroying them. You know damn well when women look at TikTok and Instagram and see women in bikinis with their fake ass and their fake titties and weave out, they know that um, a woman should not be portraying herself in that type of manner on the world wide web. They know that in their heart of hearts. But what would they do? They will like that picture and they will comment and say, you go, girl. BBL. Hashtag BBL. They will do that. Give me that in uh, Genesis chapter 2. And I want you to go to where what God told Adam not to do. I ain't got my Bible in front of me right now. I'm shooting from the hip. I know what you're talking about right here. Uh yeah, yes, sir. I'm looking. Uh, Let me get it with you here. All right. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Verse Come 16. on, man. I'm on my phone. He got it. Pop my, it right up. Come on. I was at 18. My apologies. Oh, this, okay. all praises. Go ahead. <laughs> this is Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16. And the Lord God commended the men, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die, right? Now, what, now, y'all, now I want all y'all Christians to acknowledge you did not read an apple. Adam did not and Eve did not eat an apple. That's Christianity made up lies. There is no apple. So now you see where God told him, don't eat of the tree. That means learn. Don't learn what this is talking about people, but don't learn their ways. Because if you do, you shall die. Now, please, let's skip over to Genesis chapter three. And let's read. Uh, let's start at verse one. Of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now that the serpent is a man. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about a man. All right. Now keep reading. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Where did Eve learn that from? Who taught her that? Who taught her that if we learn those ways, if we eat this fruit, we are going to die? Don't do it, Eve. Who taught her that? Adam. I, well, thank you, brother. I want the women to answer that. This is a question for the Who taught her that, y'all? Come on, women. You so talkative when you want shit on black men. Who taught her? Um, don't eat that stuff because if you do, we're going to die, baby. Don't do it. And I ain't trying to die. I'm trying to live forever. Her husband, who she was made for. She wasn't made for the serpent. She wasn't made for nobody else. She was made or Adam specifically. That's her only reason for existence was to be a help meet to Adam. Now, finish, read the next verse of what the serpent said to her. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. She let someone outside of her husband, who she was made for, tell her something different that whom God was dealing with. God was dealing. God told Adam that. And Adam told his wife, this came from God. But she let somebody outside of her husband influence her. Now keep reading. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, 
and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, this is how she was influenced. She let someone other than her husband tell her that she can have power just like him. It said, ye shall be as gods. God didn't tell that woman that she would great have no power. Her job was to be a helper to the God on earth named Adam. Just like you women today, you've let someone else tell you that your black man ain't shit and you can do bad all by yourself and you are equal or above him if you've got education. You let somebody tell you that. God didn't never tell you that. Read on. Verse six, Verse six. And, when, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, stop, and that it stop, stop right there. She saw that it was good for food, it's pleasant to the eyes. Did she say, well, my husband already told me that I'm going to die. I know this is going to destroy us if I take part in this. I'm not doing it. What did she do? Continue reading. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So so she went and learned it. She took of it and then she brought it back to her husband and convinced him to go against what God had told him you should not do. So she knew that it would destroy them and she wasn't going to be destroyed by herself. Who else did she destroy in the process? Sisters, women, who else All did she us. say I'm bringing down with me too? Adam, which in turn became everybody. So the sister, going back to what the sister was saying, sister uh, Zen, women know that the stuff they do is destroying them. They don't give a damn. They see it and still go headlong into it. They know that they shouldn't be laying down with men from the club that don't want to marry them, just wants to be their boyfriend, and then they become a baby mama. They do it again. They know they shouldn't be doing that. They don't care. They know it's destroying them. So you can't say, I don't know why they it's destroying us. I don't know why. They don't care. I'll meet my mic. Yeah. Hey, ZB Real, ZB Real, can I pull a scripture, please, to go to uh, go exactly with what you just read in Genesis? Yes, sir. Bring it up. I read it earlier. We're going to read it again. Get that for me in Sirach 3 and 9. This could be very clear if they didn't understand the apple and the tree. This, God is going to make it clear right here in this one verse. Read that for me, Sirach 3 and 9. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 3 and verse 9. For the blessing of the Father establishes the houses of children. But the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. You know what that curse is? Doing exactly what Eve did. Going against what you was taught by the man, by the husband, by the father. When you go against that, you root out foundations. You root out the entire family. So what Zebra just brought out, they, the woman brought down the entire lineage, the whole family. And first Adam, then the entire family. Why? Because she goes against what she was taught by her God, her Lord, or her husband, in, in the case of what we just brought up in Genesis, which is Adam. So then, that's biblically, I'm, I'm sure you women don't care that they destroy in themselves. They don't care. As long as they get some self-satisfaction out of it, they don't care. They don't care at all. Go ahead, finish your thought, uh, Zia. So my next question is, how do we encourage our men to see themselves as the value? Because clearly they don't. Not anymore, because they've been convinced that, you know, they're not needed in the home. You know, black baby mamas can do everything by themselves, which is not true. I don't know why. Well, I mean, you, you said it, but this, this headstrong thing and the need to be right. Excuse me, young man. <laughs> Sorry about that. And it needs to be right all the time. It's 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 crazy. So you would excuse me one moment, Shannon. Sorry about that. 
So the need to 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 be right, we would destroy a whole household just because we didn't get our way. Instead of sitting down and thinking about what we're really upset about, which half of the time is real bullshit, to be honest. Yeah, can I? And then the cycle continues. But um, how do we show our men that they are the prize, and how do we respect being the support to the prize? Because to me, that's what I think a wife is. The husband is the prize, and the wife is the prize to the husband because she compliments him, not to t- overshadow him, which we tend to do a lot. That's what I think. I'm just gonna land my plane because this is gonna get yeah, too hard yeah, to keep talking. Yeah, you do that because you want to be seen. You, you, it, the white man has convinced you that it's not enough that you are help meet to your man. He's convinced you that you must be, you can't stand behind him. You have to stand beside him and be seen by everybody and get your praise and glory from the world when that's not, that's not how it's supposed to be. Go back to Proverbs chapter 31. And uh, I want you to go to the verse where it says beauty is vain. Look who your praise is supposed to come from. Black women want praise from people on social media that they don't even know. They want praise from that same oppressor that is locking your black man up, racially profiling him, denying him from home loans, not giving him raises on jobs, making him have to work long hours to get half the pay that uh, those that oppress him get, you won't praise from them. That's backwards. Proverbs 31, if you got it, go ahead and read it. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, now that's good. Now jump up to verse, uh, jump up to verse 28. Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Oh, who praises her? And he praiseth her. You don't want praise from your black man. No, you don't want that black woman. You want praise from the white man. That's why you're so, so enamored with your career. Black men don't give a shit about your career. You ain't never heard no black man say, oh, man, yeah, yeah, to be my wife, you got to have a good career out here. You ain't never heard no black man say that. Right. Black man said, be quiet, give me some food, and give me ass. Nah, that's not enough for you. Uh Uh-uh. I've got to, I need that, I need that, uh, I got a PhD. (laughs) You want that to be said. You want the world to praise you because of how smart you are. But God said your husband and your kids are supposed to praise you. This is asking your question. Then how do we get back to the to to um, being in the right place that God ordained women to be in and be that support? You got to accept that your praise is supposed to come from your husband and your kids that they say, Mama, you a good mama. Wife. You getting close to being that Proverbs 31 woman. My goodness. You don't want that. No. You want likes on social media for your fake ass. You want likes on social media for your um, fake eyelashes. You want likes on social media for your fake weave. And you want praise from the world because you got multiple degrees, but you're single. And you're a baby mama. You happy with that? Most black women. I ain't going to say all of you. Majority of you black women are happy with that. I got a PhD. I mean, my mic. Can I throw something in really quick that you had said earlier? Um, well, you kind of just mentioned it again, CB. Yeah, right? go ahead, Shanice. Um, about women kind of all being the same. When you said that, you were like, well, all y'all are the same. And I'm thinking in my head, no, I'm a little bit different. But then you brought up emotions. And I... I, that stuck with me because it's something that I'm trying to work on is to stop being, stop going off of my emotions so much. Uh, yeah, it's crazy I, that's I why never, I say that because I know because yeah. you all the same. Oh, I, it's, look, I got a wife. I got a wife in her sleep mm-hmm. right now. I got a wife in her sleep right now. She's not the first woman I've ever dealt with in my life. Right. And she ain't no different than the women that I dealt with before her. Mm-hmm. All the same, mm-hmm. and every man on here can attest that the wife they got right now. Once they woke up, repented, knew who they was as Israelites according to the Bible, 
that the woman they got is emotionally in the same hemisphere as the women that they've dealt with before. And yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even thought about that. And it's something that plays into the, the next thing you said, be quiet, give me sex and give me food. Because when we run off our emotions, myself included, I've made plenty of irrational decisions or said some irrational things based off my emotions instead of holding on a second and, and figuring out, is it actually true the way I feel? So that was just funny that you compared, not funny, that was just a, a, a revelation to me that you compared women to be the same in that aspect. Because when you said it, I'm like, no, I'm not really like them. But we, we are in that sense, all emotional. And then that plays into the being quiet part. When you say that's be quiet, we all think like, just shut up and don't argue. But that's not really what it means. It means stop reacting off of your emotions so much because you cause drama where it doesn't really need to be. And, and, I'm, not, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory mm -hmm. way that y'all all the same. I'm saying that because God said it. Mm -hmm. When he made your foremother Eve, you've still got the same DNA makeup that your foremother Eve has. You're not different from her. The same problems that that uh, Adam was having with his wife is the same problems y'all giving us today. Y'all ain't different. Right. America has made you think that you're different, but you're not. What the thing is, we all need to get on the same page so we can fix these relationships between black men and women and Hispanics and Native Indian men and women. And we can build a nation through strong marriages because we all believe the same thing. We all eat the same stuff. And we all conduct our marriages the same way. And our women all see their man as the prize. You don't see the damn Chinese women out here try saying she's different. Where y'all see the Chinese women coming on TV and social media saying, yeah, I'm different from all these other six billionaires Chinese hoes. <laughs> y'all see that shit. Only yeah, the black women says that. They get put that. out of the house. They do some stuff like that. They get put you out don't the see no a -rad, You don't see no Arab women out here talking about, yeah, I'm different from all these other hoes wearing hijab. I'm boss. You don't see that. You don't see no East Indian women out here saying, "Oh, I'm I'm different from Humdala." You don't see that in every other but culture. You know, oh, go ahead. It's only you all. You got to realize you have been duped, black women, and it's destroying you because you don't see your man as the prize. You don't even value your own self. That's why you got baby daddies, because you don't value yourself. Wow. Uh, I want to touch on what the brother was saying. Yeah. Real quick, I just want to touch on what um what the um what the brother was saying. And, you know, he um, described every other uh, race and uh, ethnic background and every other culture. They don't have these problems like we have these problems. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right. Hey, we're going and we're going to come right back down to you. So uh, in regards to the topic, because I do want to get we got a lot of we got a lot of sisters uh, point of view in regards to this. If there are more brothers that are here that aren't, you know, that aren't really familiar with how we do things here at Biblical Smoke, please raise your hand up and uh, like to see what y'all think about that thing also. All right. Um, so anyways, hey, uh, appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you. So next up on the stage, next up on the stage, we have, um, well, at least how it goes on my screen, we have Wildflower. Can you hear me? So, um... Hey, what's going on, sis? What's going on? What you got on the topic? Um, so I know the topic is men are the prize, not the woman. Um, I have two direct... I have one direct question, and that's going to be for ZB Real Black and for Gumbo as the reader. Um, are you black only? 
Hebrew Israelites, or do you believe that there are other, the other 12 tribes? That's my first question before I can. Yeah, yeah the, the, Hispanic, the Hispanic, the Hispanic are Israelites and the Native Americans are Israelites. And the reason why I ask that, see, be real, is because you keep talking about black, 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 which is, I'm, I'm just going to say I'm not black. I am Hispanic, and it's super irritating to me that most of these clubhouse um, groups, every time they talk, it's all about black. So if Yeah, you, yeah. you are black. You just a light skinned Negro. You are black. Cut it out. <laughs> okay. Pretty yeah. much. Hey, hey wow. Hey. The reason why we we say that because uh, if you can if you can looking at the same uh, platform I am with all these people with pictures on there, those are all so called black people's faces. So when we talk, we speak to the people that we can see. Uh, you say you're Hispanic. But you got pink flowers. I would never know that. Nobody would ever know that. Okay. And so, Gumbo, I am married to your cousin. And I know more about your family history than I share to care. Wow. Oh, and whoa, shit. What the hell just happened here? <laughs> right. Damn. So, I'm not going to divulge Gumbo. Hey, that was what well, Hey, you know what? The sister just asked a question. She said, what can we do to uh, to breathe life into our men and to, to have them, you know, basically have a higher uh, look at value on themselves, right? And then here comes a sister about to be like, I know your background, your history. I could talk all kinds of shit about you. That, like, that's just a crazy to me. Damn. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, you man. black. Yeah, you black. Your, your ass is black. That's crazy. <laughs> you black, black. It's, it's like, like you black, uh, black. It's like, let's breathe life into the black man. Oh, yeah. I remember when you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that, you did that. It's like. She said she was Hispanic. Where's she from? That's going to help the situation out a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> what what hey, man? <laughs> what type of Spanish are you, Miss? Are you are you Puerto Rican, Cuban, Colombian? She might or or you might be Spaniard. We don't know which one. Damn, fuck that shit, man. We were talking. She from Dominic. She from Dominic Santo Domingo. Cause over there they think they're white. Some of them think they're white over there. What happened? Wow, wow, left the stage. A Spanish yeah. person in them, but a black person and an Indian person mix. Can anyone hear me? Or am I on mute? I don't think she was Spanish. I think she was uh, Esau, if you ask me. Sorry. Now, hey, wow, now, Wildflower, come back up on stage. Nobody, nobody kick you <laughs> off. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. So, um, hey, but anyways, next up we have on the stage. So, uh, Todd, hey, bro, I don't, I don't know how to say your name. Todd, he, you was already talking, bro, but uh, you didn't weigh in on the topic. So, go ahead. What you got on the topic? Men are the prize. Not the woman. Agree or disagree? What you got on that thing? Um, brother, I totally agree. Um, I have my own I have my own recollections on the situation. I'm I'm uh Islamic faith, but I'm sitting here on the on the uh on the biblical smoke. I love it. I love what's going on. It's all it's all the truth I'm hearing from the situation. So I'm just I'm just listening. I'm respecting. Thank you. All right. Uh, Davida. Davida Frazier. Say, Davida, can you hear me? All right. Uh, Jen, I know you was trying to uh, say something earlier. Can you hear me? I can. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, sis. What you got on the topic? Okay. Um. I, I I think I disagree, but can I can I let you know why? Um, yeah, I believe the okay. I believe the woman is the prize, but 
what that means may be a little different than what everybody's thinking. So if I'm the prize, that means that my husband is the one receiving the prize. You see what I'm saying? And I don't think that that means that, well, the way I'm, I'm looking at it, that that means that um, I think that he's the one that is receiving the prize. Therefore, I should be uh, all of those things for him, if that makes sense. So in general, what uh, assets are women uh, to the men in general, general speaking? Okay. So um, I know which- in my marriage. In my marriage, uh, personally, Other. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, like what Genesis two eighteen speaks about, um, the woman being the help me for the man. So when I when I when I read that, I look at that as her actually being his prize. So that, so I mean, to be honest, to me, that's a better position: the one receiving the prize versus the prize itself. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. So it's it's is the man whose job is it to um provide shelter? The man. Whose job is it to provide food, water? Uh the man. Clothing. The man. Okay. Right. Okay. And, and 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 that's to me that's a good reason for him to be the one to receive the prize. So man. when I when I say that I don't mean I don't I don't say that in the sense of you know yeah. wait, 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 Jen he didn't finish the question because he's about oh I I'm sorry the I'm sorry brother go ahead the table's yeah. about to take a turn a hard left go ahead Judge so I'm sorry so, so the man so let's get let me uh, let me get it. let's see so the woman gets to be able to sit back while the man provides a shelter. Clothing, food, water, protection. No. In a way, the woman is the prize. Well, I guess I guess what I'm trying maybe I'm not coming saying it correctly, but I, mean, I guess what but, I'm trying to say is that I feel like the man is the one in the position uh, of receiving the prize because if I'm the help me, he's not the help me, I'm the help me. So that's a that's a sort of a gift to him. But that doesn't mean that he has to do everything. Like, I, let me just tell you how my relationship goes. It seemed, it seemed like he had to work harder. Um, you you know, said what? Like, just like it seems like he has to work harder. Uh, if you if you're uh, just like in the military, right? They don't like women to have combat positions because the men they they worry about the women. So it's like if it was all men out there, it's strictly business, no emotions. We work and we getting stuff done. When there's women out there, they're all worried about that woman, right? Which right. Which, which makes her a liability and not an asset, right? If you're a man and you say you got to travel the country and do things, do this and this and that, and you got your wife at home by herself, you know, you know, she's calling you because she heard a noise by the trash can or uh, she can't get the, the, the sink to cut off. Or you know, her tire, her 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 tire uh, is going low. Lights on in the car. She don't know what to do. I well, I, mean, I just don't. I, I, I don't, see. I, don't I think I I think I agree with you, but I, I guess I just dis. I, I kind of. I'm sorry. Have the three and verse sixteen. Let's 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 find this thing out. Let's 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 see this. This is Isaiah chapter three. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just go to Isaiah 4 and verse 1. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 4 and verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. That, I mean, that sounds like the man is the prize. That women like look. No, that that sounds like the man is receiving a prize. Nah, the, you know women, I mean? the women, the women say, "Look, we'll do, what? we'll do something that you're supposed okay. to do, we'll do it ourselves. Can, we just want to be called by your name." All right. So, now, so now, 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 let's read what precedes that to to okay. really show who the prize is. I wasn't gonna read this, but go to Isaiah three, right before it. Start at verse sixteen. 
This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Haughty and mean, evil, mean-spirited, right? Right. And walk with stretched forth necks and wanting, and wanting eyes. Wanting eyes. They messing with everybody, man. They out there twerking, dropping like it's high, getting BB uh ales showing their butt on tiktok and instagram right mm -hmm. walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet go ahead there therefore the lord will therefore the lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of zion so most and of the these are bald headed you know y'all wear wigs and weaves it ain't nothing natural going. It's coming back, natural coming back. But a lot of these women got hair problems. They want to say it's alopecia. No, right. you're burning your scalp and putting chemicals in your hair. Your whole life you look like the white woman, and now it's catching up to you. Go ahead. And and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their foot. Eighteen. Verse eighteen. I'm sorry. Verse in that seven. day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about Verse their seven. feet. Verse 17. You, you, you Verse 17. Therefore, therefore on, the Lord will... I'm sorry. Verse, Verse 17. Seven. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. Their secret parts. Like, you know, you watch some YouTube videos and women get to fighting and they titty fall out. They dress mm -hmm. come up and don't have no drawers on. You know, they're getting arrested and body slammed by police because they won't keep their mouth quiet. All right, and then they end up, they dress come up or whatnot. They, you know, everybody now wearing tights with a camel toe showing. That's just right. nasty, right? I, Brother I mean, Zach, can I ask you a question? Hold on, let me finish. Back when I was okay. a ho, and that was good because I was like, hey, look, I can definitely get her number and get some ass. Uh, the three Fs right. find I can't flee, right? But now, mm -hmm. you know, being a man of God, that's just disgusting. It's like you, you can't go nowhere no more. You can't go, you can't go to the mall. You can't walk around. You can't be nowhere because it's half naked women everywhere. Read. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. And that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their and their calls and their round tires like like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs. And the and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen, and the hoods and the veils. So 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 we we, we can read earlier that guy. Gave women uh, women all those things and made them beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. But he took all that away from them. Now they go shopping five seven nine or Sheen, all this cheap um, fake clothing and stuff like that that they put on. You know they right. dress like hoes. You know they used to dress. You know some of the women of the other nations, men wouldn't go talk to them like, hey, hey, let me get your number. What's happening? Hey, look, hey, let me, let me, oh, you know, like you like they got on Instagram. Turn around. You know, our women got tights on, turn around, do like, let me grab your butt. And they just let a dude grab their butt. The other nation women don't act like that. They don't do stuff like that, right? That's our women. God took away that beauty that he gave to them and that sense of pride and self-worth because they was haughty and evil and mean spirit. He took that stuff away from them. Keep reading. Verse 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Yeast infections. Thank you, smelling. You got to do different, uh, put all these chemicals inside you to make sure your insides and outsides smell. Right? Our women ain't used to have that problem. But guess what? Because our women, wicked and evil, right, be on World Star fighting, it said instead of sweet smell, there should be stench, right? And instead of a girdle, a rent. A girdle. A girdle is that thing that the women have to wear now. At one point, women didn't have to wear girdles because they had a shape, right? The most beautiful women on the earth shaped the best way on the earth. In the Bible, they wanted to kill the men 
because our women look so good. But it says instead of a girdle or what? A rent. Rent. Go ahead, read. And instead of well set hair, baldness. Instead of well set hair, baldness. Read. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. Instead of a tight six pack flat stomach, it's like a girding of sackcloth. It's like a sack of potatoes. Read. And burning instead of beauty. And ugliness instead of beauty. Now, Damn. I'm just trying to figure out where's the prize in that. Okay. Well, I, I don't disagree with the scriptures. Absolutely. I agree with everything you said. And so um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, my position still stands that I believe that I'm the prize because I feel like I'm the prize for him. So, for instance, my, like you said earlier about, you know, the him providing him doing all the things that men are to do. I feel like for me and my husband, I, I enjoy catering to my husband. I mean, I, I, I think I go. Well, some people, I I don't, I think it's what I should do, but, you know, speaking to other women, they'll say things like, girl, you don't have to do all that and do all this. Cause I, I do things like I, I set my husband's clothes out for work in the morning. I do any and everything for him. And I enjoy doing it because I feel like he's deserving of it. So I feel like he's the one in the position. If I'm made for him, that means I'm made to please him. So. When I say I'm a gift, I don't mean it in the sense that I'm all this and that. I'm just saying I'm I'm he I'm made for him, not the other way around. Do you see what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. But so I'm not I'm not saying it in in the sense of oh I'm I'm this big prize and you should think bow down and do everything I want. No, I'm saying it as this. watch this, watch that. this. So a man, right, like me, like I say myself, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to I want I want to give me an old school car. All right, I want an old school, you know, maybe a a, um, a, a old school Cutlass or a Super Sport. Um, you know, I've been I've been always talking about it. I just don't want to get one because I know somebody's gonna steal it, right? right? But when a man have a car like that, like man, a man get good, he want to get him a, a Corvette, right? That's his prize, right? And guess what? The Corvette don't take care of him. <laughs> he take care of the Corvette. He out there washing it for hours detailing the inside for hours right he uh he putting he putting the um the black magic on the tires he under the hood cleaning the engine guess what that's his prize that's his prize right he that's what he doing guess what guess what guess what a woman's job is to do the exact same thing to, to, I agree <laughs> that, that, I agree and that's what I, that, that's what I'm saying like with with a gift um he makes sure that guess what the car is the prize just like the man is your prize right but what i'm trying to say is a prize is something that somebody gives you not something that you get yourself so with the prize the prize itself is just a thing you know what i'm saying but it's the the person receiving the prize is to me is the the position you want to be in not the prize itself so if I'm the prize, then I'm going to, like I said, I'm um, give you some examples of some of the things that I do. I don't just cook dinner. I cook dinner and I present my husband his plate. I, I and it's it's not something I feel like um, maybe because you know I saw my mom doing that. I'm not sure, but I actually enjoy catering to my husband and I work as well. Um, but my husband he works uh, a, a much harder job than I work. So I I, I don't know. He's the king of the uh, king of our household. So I enjoy um, doing all of those things to him. So I feel like I don't, look, I don't look at it as the sense of, I'm like I said before, a prize in the sense of, um, you know, he should be doing all of these things for, and he does do things for me. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to, um, just taking care of him, I feel like that's, that's my job and I enjoy doing it. And to me, that's a, pr a gift to him, him being the receiver of the gift. So I guess I just got a different perspective on what that means. You well, see what I'm saying? Well, to be honest with you, your mind is the reason why men have low self-esteem. Because that man really? do all the stuff that he's doing for you, and but you will still consider yourself the prize. That's the reason no, why. No, no, no. Most of most, 
Let's hold Can up. I say, okay, most, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Most men don't hear words of affirmation. Most men don't come home to hearing stuff like, you know, uh, you're a great father to my kids. You this, you that. We 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 go out, we grind, we do what we got to do. We work the hard jobs. We come home with a bad feet hurt, back hurt, shoulders hurt, right? Pains all over. But we don't say nothing because if we do, nobody want to hear it. Stop whining. Shut up. Most men don't hear nothing. And that's and when Kevin skills <laughs> started mm-hmm. speaking, men started to say, you know what? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm goddamn special. I'm the prize. You mean to tell me only this percent of men make this kind of money and these women making me feel like that I'm broke and and this and that, but ain't nobody really making that kind of money? These women with two and three kids talking about some, uh, you got to have a J-O-B if you want to get with me. Wait a minute. I'm right. the prize. These women should be trying to find me. Not me. Well, can I, her. I'm the can prize. I have- Oh, Can I ask you a question? So in, in, in my marriage, my, I don't have any children, but my husband, he has four children from a previous marriage. And, uh, you know, at first they didn't live with us, but like two years into our marriage, uh, two of his children moved in with us. And, you know, it wasn't easy at first, but as time progressed, we, we learned to, um, you know, kind of live as a, a, a family. And, uh, you know, I took that on as well without complaint and i, I mean i i don't I, I'm, I see what you're saying but i guess what i'm saying is um that's not the case for me and i, I don't i don't even like to say not all because i feel like as a woman go ahead brother I'm sorry. how many sons you say he has he has three sons and a daughter so instead of one person to protect you you got four people to protect you Right. That's why I said, that's why I said, uh, I, I said that, I said that two of them, two of his sons moved in with us. And what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, some people would look at that and like with me not having any, any children, um, I, uh, it wasn't an easy thing for me. You see what I'm saying? But like I said, as time progressed, him being my husband and these being his kids, that's, part of my job too to help take care of them because their actual mother's not here that she lives in a different state so what i'm saying is i could i could be one of those complaining wives and you know uh left or whatever because it didn't happen like it just happened overnight you know it was unexpected so i but you know i just roll with the punches so as far as uh me and my husband i don't i don't make him feel like uh have low self esteem i i praise him all the time and i'm grateful for him and I, I I don't know. I don't know if you if you I don't think you're getting what I'm saying by well, I think I mean, you I think I think when when you hear me say I think I'm the prize that you that you're hearing that I, I'm putting myself on this pedestal, which I'm not. That's what I'm, I'm just I'm, looking at that's what the prize means. I'm saying I am the value in this relationship. No, 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 no. If you look if you if you if you um if you actually Google the definition of gift it's something that someone is given without paying for it. I can't exactly remember the exact words, but it's actually the the person receiving the prize is the person that's on the pedestal. I'm not I'm not a gift because you know I'm all this and that. I got you. I'm, you see what I'm saying? Who so I yeah. Complain about who when you think about today, who mm-hmm. are the Complaining about it's not any good men out here. You said who are the ones complaining about that? Yes, it's uh, women. women. Okay, we hear this a lot. This is not. Yes, like- I agree. Okay, okay. So that means it's a competition for women to find a good man, correct? You know, I would say that that's true for uh, most people. Yeah, I do agree with that. Prize. It says a thing given as a reward to the winner yeah. of a competition. Women are out here competing for good men. The man, right? But the question, but the question, the question of the room is: uh, men are the prize, not the woman. Agree or disagree? And I guess you know. I guess you're right because I guess what I was thinking more of on the lines of gift. I look at it as if because I, I think we will both agree that the the woman is made for the man, not the other way around. So if I'm made for him. 
specifically to be his help me, then that's him. That's God giving him a gift. Now me being the gift, that doesn't the I'm not the 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 person receiving the gift. I'm the actual gift. Meaning, I should make him feel like a a winner. You see what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. So but... not and not the other way around. So yeah. if if he's the gift, then that means he's the gift. That means he was made for me. Well, and that's talking, not the case. We talking about a prize, so it's still the definition goes into but, a competition, right? Right. But when we talk, but when about you but when you look up, system, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. A gift, a righteous woman. You know, these women were virgins. You know, these women weren't touched. Um, you know, so when we so was I, so was I when I got married. I mean, I agree. Praises, all praises. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? That's a that's a that's a real good thing. All praise for that. But at the at the end of the day, it's a competition to find a good man. It ain't a competition to go out here and find a good woman. Men men are really. Men that are in a good position, they just sit in the back going like, nah, I'm straight. Like, I ain't about to get caught mm -hmm. up. Women have a baby by them, and then they divorce me and take all my money, you know, for them to tell me that, you know, they the prize, they the table. Uh, I can do bad all by myself. I don't need no man. I'm independent. All these different things. Men taking a step back and, and, and starting to analyze things and say, nah, I'm going to sit this right. one out. Like, 51 Fifty-one percent of men, of black men, are not married and have no children. That's the you know, but in my in my case, you know, um, it's the other way around because I I like I said I didn't have any. I don't. I still don't have any, any well, children of my that's, own. That's, but that's your case. but I also don't like to. I don't. Yeah. I don't like to get in the habit of saying not all. I try to stop doing that because well, we I think have, it it, it gets. Uh, statistical because we can't right. just... no 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 i i agree with you it's yeah. just that I'm, what i'm trying to say is that me being a, um a woman i stopped just recently stopped saying things like you know uh, I, I don't like to get offended when you talk about other women even if it doesn't apply to me because it it, it kind of gets us in the habit of not holding other women accountable like because well, you'll say well hold other black women accountable for the most part we we see this every night right we're right and i i i agree but so when I, so what I'm trying to say is that even though I I feel like I'm a gift to my husband and I'm you know I that doesn't mean that I don't think that I'm getting something out of the deal as well because like like we said before he's a he's an awesome provider he's an awesome father to his children all of those things and I'm thankful for him and because I'm so thankful for him uh I don't have a problem doing all the things that I do and. I want to say that even if that wasn't the case, I was still doing because that's just how I am in general. But, um, yeah, I, I, I just felt like I was made made for him. So in doing in 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 me being made for him, that means that I'm going to cater to him. So that because if you got a gift or is I, you don't think gift and price is the same thing? No. Okay. Well, maybe that's maybe that's the why I'm sounding a little off because I was thinking they were synonymous. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if, if I had a daughter and she was a virgin, I definitely wouldn't let her marry a man with three kids. Um, well, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I got well, married, uh, I got married in, in my late thirties and you know, it's. Yeah. But I mean, you know, hey, like I said, we talking about the numbers, generalizing our numbers, not, uh, I think I learned a word. I'm gonna say it wrong. And uh, and a doke and a and a and a damn and a dodo and a dodo. Yeah, that's right. What we talk well, about. you know, I did take into cause it's, it's, I did take into consideration that you know it was not like he got he has four children, three boys and one one daughter, and it's not like he had all these baby mamas. He was married before, and they all with his ex wife, and so uh, you know. Like I said, uh, we we're both. Uh, yeah, feel the same. We way. got married in, in a late at a, at a later time, so you know it's not that easy to. Uh, I don't know a lot of men at his age that don't have children. Well, I'm just saying. Um, I mean, I I'm just saying. You know, as for my, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't let her roll that way. But um, okay, but well, let's move on. What we what we got? Who we got next? Yeah. Hey. Um been a little bit since I reset the room. Uh, Sauce, you're going to be up next. 
Uh, everybody, y'all go ahead and continue to share. Continue to share the room as well. Hashtag us on Twitter, Biblical Smoke. Um, and if you want to reach us outside of this platform, you can always reach us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. Sauce had just left the room. He's not up running. Uh, email us again, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. All right. So, uh, a sauce come right back on up. But um, what I will do is I'm going to circle back to uh, Cheris. I hope I'm saying it right. Cheris and Shanice, everybody who has spoke previously. What have y'all gathered so far? Because I know y'all had different opinions about uh, the men being the prize. Some of you felt like you agreed until some of the conversation came out. So, uh, Cheris, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with you. What do you think about what's been made out so far? Hello. Hello. Yep. OK. Um, well, I, I, I still believe that um, women were created for the man and we were were given to the man as a possession. And I feel it is the rightful order that the man is supposed to find a wife. Um, I feel like it's unnatural for a woman to seek out or choose or to do the choosing to choose a man to be, um, you know, to choose a man for a husband. Um, I feel like we have to learn how to play our role as a wife, how to be a righteous woman so that we can be a good help meet to our husbands. And to make their lives better, to be a pillar of rest, to be what God created us to be for our husbands. Um, And I feel like that is beneficial to a man and we carry on his legacy. So I I feel like uh, I believe, according to the scriptures, that God created us for you as a possession, that we belong to you and um, that the woman is God's gift to man. The man is not God's gift to woman because we are not, we don't have the dominion. The men have the dominion. So everything is in the man's possession. So a man cannot be our possession. So I believe God gave us as a possession to the man because he has dominion. And that's my piece. All right. All right. I know your thing was that you couldn't agree with the fact that uh, about what Joe was bringing out about liability. That That's where you kind of feel like, what the hell was that? From what I remember. Well, as as far as a liability, if it's an unrighteous woman, if she's not, uh, you know, if she's not in agreement, then yes, yeah, a, a woman can be a liability. We know that Eve was a liability. We know that we have it in us to be a liability if we're not in order. Um... But if we are keeping the law, statutes and commandments that God set in place that puts us that that puts us in order, it gives us the directions to follow so that we are not so that we don't so that so that we don't repeat that, you know, us being well aware that we do have tendencies to rebel, to, uh, you know, go against the authority to have our own way that it, it, it is in us. But us understanding that we have that tendency, you know, us choosing to follow what the the natural order that God set in place, which a lot of us who are living a repentant lifestyle, we have to learn. We have we have to relearn because this society has taught us um, they've destroyed us, our culture. We don't even know our, our real culture, you know. So, yeah, we're converting and we're changing and it's not easy. So, yeah, we, we do have a lot of relearning to do. So I think, um, yeah, I think it's in us to be a liability, but I don't I don't believe that that's what we were created to do. We we're created to be a help me to make a man's life better, to make his life easier to, um, you know, it's not good for a man to be alone. I mute my mic. All right. Uh, say, Shanice, I'm going to come right back to you. Davida, I don't think you ever had the chance to speak when I called on you earlier. Um, you there? Yes, I couldn't find the mic. 
All right. What you got on the topic, sis? Man is the prize, not the woman. Agree or disagree? Actually, you get two for one tonight. My daughter's here, and she has a lot to say about <laughs> about who's the prize. Right. Well, Bob, I want both uh, of y'all to say something on it. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, I just wanted to say that I believe and know that the man is the prize. Um, I've been doing like reading through my scriptures, it's very, very clear that the men have always been the prize. Um, so, and since God is never, never changing, that's never changed. Just because man changed, it doesn't mean anything. Um, as a healthcare, well, I, I am health the provider. health provider. I'm a massage therapist. Learning about different pathologies in the body the they're, they're very specific in my textbooks that the black woman she gets a lot of different um pathologies such as fibromyalgia different muscle and and nerve issues more than other women on the planet because other nations of women on the planet because of the society that we live in so it's it's very clear that the man is the prize and i think the man is a prize because i've been i was married for 21 years and i lost my husband and um if i could have did some things differently i would have known that i am in the truth and now you know i just want to be a stefford wife <laughs> That's all I have to say. I think the man is the prize. And the Bible states it, and we learn in that every day. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I was just letting, letting y'all go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm so, here my- I think the man is the prize. I think he's the prize. And women who do everything that they do for their husbands, to make their husbands happy and help them meet what they need. That's what we're supposed to do because that's what we were made for. And I, I, I mute my mind on that. All right. All right. Um, Shanice, I wanted you to, uh, re, un, you know, unmute your mic once again. Uh, what do you make about it so far? I know you had uh, an opinion on it earlier. Um, what do you think about it so far? Um, overall, I don't know necessarily who's the prize, but just going back to the conversation that we just had, is it Sherry's or Sharice Sh- um, about the man choosing? I had read somewhere that this bird, I forget what kind of bird it is, just bear with me. This bird, she goes up, she flies up high, she's going to see if the man can follow her up. Um, she flies up high, she drops something else down to see, can he catch it? Um, so in nature, women kind of choose, are supposed to choose, you know, their mate based on, can he provide? Can he do all this and do all that? And I think what we're kind of doing now is we're setting back and kind of letting the guys choose and we're not under the coverage of our father or any other man to say, Hey, no, that's not that's not the right one or he's just playing with you or you know that that self that kind of self-respect we've kind of lost that a little bit on instagram and going outside half naked this is and that um and then there was a second piece y'all were saying um i forget the second piece you were saying the first thing was with choosing the mate and then you said there was another thing that you kind of got you guys were kind of going back and forth on um man say um uh, say real quick I, in in regards to the topic uh mm-hmm. sisters i do want y'all to listen to this right i want y'all to tell me what y'all think about this and this goes in regards to the topic right so listen to this real quick see if i can get it get it just right the population of the prisons mostly encompass fatherless homes Now, here's something that no one else has mentioned, which I think is cool, and I I don't really say this eloquently. If a man and wife raise a child, they're less likely to end up in jail 
but they have the same statistical chance as children raised by just their father. So if we want to keep children, adults, out of prison, mother, father, or just father, we don't want All right, I need to hear some thoughts. I'll speak on that. I agree that the man is very necessary in the household and highly valued. I'm not taking any value away from the man. I feel like a a household without the father and mother is imbalanced. So, um without the without the leadership and the, the the authority of a man in the home then the children uh they can run amok it, you know it is possible for a woman to raise a child alone but a lot of times there's trauma and a lot of things that go along with that um and statistically like what the uh, article is saying statistically um, the population of the prisons are through single parent homes with mothers, uh, single parent, sing, single women raising the children, which that's not our, I mean, it's our role to take care of the children and to lead the house, but we need the authority of the man in the house. Okay. Really quick, too. I remember what it was, a woman being a liability. Um, I don't see myself as a liability, but say my fiancé and I, we go out on a road trip, or even we just drive up the street. If he has to hit the brake really quick, he's putting his hand over to try to protect me. I become a liability at that point because he's in, he has to be in constant protection mode. It's not a liability as though I'm necessarily getting on his nerves or like that I'm that I don't add value to his life is more of a liability as in like when you were talking about being in war, all these men now are worried about this one woman. They don't mean to be, but that's just what they're, they're made to do. So you do become a liability because now I have to worry about you. Just like your child is, you love them, but they're they're a liability. You got to worry about them. I never really thought about it in that, that way. Say, uh, hold on one second. Um, I do want uh say the the divine reach. Do have some uh somebody that just came up on stage. I want them to kind of add into it also. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, divine reach. Your mic might be muted if you're trying to say something. Hello. Okay, there we go. There we go. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? I just want I don't want to get off topic, but I want to introduce myself. And before I, before everybody start to bid on me, and not want to hear what I say, um, I have a text here, severe neurological disorder with. And then bash his speech. So that's why I speak this way. So I just want to say that first before nobody wanted to hear me. <laughs> nah, you good, man. Yeah. But yeah, I, just, I have a rare neurological disorder. It's called a taxi at type 7. I was diagnosed with it when I was 21 years old. And uh, we're uh, bringing awareness to everyone. That's why I'm. Uh, that's why I'm getting on Clubhouse, so I can start raising awareness. Um, put together a nonprofit organization, the nonprofit organization. And so, hey, um, not to interrupt, uh, Divine Say instead, um. Uh, Reach out to us separately on biblical smoke at gmail.com. Okay, so uh, biblical, so the room name at mm. gmail.com. All right, so that way we can do it there. I want to, I want to divert too much of the attention away yeah. from uh, the topic. All right, yeah, I don't want to get off the topic, right? Yeah, 
okay. Um, but also, um, yeah, yeah, that, that's all you have for it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. For that. All right, bro. Uh, Timothy, can you hear me? Uh, Timothy, Timothy, you there? You might might be muted if you're trying to say something. Yeah, I'm here. All right, there we go, there we go. What you got on the topic, bro? And um, you can also add your input on the audio that I had just played if you had heard it. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 my brother. I heard the audio, and I definitely agree. I've seen it firsthand. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist by trade. And I used to work in um, juvenile detention facilities. Uh, I worked at a jail and a prison. So, uh, yes, that is true that most of the men in there do come from single parent households, households where they was uh, raised by women and the dad wasn't there in the household. And without the father being present, a lot of the children do not have discipline to restrain strong emotions. Matter of fact, um, a lot of them, because of the pain that they feel from coming from those households, are very angry. And they discharge that anger on each other. And they join other uh, groups that have that anger, which is called gangs. And they gangbang, they commit crimes, and they do a lot of uh, things that get themselves incarcerated or in trouble or commit crimes that are grounds for arrest, even if they haven't um, gotten arrested yet. And so now, um, then when brothers come in who represent respect, the, the male image of a father, they also have a form of disrespect toward them because the fathers wasn't there for whatever reason. And so, yeah, I've seen that firsthand on that. And then uh, my comment towards men uh, being the prize is definitely men are the prize uh, because a woman desires a man to take care of her and to protect her. So in that regards, he's the prize because he's called to do that by the Most High. And the Most High set the men in the order to do that. He's the prize because God called them. His, his prophets are men. All of them are men. And they do the work of the Most High. Therefore, we are the prize. So, you know, with that being said, all the scriptures <clears throat> that I heard you guys share are, are relevant and germane to the issue. And it, and it just, uh, uh, it, it doesn't diminish a woman's role in any kind of way. She compliments a man when she submits to his leadership. And they, so they're better as a team because that's the way the Most High made it. He created man and woman to be in a relationship, which is a marriage. And because that is what protects and raises a family and contributes to a healthy, striving nation under the Most High's uh, uh, leadership. So, hey, when um, if, if you if you want mind, let me let me jump in there real quick. Um, yeah. So, not only just in regards to what you're saying, but uh, sisters, why do you think, right? Because all right, men supposed to be uh, was that the, the the leadership, right? Okay, why do you think that sisters believe that they're the prize? And that men are not. Why do I want to hear? I do want to hear that from a woman because you go, you most, you gonna hear most men, most of the brothers. Yeah, we gonna say, all right, yeah, it's the men the prize. But why is it that sisters think that they're the prize? I do. I would. I would like to hear from a woman. Then I'm gonna come right back to you, Timothy, so we can be a, a, a conversation going forward like that. I would say that we think that we're the prize because we have to submit to the authority of the man. We we are under his rulership, under his authority, and we are supposed to serve them, not serve them. But we're supposed to serve the man. And 
the Most High gave us to them for a possession. A no, 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 no. My question is, why is it that most women, right? Because what, what you're saying is most women don't think that. That's not what. That's not on most women's mind at all. Like, why is it that most women believe that they're the? Pro- we heard the other night. I forget what the topic was. But we heard the other night, the, the damn sister said, I'm the table. I was like, oh. <laughs> um, so why is it that most women believe that they're the prize or that they don't have to bring anything to the table? That's why she said that. That they don't have to bring anything to the table. They just bring them and that's it. From a non-biblical point of view? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, most women think, yeah. Because most most women don't don't read. Period. Or don't read the Bible. Don't none of that. So why is it that most women? And by the way, some of you sisters, go ahead, raise your hand up. Uh, why is it that most women think that Shanice, uh, Shanice, you can also tag in, and then Timothy, I'm gonna come back to you as well. But go ahead. I would say Cardi B said it best. She don't cook, she don't clean, but she'll tell you how she got the ring. And it's an over sexualized society. So I feel like because they have sex and men are willing to you know everybody is just over sexualized everybody is following a lustful spirit so naturally um yeah that's what men follow and they you know are just totally i don't know they just wrapped up in it and women know that and men have the money women have the sex and that's the society that we live in from a worldly uh, point of view. Go ahead, somebody was about to say something. I was just waiting for somebody. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. I go ahead. yeah, my brother, it's it's simple to me that uh, I don't remember my brother's name who read the scripture from uh, Genesis, but. My comment follows and that that they were told and taught these things. And so the most I said, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were the prize? And they heard that, but they didn't hear it, hear it from the most high. He, he never said that the women are special. And if they. Um take their godly place, they are special jewels, like it does say in Proverbs 31. And that's special, but you come up in a, in that rank when you compliment your husband. And um, like the scriptures say, your, your man and your children praise you for the work that you do. But when you get fed by something or somebody else, and you go off to that, you start breaking up and tearing down the family and in your pursuit of your own self-righteousness, building yourself up with your degree and whatever gas somebody else told you. And now you're moving away from the biblical order and it caused conflicts within the household because the man knows he's the head, the leadership, and he rules over the woman because the head controls the body. And um, it's nothing wrong, women out there who are listening, to accept the man as the prize because you're connected to him. And whatever benefits that means, you also benefit from that. And there's nothing wrong with humbling down. Just like men, I would definitely humble down and compliment and praise a godly sister because she is worth uh, the price of jewels and she's precious if she takes her godly uh, 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 place. And like Paul says that... um, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me me jump in real quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. I'm with you. I want to tap into that mind of why majority of the women, and I'll say some some guys, some men, 
believe the opposite. Like, for example, we just had a sister up here and, you know, that, that believe that it's the women that's the prize. And there's a couple of y'all that actually has said that. I want to tap into that mind as to why is it that you sisters and some of you brothers think that it's the women and not the man. Because mo most of them, so realistically speaking, most everybody on the planet don't read the Bible. And if they do, they don't really care about the real context of it. So, you know, most of them don't don't really care nothing about that. Right. They just like, oh, yeah, the Bible thrown out the window. I'm the prize. I'm the table. I ain't got to bring nothing to it. I'm going to bring all of my problems to you. And then I'm going to just give you an extra bill to take care of. Yes. So, why is that? And uh, Shanice, I know you, uh, you was, I think I was about to actually say something. Then I let Timothy go ahead, but, but go ahead. And uh, Jen, you came right back up also. All right. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead, Timothy. And I'm going to let some, uh, I'm going to let some more people go ahead and make some more comments on it as well. But go ahead. You got it. Just uh, okay. it within the next uh, few, a few seconds. Yeah. 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 Real quick. Um, men have been misled too. To believe that a woman is the prize if she is very sexual, if she has accomplished some things in society, and she's independent. And some men feel intimidated by that and inferior to that, which is had nothing to do with the biblical standard. So they view her as the prize. And again, um, it not necessarily nothing wrong with a woman accomplishing that, but she can't lose her head in the process. She got to stay sober minded and understand that these accomplishments all goes toward um, the family and her husband, if she has one and not that let that be a source or a reason why she can't get a husband because she's gassed up by those things. And so, you know, with that, I'll just, uh, listen to anybody else's comments who, who has something to say. All right. Uh, sisters, y'all have anything to, uh, to mention based off of something that I was actually saying just now? Jen, Shanice, um, Speaking of which, true history, I don't think I ever called out. Well, I probably did, but you may, you may never unmuted your mic. Are you there? And excuse me if y'all hear echo. Go ahead, Jim. No hey, Judah, what's going on, man? Uh, Jen, you, you, uh, you there? You was about to say something? No, I just had a question. So, um, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, okay, so how Brother Jeff broke it down to me. I'm not going to say I disagree, but I'm, I just got a question. So, if the man is the prize, that means the woman is the winner of the prize. Is that what you guys are saying? Yeah. And, matter of fact, something that I, I did want to say, I was thinking about it. Um, I think to how you were saying it, you were confusing a, a woman's mm -hmm. natural duties to her man as being the prize versus it just being something she's supposed to know how to do. Okay. That, that's, that's the thing. Because a lot of what you say you, you, do, you do with your man is something that women just should know how to do in general. But a lot of women nowadays, it almost is like this. How people like to say common sense in moderators, if y'all want to add in, y'all can feel free. Uh, how people say that uh, use common sense, but nowadays common sense ain't common. So people look at you know that as wisdom. What sisters are naturally supposed to do today looks strange because almost every single sister is either on TikTok, showing body parts she ain't supposed to be showing on OnlyFans, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. They're on that stuff. And then being an actual woman, they ain't doing that. No, no sisters really doing that, which poses topics just like this. You feel me? No, I, I agree. I guess, I guess what I was trying to say, it's not going back to that, but just uh, in general, I would rather be the person receiving the prize if it was me. 
But I guess we just look at, you know, prize different differently. Because I, I think the position that you would want to be in will be the one receiving it versus the prize itself. So I just thought it was, and I guess in my mind it made sense to, uh, if if I'm made for him, that he's the one receiving the prize. But you're saying it's the other way around. That's, that's fine too. But okay. I think it's the godly man is the prize. We're not talking about a common man that's running the street, whoremongering and all that. We're talking about a godly man that's loving his wife like Christ loved the church and the wife doing her duties and being that pillar of rest and all that stuff that the Bible teaches us. That right. is a prize to have a man to do be that love God and love and be godly and take care of his family and his wife. You would want to the passion to be there and do everything you can for your husband so he can be successful and succeed in life because that's what he needs. So yes, so I I do I get you. Yeah, okay, all right. I mute my mic. Say, um, I have a, I have a back chat. I just gotta mention Violet. Violet, raise your hand. They have somebody that's in the back chat trying to tell me that both is a prize, and disappointed in the topic. I can tell that just by this topic, a lot of y'all, if the chat was open, that thing would be going with damn bananas right now. Cause back chat going, back chat going a little wild, talking about both is a prize. Just come on up. Don't be afraid to raise your hand and talk. But go ahead. Somebody was about to say something? I would like to say something. When I think of a prize, a prize is a possession. Hence the term prize possession. So if we are the possession, you know, he that getteth the wife, he that findeth the wife, findeth a good thing and gaineth the possession. I don't know if I said that right, but the word says that we are a man, a man who finds a wife, we become his possession, his prize possession, the most important thing. So when I think prize, I think possession because that's what a prize is, a possession. I mute my mic. Let me, let me. Oh, I'm sorry. I think of, of a possession can be a jewel. I'm sorry, but he was. Timothy, you were talking. I apologize. Yeah, I just wanted to say real quick that we have to watch how we associate meaning with uh, prize and possession because we were we were slaves. We were somebody's possession, and and we weren't valued. So it's the it's the it's the it's the value that you attribute to it. And what we are associating with the term is out the scriptures. And even so, I can agree that uh, it can be ambiguous. But when you tie it to a biblical foundation, it does make it a little bit more clear. And you can bring the scriptures out to explain the associated meaning and the value. Because, you know, we just when just a possession you know, you got to watch that. That That's a very loose association. Somebody can quickly turn around and just say, like I said, we was master's possession. We were slaves and we didn't mean anything. So that in and of itself uh, doesn't help define prize. But I see how that can be associated in somebody's mind, though. I definitely well, can't see that. Let me let me let me put, hold on real quick. See, um. Okay, I'm making sure my reader was there. Hey, Gumbo, you still there? Yes, sir. Hey, go to Sirach 3624. Y'all interpret this for me then. Because the word, the word's starting to get lost in the sauce just a little bit. So go ahead and interpret this for me. The book of Sirach, chapter 36 and verse 24. He so, that getteth... Hold on one second. Make sure that's what I want. All right, yeah, go ahead. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. Mm-hmm. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Right. He that getteth the wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself. 
somebody that's like him. But what? So, so, so his wife is supposed to be like him. So y'all go ahead. What do y'all hear about that? I, I definitely hear that. Well, that hold on, Timothy. That, let me hear. Let me let me hear some more of the sisters first, because I, I okay. want your I want your opinion on it. But I definitely want to hear some of the sisters' opinion on it also. Sure, sure. So, Can you read it again? Yes, this is Sirach chapter 36 and verse 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. King James. Okay. All right. Anything? <laughs> I heard somebody say something. Oh, where, where, where you got on it? Because I'm hearing, I was hearing the word a lot about the possession that you got to think about the, when we was a possession, we was under slave master. So, but yet you hear scripture talking about he that getteth the wife beginneth the possession. So somebody help me out. I you know what, the sister that was the sister that was just talking about the possession, um, and then the brother brought out uh, what did he say uh, about the usages of words? I think that's what we're getting mixed up on. I think people when they hear the word prize, it's just like I guess I'm a, I always look at prize as the person receiving it being the the beneficiary. Not the other way around. So I, I don't know. The scripture is just basically saying that uh, the woman is his is his uh, possession, something given to him, and not not the other way around. I I would like to add that a prize, by definition, is a possession. Right. So with this, so with this scripture, right? So, so now, okay. So with this scripture, y'all would say that the, so now with it switch, y'all think that the woman is the prize based off of this script? No, no, no. Well, yeah, but, but when you, but when, the way you saying it is making it seem like we're saying that, oh, we, you know, we're, we're the prize. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not connecting because it's like, you can't be the prize and the, the receiver of the prize at the same time. Like, so that's, that's where I'm being confused on uh, how that could be. Everything you're reading is saying that, okay, we're the help me. We're uh, made for him, uh, which I agree with all of those things. So that means that he's the receiver of the prize. So it doesn't have to mean that uh, in the, when we're talking women and uh, marriage, it doesn't mean that I'm the one that that should be put on this pedestal. It means that it actually means the opposite, that he's actually the one. And for him being in that position, he's the one receiving the prize. So that's well, why I understand why. And you said earlier that um, the well, things that it. I listed. Go ahead. Well, check it, check it, check it. Read, read the verse again. It's a, the second part of the verse is what's getting missed. Because I, I know why you're thinking okay. that. It's the second part of the verse is getting missed. So read it, read it again. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, uh -huh. a help like unto himself. That part. That part a right help. there. A help like unto himself. A help like unto himself. Because she's going to be molded after his mind. Her, she she's she would be she's supposed to be a female version carbon copy of that man the actual prize she's supposed to be like she's supposed to be like him that last part is the part that that makes that important right there that's the reason why I pulled it because I I asked it based off of that scripture to see exactly what y'all would think about it because I kept on hearing the word uh it almost almost kind of uh, caught me off guard when you're talking about possession and slavery. I was like, it's not really what we're talking about here. But uh, that's why I had pulled this. Well, I think, I think that... Prize. Prize versus 
um, pr- 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 mm, oh my God. <laughs> possession. Possession. A possession is a responsibility. He has a responsibility to lead that woman. She doesn't have the responsibility to lead him. She's the prize. If somebody gives you a she's gift, not the prize. She's, 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 the she's the possession. He is the prize. If someone gives you something as a gift or a prize, that is, you have gained something wonderful. Like you, some, most of the time, prizes and gifts are for free. A possession is a a responsibility. He has now, not only does he have to make sure that he is, that he takes care of his bills, now he has to take care of her bills. He has to take care of her health care. He has to take care of everything. She is a possession. She doesn't have to do that for him. He's the prize. Right. Maybe the, um, because of scripture, maybe uh, the sister said possession because we can't find the word prize in the Bible as it pertains to, uh, you know, the subject. Yeah, that 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 is exactly uh, what my point is. And what the sister just got to finish saying is that um, she is. The woman is the man's responsibility once they're married. And as the scripture says, uh, like a help unto himself, uh, she becomes a helping extension of the man. And out of submission, she submits to the order of the house. And she's had somebody taken care of, and it started with her father. See, the father, you know, took care of the daughter, and he turned that responsibility over uh, to the husband. And to and, and to me, in that sense, she goes from being the father's possession to the hus to to being a wife as a possession. And whoever's taking care of her, she she's view that person as a prize because you're being taken care of. I would like to add. And she's got to shine it up. She's got to shine the prize. It's like getting the trophy. She's got to so, shine it up. Oh, she's so hold on real quick. Hold on real quick, Davida. Say, Davida, hold on one second. So hold on one oh, second. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so, um, Shanice. I don't have anything to add yet. I'm just listening from both sides. No, I figured. Um, I figured that. That's why I called you out. <laughs> yeah. Why, um, I figured that's why I called you out. I think what Jen is saying is more so, you know, it's really just a, when you go, say you go to the state fair or something and you win a prize, you're excited because you're the winner of that prize. You get to, you get, you win. You get to get whatever that is. You can choose. They say, choose which prize you want. And you get to choose which prize you want. And hopefully you get the biggest and the best prize. And that's, you walk around that carnival and you got the best prize, you know? Um, So I kind of see where she's coming from. And then I also see where Davida and her daughter are coming from as, you know, the man is the prize that you have to clean it and like a trophy. You got to clean it and, you know, tend to them and, you know, all those different type of things. So I think, I think what the, true takeaway is prize or not i think what we as black women kind of can get from it is like you said the three things not being quiet sex and um food but also like just taking away that a lot of times right now we're putting our men down we're not seeing the um the goodness in them so by saying that they're a prize that's not a it's hard for some of us to swallow that pill and say that, oh, this, this, our black men are prizes because we're so used to putting them down. So I, I, that's kind of where I'm, where I'm at with it. Well, uh, let me add, let me add this curveball in there, right? Mm-hmm. Let me add this curveball in there. When it comes to your lineage, right? Um, how is your lineage based? Is it based off of the male? Or is it based off of the female? How is your lineage based when you have to go back to your ancestry? How is that based? The male. 
I would say the male. Okay, Jen says male. Shanice, what you say? The male. You say the male. Okay. I want I want to ask y'all two in, in particular. I, I, I get everybody else, but I want to ask y'all two in particular, right? Um, why is that? Why? Uh, we take the man's or, name. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think we we take the father's name. Um, we we the father leads the house. Their rules. Okay. Anything else? Jen, y'all knew you was well, about to say something. Always, I, I just always thought it was because the man carries the seed, so the, the lineage just yeah. comes from him. That's okay. it. That's it. Okay. That's it. Like, think about it like this. I'm going to give you a very carnal example, right? Very carnal example. Um, use this all the time in regards to something like this. So, uh, let's say I had an apple, right? And I wanted to plant an apple tree. I take the seed from the apple, whatever the case is, and I put it in the ground. Let's say the ground that I put it in is in America. Um, what's going to grow is the apple tree. If I plant that same seed over in a different land mass, let's say China or whatever, it's still going to grow an apple tree. Regardless of where I plant it, it's still going to be an apple tree. The roots and whatnot, the, the branches might look a little different based off of where it's planted, but it's still going to be an apple tree. Now, here's the thing. Uh, what is that? You need fruit. You need soil. You, you, need, you need the whole thing. You need the soil, right? It's just like a man needs a woman, they need it. So, but here's the point. You need that thing. The seed actually is what continues to give you more of the fruit. More, it keeps on bringing it on, keeps on getting it, you know, just like how a man and a woman keeps on bringing on the generation to generation. Reason why I brought that out is the prize comes into generation, keeps on moving forward. You have to continue to reproduce. So the man does need the woman. But without the man, the generation, the genealogy cannot continue without him being there. That's why Judge said it was earlier. I forget who was talking. I don't think it was either one of y'all. It was somebody else, probably that uh that Michelle sister. Um we have kids with us all the time. They're in our balls. We got them with us all the time. Y'all only have them once we implant them inside of y'all, and then they grow for the nine months and then come out. But we have thousands of them with us continuously every day. And then also, I want to make this point. Just think, just, just think about it for a second. Abraham, in his old age, men, men in their old age, the sperm is still active. After a certain age for the women, after a certain age for the women, your womb doesn't carry the same strength it did when he was younger to be able to have a child. But men, the sperm continues to go all the way close to the time that they die. You know? Right. That's that's what. So when it comes towards the prize, when it comes towards the prize, that's where that came from. Hey, Lion, welcome. West Coast, I ain't even introduced y'all, man. Lion, West Coast. Caleb, what's going on, man? Hey, shalom, shalom. You know, um, but yeah, yeah. So, hey, who who I was about to go? Oh, matter of fact, real quick before I continue, because I, you know, I keep on going on with it. Everybody, y'all continue to share the room. Share the room on all your social media platforms. Hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter. All right, keep the uh, topic trending there. As well, if you want to reach us outside of this platform, you can always reach us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. Again, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. All right. Um, yeah, so, hey, West Coast, you, uh, you want to bring something out to the people? All right, good. Yeah, I'm going to hold it down. Yeah, man. Uh, so, yeah, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to hold it down. We're going to keep it keep it live. Uh, and, again, topic is uh, men are the prize, not the women. Do you agree or disagree? All right, share the platform. Uh, be sure if you got something to say, raise your hand. We're going to bring you up. Let's talk about it. All right, we had, I think, Sister Jen was last. Uh, sister, uh, the, 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 
Devetta. You got something to say on the topic? No, we already spoke. I think is Judah is next. I'm not sure. I think so. Okay, or, okay. Or the. I don't know. The. Yeah, we just creating conversation on the stage in regards to the topic. So y'all, hey, um, Dominique, I don't think you have to say anything. And Jen, you have something you was about to say? Well, when you get when you get time, when you get finished with everybody else, I just had a question for you. I mean, it looks like we got time. So if you got a question, uh, go ahead, and, go ahead and ask. Okay, so when you you were talking about earlier when, when Judd and I were talking, and um, you said that some of the things I mentioned were. Uh, just things I should be doing anyway, which I agree 100%. Um, but, like, the main reason why I brought those up, because Judd asked me um, who should provide and who should protect. And I said, my husband. And would you agree that those are things that, that he's supposed to do as well? Because I was just trying to give you the reason why I brought those things up. Um you know, he was kind of telling me some of the things that the man is supposed to do. And in, in, in return, I was just letting him know that, yeah, you know, I do my part of the deal as well. I mean, there's things I do above that as well, but just my reasonable service, as to say, um, you know, I, uh, I do that. So I guess my question was, is, the things that he asked me, do you think that those are, um, like, are those things he's supposed to do, or is that something that is just, you know, regular? I mean, special, I should say. Right, right. I think I, I think I hear what you're saying, sis. Um, you know, when it comes to, you know, basically men and, 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 and the standard when it comes to their obligation as far as protector, provider, you know, is those is, is, is those things that he's supposed to do or, or, or you know, is that kind of like, you know, come with the territory? And, 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 and one of you moderators want to touch that? Well, I was asking JB because, you know, he had asked me a question or brought out yeah. something concerning that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sis. I had to uh, step away just for a brief, brief oh. moment. So I caught I uh, caught the tail end of it, but I'm I'm back now. What you had said? Well, okay. Remember a little bit ago you said that um, when when Judd and I were having a conversation that I right. had mentioned some of the things that I did for my husband, and you were saying, well, you know, those are kind of like things that you know you should should do. With right. I agree. Right back. Which I do agree, but I was asking, okay, so the stuff that he brought up, like, he asked me, the, uh, uh, who, should, who should be the provider, who should be the protector? And we both agreed that it should be the man. I was asking you, aren't those things that he's supposed to be doing? Because I, that's the reason why I brought out what I did, based off of what he said. Ah, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. The man is supposed to be the provider and the protector. Uh, Gumbo, give me that in Ephesians chapter five. Um, I pray you're in the spirit with me. You know what I'm looking right. for? So, so my question was, but, uh, okay, my, I'm let's see. Hold on. Well, hold, hold, hold. What's your question? I thought that was your question. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, he asked me those things and I was like, you know, yeah, he should do that. And then I told him some of the things that I did. And but then you said but then you said, um, well the things that I said was things I should be doing already, which I agree. But I was just asking, so what's the difference? Oh, no, no, no. So I don't want you to get confused. I'm I'm okay. saying the same thing that Judd was saying. The only thing that I added in there was that when right. you was making mention how you were the um how you would say that you're the prize because of what you're providing him. What I mentioned was things that you're saying is the that would make you the prize is things that common is like commonly women should already know how to do and provide for their man anyways. 
nothing else nothing else added you know that's the only thing that i right. just added in there outside of that me and him saying the same Jill thing saying, but right i i know y'all saying the same thing but Joe was saying that okay well who's the provider who's the protector and he was he was saying that like okay well you're the one getting the prize because then he also added that you know he got two my two uh his two sons that's even extra for me i guess you know that's the price for me he was saying so what i was saying was that Yes, my husband is a provider and protector. Yes, I, you know, cook, clean, all of those things, which I will be doing whether I was with him or not. But because, you know, I'm his wife, I, I, I think the gift part is not so much of me doing it. It's that I, I enjoy doing it. You know what I mean? It's not like a chore. Um, but well, well, still, <laughs> even that, even that, I, I want to cut in there for a second. Even that. Okay. It's supposed to, you're supposed to enjoy doing that because that's the whole reason why you were created. Um, Gumbo. I agree, but that's, that's not always the case for everybody. I mean, sometimes you don't, it's as not. a woman, you don't always feel like doing Wait, it. But, can I, can um, I? Sure. Who's, uh, who's, who's about to say something? Hey, Benjamin. Yes, sir. It so, was me. Hey, what's yeah. going on, bro? What's going on, y'all? Pray everybody's well. Yes, sir. Doing good. Doing good. It's a hot topic. I, I see a lot of sisters on stage. I'm just checking in. I'm um, just listening in right now. Yes, Give me sir. my mic. Pray y'all are well. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is he, the examples that he gave me as for what the man should be doing was the things that the man should do and the things that the examples I gave is also what the woman should be doing. But I but he was saying, well, I should look at his things as a prize and my things are just I should be doing it anyway. Yeah. So the things that he is like being a provider, a protector, and so on and so forth, right? That is his role. Is is that's what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to provide security towards the whole to, towards it, right? And if necessary, if it comes down to it, right? If you if you do what you're supposed to be doing as, as a wife, if it comes down to it, he will give his life to be able to protect you and the children. Right. And your role would be to do the other things around, like ordering the house, like ordering uh, the house as far as that goes. That's why I said, um, say, Gumbo, the Ephesians 5 that I wanted. You know what I was looking for? I'm shooting from the hip. I can't quote it at the moment. It's, you know, about. Can, uh, can, I, can I please? Where I'm at five. Five. Love your wife. Hey, hey, hold on, sis. Hey, we guys, we gonna come right to you, sister Alicia. We gonna come right to you. Yeah, I got you, Alicia. I, I promise you, I ain't gonna forget about you. Trust me. Okay. It's just I want to ask. I want to make sure I answer uh, Jen's question. All right. Um, yeah, Ephesians five is it's about Christ in the church. That one. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verse twenty-five. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church right. and gave Himself for it. Right. He said, even as, even as Christ loved the church, you got to, you got to just, if you never read it, I'm going to help you out. Right. Okay. Christ, okay. he fed, he fed the people. Right. Christ healed the people. Christ made sure that there was a sanctuary for the people to go. So you can attribute that towards having a house to, uh, to be into. Right. And he died for them. He made sure that they was protected. Uh, even when he was about to die, he's uh, uh of all those he was uh, talking, you know, he reached out to uh, God and, and you know in prayer. He was like, of all those that you uh you gave me, Lord, I ain't lose not one. So he made sure that he protected them. So all of those things that we that that Christ did for the church, the example that he did goes towards how the man is supposed to be in the house. So yes, that's his role. That's his role, right? Likewise, the wife. Her role is to be joyous. I can't think of the script off the top of my head. It just, it, it just slipped my mind. It's like one o'clock in the morning. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I agree with that concept. But, but to your point, to your point, to your point, because you was like, not everybody feels joyous to do it. Not every sister. They, they're not going to. I'm going to tell you this. If there was three, I'm, I'm going to give you some, some wild math. I want you to listen good to this real quick. If there was three billion black and Hispanics on this side of the world, right? Three billion. There's only going to be one billion of them that actually will do what they're supposed to be doing. Two thirds of our nation just won't get the point. They're going to think that it's just on their side. 
and they're not going to be joyous to actually do what they want to like do with the uh, with their requirements. They they just won't get it. So majority of them won't. There's only a select few women who are actually going to be humble, actually going to be submissive, and see what their role is and apply their role to their marriage, to their relationship. Right. There's only going to be a very select few sisters that do that and will enjoy doing it. Because they care about God and they care about their man. Right. Okay. Thank you. you know. Yeah, no problem. Hey, um, Lion, you got it, my brother. I know Alicia, she has something. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. How are you? Thank you for inviting me to this room. Um, yeah. I do have a a big problem with a lot of things that are being said at the moment. If you would hear me out just a little bit. Um, and it's how women should act or how men should act and the portrayal of how the, the wife should act and how the husband should act. But I mean, we're in 2023 now, so we have to, be realistic about right now what it is so right now what it is women are independent men are independent we're all free thinkers so i'm a little you know taken back on the uh comments that are being made here on how like you should act or this or this way should act x y and z a certain way so please this, this. What, yeah. What was what was said you don't agree with? I'm I'm just checking in, so I'm trying to find out what was well, said well, that you don't agree with. Well, there was just a statement that was just said before that was like, if you're a wife, you should act this way towards your man. X. What way? I I I'm just I'm just relaying what I heard. You know, two minutes ago. Well, I can't. What was the, yeah, but what was the way? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm just saying the the gist of it was that I can't relay it verbatim. I'm just saying what I just heard, and it was just a type of way one should act towards another. Do you know so, who was? Do you know who was speaking that said that? I mean, I think it was JB. I'm not sure. I think it was JB. Uh, hey, hey, sis, did the brother give a scripture to clarify what he was saying? I don't need a scripture. You... I'm talking no, wait, 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 wait. I don't Alicia, need... Alicia, Alicia. Yeah, my name is Alicia. My name is Alicia. Alicia. My name is Alicia. apologies. Alicia, this is biblical smoke. So we back, We believe in the, the Bible, and we're going to back everything we say up with the Bible. So okay. if you don't believe in the Bible, you may be in the wrong place, my You're sister. right. You're right. All right? You're right. You're right. All right. You're right. All right, all right. So, so yeah. So everything we bringing out is gonna be based on biblical text, man. All right. And and today's topic: men are the prize. All right, not the woman. All right. Do you agree with that? I know, uh, Sister Alicia was getting ready to bring the smoke. She probably didn't agree that men is the prize. But I tell you what, you know, we going based on what the scriptures say. So if y'all got something to say on the topic, if you agree, if you disagree, you know something that you heard, you want to speak on, you know, speak on it. Come to the stage. All right. So uh, let's see here. Uh, I think we left off. I don't know if uh, Sharice, did you come up or did you have something to say? I see. What are you doing? Yes, I want to add another thing. So, uh, I was just thinking of our foremother, our forefather and foremother, uh, Rachel, and our forefather, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he served seven years for her. Is that not a prize? He served more than seven years for her. But is that not a prize? Why would he serve for her if she's a liability and he wanted her as his mm -hmm. wife to be his possession. So is that not an example of 
a woman being a prize to a man. And and also, when we say prize, you know, I, I understand that a prize is something of value. And I believe that we understand that men have value. I don't think that us saying that we are the prize takes away from the value that the men have. That's exactly what you're saying when you say that. That's exactly what is being communicated when you say that. Is be, that is being implied when you well, keep saying the woman I mean. is the prize. Well, that's not what I mean. You know, the topic being who is the prize, the man or the woman. You know, when I say prize, I say prize in the, uh, you know, as far as being a possession. You know, because if I have a possession... If something is given to me as a possession, it belongs to me. So if the man is the prize, that means he belongs to me. He's my possession. But if I'm the prize, then I belong to him. I'm his possession. So it, it that's where I'm coming from when we talk about being a prize. But as far uh, as the value that men have, I'm not taking away from that. Because I do understand that men have the authority and the dominion over the whole earth. And we are, in, you know, as far as everything within the earth, I understand that men have the dominion. So therefore, we are in the possession of the man still. Okay, so well, since the majority of women on earth, majority of black women doesn't don't look at it that way. When they scream prize, they feel like they're the catch and they're the focal point of the relationship. They think they're the, 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 the possession or the hierarchy in a relationship. That's what they're interpreting it as. So you probably have one 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 of a kind that think the other way. So well, we're going by the majority, sis. Well, this is just my point what? of view. And and I would I, I I do believe that, you know, that God created us for the man. So, you know, it's not to say, you know, it's okay to say that yes, we are valuable to 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 you. Your wife is valuable to you. Your wife does add value to your life. You know? Because that's the way God created it to be. So I don't think it's taking anything away from the man or we're diminishing the man. And this is just my point of view. I know that, you know, everyone has a different uh, perspective and, and point of view. You know, this is just mine. So I mute my mic. Oh, but about the topic about about uh, Jacob and Rachel and him serving yes. for her. Why would he serve for her if she wasn't of value to him? So okay, I like to answer that. I like to answer that real quick. As far as our forefathers, uh, 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 sister, better hold on real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, before you respond, sis, we're gonna allow the moderators to uh, to answer the question, and then we're gonna give you to give you the play, give you the platform. All right, right. Hey, uh, to answer that question, give me that in Exodus. I think it's twenty-two or twenty-one about the diary. I think it's verse seventeen. You gotta remember, uh, back back then the custom was uh, our forefathers and foremothers they would arrange weddings, and their arrangement would implicate some in some cases a diary. Read that for me. Yes, sir. This is the book of Exodus, chapter twenty-two and verse sixteen. If a and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Read if, on. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. So they, if he refused it, he would say, oh, give me a dowry. Hey, I want to give my daughter to you for this much. Or I want you to serve for this long to get my daughter. So in Jacob's case, that's what it was. He offered himself to serve because he desired his his daughter to be his wife. And when you read the history, he supplanted, he kind of tricked him and gave him his other daughter, the senior daughter, and then he served again another seven years, which which is another story. But point is, that was the custom back then. It wasn't that, you know, that she was, you know, you know, I, he just wanted her. That's all it was, and then, and that's the that was the custom having a diary to get the woman. So to answer your question, hey, and sis, nobody's saying that our wives or women don't add value in a relationship. They should add value in a relationship, or else there's no point in having a a, a woman around. If she's not going to add no value, which some men do. Some men are the ones being used. 
and the woman don't add no value except a pretty face and a big behind, and he's milking, and she's milking him, you know? So, yes, a woman should have add some type of value to a brother's life. So if you want to say she's a prize, fine. But that man, um, uh, uh, overall, is going to be the one who is the protector, the provider, and m more likely than not, if it's a if it's a biblical righteous relationship, he is the prize. Why? Because he's going to be the one putting out the paying mo the majority of the bills, if not all the bills, uh, providing, protecting, food, clothing, shelter, and duty of marriage. That's what the man is obligated to provide in a righteous marriage. Not a nigger marriage, not a, not a black marriage. That's what, we're, that's what we've been accustomed to in, in America, a black marriage where we just winging it. No, we got to go back to what the scriptures are saying and do things by the scriptures. Mute my mic. All right, sister, uh, uh, Cherish, that makes sense to you? Did that, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. All uh, praise, all uh, praise, all right. So we got uh, 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 so a couple new brothers to the stage. Um, I will just for the sake of... Uh, a respect, this is Devon, De, 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 Devetta. I want to give you an opportunity to uh, to speak. You said you had something to, to 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 add to the topic. Hey, family, this is Judah, Brody. I don't know how long. I don't know what, what's going on. Can y'all mind if I speak my piece real quick? Just who? It's Judah. I know I came up on the stage right after Timothy was speaking and um, kind of like going. Clean over me. I ain't saying I ain't, you know, I ain't get to, you know, add my little two cents. But that's okay with the family. Okay, you so what you fell off and came back or something? Now I just had to leave out because I just kind of unmute, but it ain't, I, I, I ain't see no, um, you know, sign of me being heard, so I just came back in. You know what, brother? We give you opportunity, but go ahead and speak your piece. Want to simply say this? I think, um, I think the uh, one mis misunderstanding from us to our sisters. Is that a lot of our sisters think that it's, this is a thing about us being right instead of what's right? You know what I'm saying? So they think it's like a competition to them. Like they're not hearing all the scriptures being brought out, all the different perspectives, because then they, they pride is making them think that this is about us wanting to have one up on them about being right instead of us telling them or sharing with them what's right. But um, I just simply want to say like this: if my if if the reality of the fact was. My woman was to be in a position when I get a woman growing into a man, I get a woman that's going to die for me. That's, you know, what I'm saying that's in a position to die for me, shield me, um, provide for me. I, I can honestly say it like if that was, this is was the world we was living in. Well, a woman was the one that, you know, went downstairs to check on the noise. Or, you know what I'm saying? Make sure we good. Hey, that's my prize. I would just be able to be honest and say that it ain't, it ain't gonna have no pride in saying, oh, no, nah, man, and make up all these different excuses about why I feel like I'm the prize and I got a woman that provides for me. I don't have to do too much for or fives, you know, working and laboring. And on, and on top of that, the main thing, if the worst happened, this woman is in a position to be on some Wakanda type of shit and, you know, fight for me and kill somebody, you know what I'm saying? Put her life on the line. Hey, See, hey, that's hey, my hey, prize. Judah. Judah. What's up, brother? Are you saying that's what that's your prize meaning that's what you want your woman to no, do? No, no, not at all. I'm using that as an example, brother Benjamin. I'm saying that I don't have the most men we don't have we not coming with pride. If that me, you Benjamin, if we was living in a world where the most high head is switched around where they was to put their life on the line, they was to labor for us to protect us, we would be able to be honored. We would be able to just honor that and be like, yeah. The women are prized, but that's not the reality. The reality is that us as men, we the ones put our body on the line to fight for our women. And I just, like I said, this is not a thing about who's right and who's wrong. It's about what's right and what's wrong. So I think the sisters need to consider that. We ain't, if, if, like I said, if the sisters' natural position was to protect protect us with their life, provide for us, labor, make sure the family's straight, us as men would be able to just calmly say, yeah, you the prize. But that's not, you know what I'm saying? It's just a thing of, I think the sister got a level of pride that we don't have. We in a level of honesty. 
I don't know, but okay, that's all I'm saying. No, hell no, that ain't what it is. I'm I, I'm honored to be able to put my life on the line to protect my family. And it's sad that the sisters can't say, well, yeah, that's my pride. I mean, that's my prize. That's all I got to say, man. Hey, hey, Judah, hey, uh, I like one of the points you made concerning the woman saying, you said, you said how they, the women today think they have a choice. And in reality, you really don't. It's like a standard. You know, the Bible is like the, 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 the backbone of the foundation. It's either you're going to obey it or you don't. Now, today, America teaches us that we have options. Like that last woman that came on talking about we are free thinkers. You know, that, that, this, is the, this is the demonic thinking way of life today. And it's unfortunate, but that's what it is on this earth. Like, that's why today a lot of you black women think your ID, your ideas are yours and really is not like look at that movie coming to america is a good example what well, imani i think it was played by vanessa calloway uh back then it, it, they made mockery with that movie by having a jump like a dog and bark like a, that was all mockery but in all reality that is what it is <laughs> the woman was literally bred and raised to prepare herself to serve and be a wife to a man a godly man. That's how it was back then. But, you know, movies today make mockery of it, and that's why women have this pride or this I'm not taking accountability spirit on them today because they refuse to accept uh, what God is counseling us to follow and do. So, yeah, that's some heavy point. Uh, one, of, one of the points I see you made where you really don't have an option because at the end of the day, <laughs> without a man, there's, there's almost no salvation for the sister. And hey, brother, I just like I hey, remember what hey, I, hey, brother, me, just like I had said, remember, go ahead. Hold on, um, hold on Judah, hold on, Judah. What you say, Benjamin? Question real quick. Even like you just said about if you don't have a man these days, look how hard things are getting right now. Watch two years from now with this famine that's coming. Watch by 2025 when food is going to be scarce and you, you have all these new laws that just came into effect in some parts of the country uh, January 1st where certain laws are going to be uh, um, done away with, such as um, burglarizing your home, kicking in your door, uh, um, things of that nature. Those, those things are being done away with in Chicago, uh, um, I think it's Seattle, parts of California, and other, other cities, and it's going to keep trickling down. What your single sister going to do without the protection of a man? You think your little 9 millimeter? I see a lot of sisters training to to carry a gun and all of that, that's, that's, that's great. But you really think without the protection of a man that you're going to be able to survive in the next couple years with what's coming down? Listen, sisters, it's time to get your minds right. Put away that feminism, that, that strong, independent woman, that strong, independent woman uh, mentality ain't got you nowhere but lonely, bitter, frustrated and ran through you my mic bro just like i had said hey benjamin and um the other brother that was speaking what's your name brother jay jay exactly so jb and benjamin can we let these sisters know like i gave the example if the reality of it where the most have made it what they they was to go out and labor for us would we be so prideful to say that no nah, we the prize wouldn't we be able to just honestly say, yes, yeah, sister, you the prize. That's a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we would just honor that. It's not. That's why I'm just trying to get that over to the sister to convey that understanding. Like, it's not about who's right. Stop fighting with us. We're trying to tell y'all because we all been tricked. But it's us, the men, that's supposed to lead us back on the right track. Just honor that, accept that, and be comfortable in it. I got a question if I can ask. Lion, where you at, Lion? Uh, my bad, my bad. Who was that? Who said that? Uh, that was Timothy. I said I got a question if I can ask. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, Brother Timothy. Okay, I think we had Brother G that was next in the in the, in the queue. So if uh if 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 Brother G uh Brother G settles. If you ain't got nothing to, uh, to add to the topic, then we'll double back. Oh, 
Okay, brother G. Seto sound like he ain't he ain't got nothing. Brother Timothy, go ahead with your piece, brother. All right, my brother, thank you. Uh, just I was, you know, uh, I was wanting to know if we had a biblical synonym that goes with this prize thing to make it easier to to clarify and to see for many of the sisters because we shared some scriptures but is there a word a synonym that we could use that we can just state biblically that says it makes it plain that 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 men are the prize yeah lord L O R D. You can read about it in First Peter chapter three. Okay. Now, 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 for the sisters that heard that, what are do you associate that with prize in your mind? And I think that's where uh, uh, the remedy could is when we associate Lord Head. Uh, those kind of biblical terms to uh, hit the nail right on the head so that it won't be any type of misunderstanding or confusion. And we can take away just that Lord head. And those are the associations with uh, prize. Hey, here's what you should do. Here's what, um, Hey, one of the brothers get the definition of the word Lord. Um, and let's pin it to the top. Everybody can see what the definition of the word Lord is. And let's get let's get it in uh first Peter three. Good, Timothy. Yep, yep. So yeah, basically, uh that that's kind of what I wanted because it does bring clarity. Because um it it, it it when you say it, it it is a good way. The topic as it is stated is a good way to add comments. Uh, but at the end result, you know, the Bible stands uh, firm because uh, also, you know, the ladies need to know that your role is not diminished in any kind of way. Because the Bible in Proverbs 31 talks about you as a precious jewel and that you precious and that, you know, um, to have a woman, a biblical woman at your side uh, is something that every man seeks after and wants. So. You, you are special in the Most High's eyes, and your role and your position is found a special place in the scripture. And I don't know the scripture in um, uh, Ecclesiastes, but it does talk about uh, women being precious when they uh, serve their biblical role. And so in those eyes, it may not be equivalent to prize or Lord, but your role is special and is highly favored. Because I don't know no brother, you know, on this panel that wouldn't want a righteous sister according to the scriptures. And that that's my point. So, and then if the sisters, again, I think I said this earlier, that if you are connected to your Lord, to your head, to your prize, that also makes you special and significant as well. Because I don't know, any woman who wouldn't want to be the wife of any of the prophets that was in the Bible. If I'm wrong, uh, state your case. I'll mute my mic. Okay. Go ahead, Benjamin. You want that first Peter three? Yeah, you got to bring it out. This is the book of Somebody first Peter. This is the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose so daughter... Ab so Abraham's wife, Sarah, referred to him as Lord, L-O-R-D. So remember now, we read in First uh, Ephesians 5, 25, that man is the Lord of his house, is, is basically God in that house. He's Christ in that house. You get it again so we don't um, jack up the thought, just in case anybody's uh, confused. Ephesians 5, and we're coming right back. This now, while we're reading, now while we're going over that, I want y'all all to click on that link 
to the definition of the word Lord. Read what you got. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and, uh -huh. gave, and gave himself for it. Uh huh. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Jump, jump up to, you know what part I want? Uh, go to 22. 22 and 23. Yes, sir. Verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Uh-huh. For, for the husband is the head of the wife, uh -huh. even, even as Christ is the head of the church. See that? So just as Christ is the head or the leader of Israel, which you are, the same way that man is the head and leader of you. So he is Christ in that house. He's playing the same role. Okay. And that's our Lord and Savior. Now, let's look up the word, the definition of the word Lord. Read that. This is the definition of Lord from dictionary.com. A person who has authority, control, or power over others. Wow. Now, here's the scary thing for you sisters. And I know in these days and times with the black men that's out here now, it's a very scary thing. But here's what you got to understand. When you repent and you are dealing and you have proven a righteous black man, not a nigger. We're not talking about niggers. We know niggers are everywhere. Niggers come in all shapes, forms, sizes, and ages. Yes, we know that. We, we are not those men. And you are not supposed to be dealing with those type of men. You understand? We're not talking about that type of men. The type of men we're talking about is the few, is the lords of the earth. And this these lords have, what does it say? Authority, control, or power over you, over the wife. You understand? In a godly manner, in a righteous manner. Not that, now he's going to say, oh, I got power, hey. Put this crack between your ass and go get on a Greyhound bus and, and take it to Florida and, and meet such and such over there. No, we're not talking about that, that kind of black man. We're talking about the righteous black man. Now, read it again. A person who has authority, control, or power over others. Now, um, and, and, and here's the funny thing. Your life would be so much better if... You had a righteous black man over you who had power over you, who had control over you and authority over you. But a lot of our sisters are very frustrated, very bitter, very angry with black men. Why? Because they want to be independent. And you got that mentality from the white man. Yes, you did. You understand? You got that that Eve gene, that Eve mentality. No. You need that Sarah mentality, a daughter of Sarah, not a daughter of Eve. You understand? Now, read that again, 1 Peter 3. It's the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Calling him what? Calling him Lord. So, Abraham had power over Sarah. Abraham had control over Sarah. Abraham had authority over Sarah. She was not a Negro. She was not a, sister, a daughter of Eve. You understand? She was in order under her black man. That's how it goes. And that's the role you sisters need to be in. Life, listen, I know it sounds strange. I know it sounds scary. A lot of you sisters don't trust the black man. And guess what? We understand. You don't know how to pick a black man. You don't know how to pick a, a man. You end up uh, uh, baby mothers and, and we end up baby daddies. We know a lot of wrong choices. We know that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the righteous. His nationality and come back to his God. You understand? That's that's what we're talking about. So. You can hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We hear you. Okay. All right. All right. I, my Bluetooth just switched. All right. So uh, I hope you sisters understand that it's not about uh, you got to be independent and this and that. We've all been lied to. We've all been tricked. 
You understand? We Every last one of us. A lot of us has made mistakes. A lot of us became baby daddies, baby mamas, um, two, two baby mamas, two baby daddies, all that garbage. Listen, we got to come back to what the Bible actually says. That's the only way. And the Bible says your husband is the head. Your husband has power. He has control. And you my mic. Hey, can I ask Brother Benjamin a question? Go ahead, sis. Um, so are you saying that uh, Lord and prize means the same thing? Hey, your phone is breaking up, sis. I don't know if, that's, if, if y'all can hear her clearly um, or is that me? I couldn't hear her clearly, but I know she asked if uh, Lord and Christ really? mean the same thing. Christ is, is our Lord. Better? Say it again, sis. Right. Yeah, I, no, I was asking. No, I, I I agree with everything you were saying. I was just asking, were you saying that Lord and Christ are the same thing? Christ means points it. A Lord. No, Prize. P R I Z E and Lord. Hey, is that me or is that her, y'all? She's saying, is it prize, 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 like a prize, a present, present prize? Right, because Brother Timothy was saying, uh, I, well, that's what I thought he was asking you about a scripture that was along the lines of the subject, like a word that was the same as prize. Well, you yeah, know, the Lord was used to say, this is something close or near to give you a better understanding of what the prize that we refer to or you get a concerning the title. So we saying that's the direct okay. definition. No, we're just showing you if the word prize is too difficult, you for to understand what we're asking a concern of the title. We're saying equate the word Lord in there. That'll probably help you better understand okay. the topic. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Sis, you, you got it, sis? Yeah, I got you. All right. Well, praises. All right, all praise to the most high. Uh, all right, uh, brother G, brother G, uh, didn't have nothing to say, he dropped off. Okay, so, uh, brother Nelson, brother Nelson, you got something to add to the topic? Uh, brother Nelson, you believe that, uh, you know the man is surprised or, or not, or, or what's going on, brother, brother, brother Nelson? Shalom, my brothers. How y'all doing, man? Yeah, we good. That's good. Uh, I want to first off say to you moderators, man, thank y'all for letting me share some time on y'all platform, man. You know, it's an honor to be in the midst of you, uh, you, you brothers, man. You know, and y'all having a marvelous impact on the earth right now. I just wanted to say that first. But uh, I observed a video, man, that the brother encouraged everybody to look at. And she said, and this was a, you know, a European woman. She said at the end of the video that it's better for, uh, 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 when it comes down to the, to the men to be, uh, it was better for the children to be with the black man, a single black man than to be with the black woman. Uh, the black man is the prize. I mean, the, you know, the man is the prize. But as we building up our nation of people coming back to the covenant that we made with our fort with our with God, you know, I think about in the beginning when God created man, the first original man was the black man. And he gave the black man the breath of life. Now, right now, us as black men, we in captivity because of the covenant that God made with man, with the black man, but you know, I've been taking uh, I've been taking an observation of the conversation at hand. You know, and a lot of our black women look at us not as gods, but we are the gods of the earth. We even carry the holy seed, according to uh, Ezra. I mean, uh, in uh, in yeah, in, uh, in First Ezra, in chapter I had the chapter right here, chapter uh, eight and verse seventy. The black man hold the holy seed. So you women that's on this line right here, we trying to come back to build our nation up according to spiritual people. This this here room ain't ain't for uh, the world. You know, this is a spiritual room because we have been destroyed as a nation of people. 
Even the black man, when they grabbed the black man, they beat Toby's name out of him, beat it out of him. The black man has been through a lot, you black women. So, you know, y'all got to get on board with just like uh, the brother Benjamin just got through shit. I hope I didn't say his name wrong because I respect him a lot. I'll be seeing him up on stage. But uh, I just tell you, you know, I share from the perspective of reality. And you think about this, you black women, as you seeing our men, you know, walking this earth. You think about what I'm finna say. What white man and white woman sat down and brought a black, brought about a black child? It ain't happened. We are the original people. Now we coming back to our original covenant with God, and we trying to help you come back to this same covenant. That TV screen you be watching is called program. Stop watching TV if it's programming you not to come back to God. Come back to loving your black man because he is the God of the earth. The black man is the God of the earth. Hey, could you share this scripture with them in hearing so I could close out? First Ezra chapter 8 and verse 70. It's the book of First Ezra chapter 8 and verse 70. For both they and their sons have married with their daughters, and the holy seed is mixed with the strange people of the land. And from the beginning of this matter, the rulers and the great men have been partakers of this iniquity. See, the black man, the, the black man, the children of Israel, they all is the only one that hold the holy seed. So you women, y'all got to start thinking, wait a minute, hold on. God chose the 12 tribes of Israel to have a holy seed. So as we, uh, you know, procreate, I hope I'm saying this word right, but as we procreate, remember, the black man is holding the holy seed. Not the European man, the black man. So you women, think of us more highly than what you're thinking about. We are the prize. We the prize of the earth. I mute my mic. Hey, that's a heavy point, man. That's a good stuff. Hey, give me Sirach, uh 2619. To go with uh, what my man was saying, how how this is a spiritual awakening taking place right now on the face of the earth. And this is why it's important that we teach we, we, we teach the women their role in this repentance. Read that for me. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 19. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound, and give not thy strength to strangers. So we ain't both a, our strength is what we who we marry, who we who we marry with. We can't marry strangers. We gotta marry our sisters. That's why we got to tell you sisters what role you play in this. Because we, we came here together, we're gonna leave here together. So it's a is imperative and it's a must that y'all repent and come back to your God given roles. It ain't no other option. It ain't no, we're going to go to the Chinese woman. We ain't going to go to the Arab woman. That's why God said, read that again. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound and give not thy strength to strangers. Our strength is our lineage, our genealogy, our seed. Read. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thine own seed. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. So we got to sow our seed with all people. Why? So we can create that generational, that, that God-fearing generation to come. But before we could do that, we got to go back to the black woman and say, yo, black woman, <laughs> there, your role is to be in subject to your Lord, your husband. And we ain't talking about a nigga in the street. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about your baby daddy. We're talking about a repentant woman and a repentant man under the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. That's what we talk about. So that's why when we get that, when we learn that those steps, then God is saying, go ahead and sow it with one of, the, one, one, of the, uh, one of your seed. Read the next verse. So thy race which thou leavest shall be magnified. Having this is how you know it's talking about a generation. Because he say, so your race would be what? So thy race, which thou leavest, shall be magnified. 
having the confidence of their good descent. That's how we can leave the earth with a confident feeling knowing we left a good foundation on earth to continue this generational uh, repentance so where we can thrill the Lord. So that's why we got to come to you, black woman. You got to understand that you got to come under these laws and you got to come under the black man. I don't care what you thought he was or what that the world portrayed him as on the news or television or radio. But you better remember, you better recognize that there's some men on earth that's repenting and coming back to these, coming back to this, our heritage in this Bible. And we come and we, and we, we enforcing what's, what is being taught, what is, what's in that Bible. So whether you're going to fall in line or be pushed out, pushed off the train, your choice. I'm mute my mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praise to the most high. Um, so, yeah, the definition, Lord, uh, you know, giving us a, a better understanding that, you know, men are the prize, what, what our title should be, uh, not the women. Do you agree? Do you disagree? All right. Um, I seen uh, who we had next in the queue, Sean Martin. Sean Martin. Sean Martin, you got something to add to the topic? You got something to speak on it? Yeah, I've been listening from the beginning. And um, first, I'm just going to answer the question. Um, men men are obviously the prize. But when I was hearing Judd and ZB Real talk about the damage that the black woman has done, the single black mother has done to our community, you know, I've been reading into my Bible more and Brother Jay, he was talking about it as well, about the idea of dowry back then, how um, if you lay with a woman, you either stay with her or you have to pay a fee. But most of the scriptures were, were containing to the, um, the woman that's still living in their father's house. And then there's like a lot of scriptures in Sirach that talks about um, friendship. One of you moderators at the beginning asked the question, why? Um, why do you think women feel that they're the prize? And the, the answer that I, I give to that is I feel that this concept of courtship, you know, like I, I don't, like I know when we mix around a lot of different scriptures, like proving a friend and all these things, but I don't see that throughout the whole Bible. Like it wasn't like that. Like God told Jose, go and get thee a wife. And he went and got a wife. Like there's not a lot of examples of men, um, you know, taking time to, 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 to really just find a wife. Do you get what I'm trying? Like, it's always, like, it was, like, like, all the examples there are just very linear. And as I said, like, you go to the father, it's not really the woman's choice. And I feel this idea of courtship is what's given the women so much brazen confidence to feel that they're the prize in relationships. Right, because men are, as you guys used to say, simping themselves for the women and doing the most and going outside of their godly nature. Right now, um, that's 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 what I see. Like, but I I don't. And then another thing, I always because um, I've been doing a lot of um, research and studying with you guys, like going on um, the internet and looking at all your platforms. And you guys have a lot of content, by the way. But something you guys do touch on as well is um, you guys touch on this concept of um, um, being a righteous man, right? Like the idea of a woman not going to a nigger. Like you guys, like you people that are not into the word or not into the truth, like you're saying that the woman shouldn't be with them. But I know doctors. I know lawyers. I know many different people, and they're still getting divorced. Right, just like righteous people, they they go through divorce too. Like relationships are hard, and our problem is the separation, right? The father not being around. So I don't I don't think we should use um, that as a total excuse. Because Paul says, "I die daily." Right? Satan will always creep in. Right? We all make mistakes, and there's no like end point. Like there's no oh I'm now righteous and this is it. Like it's a continuous journey. Right, because I could be righteous today and wicked tomorrow. Like I feel, we should encourage marriage in our community. You know, it doesn't matter about poverty or being rich. Like if you have a child with a woman, you should stay with that woman. 
You see what I'm trying to say? And I just, I just feel like when you have this holier-than-thou complex feeling that, um, that you're, that, that, that because you're at this point, you're allowed to get married, but no one else is, I don't think that's helping the community. I feel like we should just focus. Hey, hey, hey Sean. Yes. You said, I, I don't understand your last point. You said, when you think, when you say you should, you're able to get married and nobody else is able to get married, I, I'm, I'm not following you, bro. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. So, um, when you, so, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not talking about, well, I, I am, like, I, just based on what I've been listening like the backdoor marriages, you know, like I've been listening to a lot of videos, right? And um, you guys are very, like, you guys have these two different viewpoints that I'm trying to understand more, right? Because I read the Bible a lot and I listen right, to a well, lot of videos. Tell us, tell us, what, what, what don't you understand? Okay, so if a man goes into the truth married, you encourage, uh, okay, no, no, okay, what I don't understand is, why don't you why don't you encourage marriage amongst our community? Like why why does it have to be a why don't, process? Wait, 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 slow, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying the 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 videos you watch of us brothers, we don't encourage marriage. Just yes or no. Just yes backdoor, or no. The, the concept of backdoor marriage. Listen, I'm listen, asking, listen, listen, that's listen, what I'm listen, talking listen, about. listen, listen, sir. Yes. You said we why don't we encourage marriage? My question is what mar what are we not encouraging marriages or are we? I'm not understanding. Okay. You. What, what are you I, watching? Okay. 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 I'm gonna try to make it more clear. I can't just because you guys do talk about marriage a lot, but I, I what I get from the videos, I'm gonna try to talk more clearly, is that you guys encourage courtship, and I don't understand. I don't see courtship okay, in the Bible. Good, okay. I'll show it to you. So rock okay, six sure. and seven. Yeah, proving so a friend, rock. but I feel that's a friend, right? No, 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 no. Hold on. Psalms 119 and 113. Okay. So, and give me the one about uh, Sirach 37. You know what I want? Yes, sir. You want uh, Psalms 119 first? Give me that first, because he said, I feel that's not, that's not what it's talking about. Or I feel, I feel. Listen, brother, sorry to tell you. The Lord don't give a damn about your feelings, bro. I just want to make that clear. The Lord don't give two craps about your feelings, my feelings, or any of our feelings. Is what is written, period. That's what we're going to have to go by. All right? Okay. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 113. I hate vain thoughts. So what did the Bible say? I hate vain thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So God says he hates your vain thoughts. Your vain thoughts or your opinion. He don't give a two craps about opinions. Opinions what what got us in the situation we're in now. Our feelings. We can't go by our feelings. We're going to go by what's written. Read on. But thy law do I love. See that? He don't give a damn about your feelings, what you think, what you, well, I want to do it this way. Or this me really it should say this or I feel it means this. No. Uh-uh. Just keep God's laws. Do what it says. Now, give me the one in Sirach 37. Yes, sir. You want uh, verse 12? Is that it? Is that what uh, I want? Continually, the godly man? No. I want the one where it says um, a, a man and a wife is uh, that agree together is better than uh, all the friends. That one. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a question when, when we're all ready. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Read that. I think it's verse one. The Read book that. of the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter twenty six, chapter twenty five, and verse one. In three things I was beautified, and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The the unity no. of brethren. No, no. The unity of what? The unity of brethren. Brothers, brethren. Okay. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. All right. Love your neighbor. A man and a wife that agree together. That's not the one I wanted, but it says a man and a wife that agree together. 
That's what the Lord loves. A man and wife that agree together. In other words, marriage. A righteous man and a righteous sister brings forth what? Righteous children. You understand? So we do teach marriage. So I don't know what, no, if you're saying you're talking about backdoor marriages, yes, we're going to put black backdoor marriages on blast because when you do things out of order, our job is not to hide it. Our job is to reveal it and say, hey, this is the example you don't want to follow. I have That's a question. That's why we put, I'm speaking. Yes, sir. This is the example that you don't want to follow for the single brothers and the single sisters. So, yeah, when brothers and sisters in our congregation do things out of order, yeah, we're going to put them on blast. Because a lot of brothers, they go, they go, they sneak in the back door, uh, deal with a sister. Then they say, uh, I don't really like her like that. So, you know what? I'm not going to marry her. You just made her a whore. And vice versa. Sometimes the sisters say, uh, I don't want to deal with him no more. I'm on to the next one. I don't like him like that. You understand? So, yeah, we're going to put those marriages on blast. You understand? Now, when they do marry, they're able to stay in the body. Yes. You understand? And they could still fix it. But that brother and sister to remain, uh, to remain around us, they must marry. If they've committed fornication, they must marry. Or they got to get the hell on. You understand that, brother? Yeah, I, I understand it. But but could you, I, I still don't get, like, where's this idea of courtship? I, I still don't see the scripture. Sirach, chapter yeah, I mean, 5, like, 7. And also, like, it. Sirach 6 and 7. In Genesis, like, when, not Genesis, but, like, we have Adam and Eve. Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6 and verse 7. I don't know who asked that brother to talk. Who was that? Sound like Esau. We got it. If thou wouldest get a friend. If thou Ooh. wouldest get a friend. A friend also goes into a spouse because before you marry her, she's supposed to be your friend. Are we you understand, Sean? Is your she's supposed to be your friend? So, like anything else, you gotta prove that spirit. Like it says in First John chapter four. Give me that scripture too. Give me that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The book of First John chapter four, in verse one, beloved. Believe not every spirit, whether whether it's a friend, spouse, or whatever you want to call it. It says, don't believe that spirit. Go ahead. But try the spirits. Do what? Try the spirits. You're going to have to try that spirit, prove that spirit. You understand? Get to know that spirit. Is that spirit compatible with you? What's going to happen you know, when you make that spirit talk? mad? Can, we, can, we, can you can shut we, up? Can, organic, can you be quiet? I'm just saying, can What's, we... Can you can shut up? Talk? Damn, shut up. Good Lord. What's going to happen when you get that spirit angry? Is that spirit going to try to uh, punch you in the face? Are they going to physically abuse you? Are they going to spiritually abuse you? Or are they going to mentally abuse you? Do they have a bitter spirit? It's your job to court that that sister or that, that potential spouse and find out all the things that they have Red flags, um, the things that that are deal breakers for you, that's the job of the of the potential spouse to find out. You understand? Before they move forward. So yes, courting is in the Bible. Now, give go back to Sirach six and seven. So we read the Bible says try the spirit. That's one scripture. Go ahead, give me that next one. Yes, sir. Ecclesiasticus six and seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Read and be not hasty to credit him. Don't because that's what we do in in, in uh, uh, these relationships. Uh, he he makes me laugh. I've known him for two three weeks. Oh, uh, you know what? Let me open my knees and give him some. No, no, it takes time. It takes time for that. What's that scripture? Sirach so forty and twenty three. That's the one I wanted. But yes, don't read. Don't read that yet. Keep reading. Read verse eight. And be Yes, sir. Verse eight. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Because the potential spouse, you know what the potential spouse does? You're not really meeting that real person. You're meeting their representative. You begin talking to that brother first or that sister first. You're meeting the representative. They're going to smile. They're going to say what needs to be said to, to uh, um, win you over. But that's not the real you. That's the phony you. That's the representative. Read on. And, Read will not, 
Yes, sir. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Most people are only friends for their occasion, meaning this. As when, when they need something for it from you or you want affection from that person. And when, after you get it, it's time to move on. On to the next one. That's what we did carnally. Now, spiritually, we got to come out of that because you're proving a brother. You're proving a sister. This is for life. It's not for two years, three years, a couple months. My jump off, my daddy. None of that. You understand? This is supposed to be for life now. This is your mate for life. Now, give me Sirach 40 and 23. Yes, sir. I think that's what I wanted earlier. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 40 and verse 23. A friend and companion never meet amiss. Uh-huh. But above both is a wife with her husband. Oh, above both is a wife with her husband. The Lord honors honors marriage, marriage above all. That's what we just read. You understand? The Lord honors marriage. A righteous man with a righteous wife. The man staying in his divine order. The woman staying in her divine order. The woman will never be happy until she is in her divine order under her righteous Israelite man. I hope you sisters understand that. You my mic. Okay. Am I allowed to continue? I just I want to say one thing. That last scripture you just said, you see how they made a parable difference between a friend and the wife, right? Do you see what I'm trying to say with that Sirach line that you said before? Like well, what, I was saying your, that I don't think that, that? was I don't think that's pertaining to the wife because at that Peter example that you used earlier or whatever what the the scripture was where um they were saying that Sarah said, "My Lord." There's a different type of relationship in a marriage. It's Sean, not a friendship. Let, Sean, Sean, let me That's ask you a question. That's the point of this conversation. Sean, Sean, let me ask yes. you a question. Are you married? I, I want to be, but, you know, I want to get married to I you just guys. Wanted, you I, just guys need a yes or, I just need a yes or a no. I just need a yes or a no. Not yet. So that's a, is that a no? No. Okay, you're not married. So here's what you should do. Listen and be quiet if you're not married. You're not married. You don't have experience in this. We've been teaching this for many, many years now. We know what we're talking about. And we've saved marriages. You understand, Sean? So if you yeah. want to be married, it would behoove you to shh and listen. You're Right now, you're going off of your own thought pattern. Who do you congregate with? Um, I, I just started this, man. I, I went to my oh, first one. Oh, you just started this. On okay. So no, here's what wanted, you should do. Yeah, Wait, uh, hold on, Sean. Here's mm -hmm. what you should do. You should. I'm going to give you a scripture. Sirach 6. Is it 32, y'all? 632? Is that right? That's right. That's right. That's give me that. The book of here's Ecclesiastes. What you, here's, here's what I want you to learn to apply, my brother. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, and verse 32. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. You have to be willing to be taught. You have to have, you have to, you have to be willing to be taught. In order to be taught, you got to be quiet. Shh. You understand? You got to be quiet. To get a wife, you got to listen and learn. You can't, you can't. You can't invoke your own thoughts in this. You are a babe. You're, you're a, I'm a babe too, but I'm a I'm a ten year old babe. You are a three year old, three week old baby. You understand what I'm saying, brother? So yeah. it would behoove you. I know you want to you want to put your thoughts to this and all of that. Listen, you can't do that right now. You're only three weeks old. Just listen and learn. All right. Okay. You my mind. All right, all right, all prayers to the Most High. You know, we babes in this, man. We got to listen and learn, all right? But the topic at hand is are men the prize, all right? Uh, Great job, Benjamin, man. Great job, my brother. That was beautiful, man. For real. 
That was beautiful, man. You loved up on that brother, man. All right, all right, all right, all praises, all praises. So uh moving to the next, uh Dies Divine. You got something to add to the topic? Uh so you All praises, all praises. You said the name beautiful, by the way. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you, brother. All praises. Aha, uh -huh. fantastic. I just want to say Amaziah, beautiful for what he just spoke. So I'm gonna add on to that. As you know, we are supposed to add wisdom on when a wise man finishes speaking. So right there, you absolutely murked. Right. Now, back onto the topic we're speaking on now. Men are the prize, not the women agree or disagree. I will now say this. We know that the Most High created man first from the dust of the ground, which is factual information. He then created the woman from the man. Therefore, the woman is of the man. I will now say, as a person who's understanding of the Most High, he rates men above women, as we do know, in 1 Corinthians 11.3. Correct. Because he gave the order of life where he also does have love for the women. Duh, he created them. Now, the prize in all of this being answered in one goal will be for the man, the woman, and for the woman, the man. So it's both of us are a prize for each other. If people are understanding of that, you better pump your chest right now because you've got sense. Why do I say that? The Lord thy God wants marriage with the man and the woman. So what happens then? You're both the prize. Now, one of the things I'm seeing in the day and age of today, when it comes to women, Many of them struggle with comprehension. So because they struggle with comprehension, because they've already been turned aside onto the devil, as we know from 1 Timothy 5, 14 and 15, even precept that with Genesis 13, sorry, Genesis 3 and 15, which matches up to say, hmm, you battle with the devil. So many of them struggle to listen to men of wisdom. Now, when I say men of wisdom, I'll explain why I say it now briefly. The stupid men, they get all their talk. They want to talk nonsense about Instagram. They want to talk nonsense about this gossip. Foolishness. When it comes to the wisdom of the man, sometimes they can fear it. I myself, a girl has told me straight, you are too smart for me. Now, when she told me that, I said, oh, oh okay. Well, I'm a very humble man. So if you think I am too smart for you, allow V to teach you, because how does the woman learn? The woman learns from the man. And we know that by reading 1 Corinthians 14, 35, to which is correct. Because the Lord thy God wants the man, who is the Lord of the woman, to teach the woman how to be. But because the women rebel, blows and skirt them rebelling, mm -mm, bad. Therefore, they act up and they also weren't even taught by their dads. So because they weren't even taught by their dads also, they weren't taught commandments, laws, nothing. They wild out, go mad. They want to follow all these rap artists that are female going mad. They want to see all these diamond chains going mad. So they now want a man of a certain category. But these times, these women don't even know how to listen. Because you know what's beautiful to a man from a woman? A woman that can so gorgeously, scrumptiously listen in so beautifully. Aha. Uh -huh. But they struggle to do that. Now, as for the men of today, and I'm going to finish on this one. For the men, yes, as I've said, we are prizes to the woman and the woman is prizes to us. The men of today are absolutely dumb. I'm going to say that straight up because I live in England, but I can also see everywhere else around the world. The men of today are absolutely lost and they are part of the reason for corrupting the women of today. Thus why women say all men are the same. But I agree because Most High says what? The exact same thing in 2 Timothy 3. He says it there. So therefore, because he says it there, it's a beautiful thing. Because we can now see, ah, oh, the men of today are like this when they're not godly, when they're not Ecclesiastes 37, 12, when they're not that. Ah. Oh, this is millions of men. Thus why we have millions of loose cannon women. They influence each other. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Brother, uh, he said I said it right. Let me try this again. Thighs divine. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I hear you, bro. Any of you moderators want to comment on anything that was said? Brother Benjamin? Sorry, y'all. I missed it. I was busy. All right. <clears throat> All right, man. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, man. We appreciate your 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 comment and your addition to the uh, to the topic. Um, our men the prize, you know, kind of uh, confirming, you know, our assertion in that in that right. All right. That is, that is divine, man. We appreciate you, big bro. All right. Love my brother. Love. How do I access the comments on this application? Because at the moment, it's grayed out. Yeah, I think we did that purposely. Um, uh -huh. to, yeah. Why is that? Distractions, my brother. Who wants you to stay focused? Stay focused, brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus is wonderful. So I'm going to hold yeah, the mic. Yeah, you use a sharp brother, man. You know what I'm saying? So I know you get it. You understand. Yeah, yeah, 100%, without shadow of a doubt. And I can hear the same in you guys, too. That's why it's good to have a platform like this by where, a plateau, I may say, by where women can have inspiration to see, raw. I can't believe the perfect men that I need exist. Duh. You think most I wouldn't do that? <laughs> Would. Yes, sir. All right. All praises. All praises. All right. All right. So, uh, moving on. Uh, Brother Orlandis Brown, you got something to add to the topic? You believe in the prize or not? Uh, <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> um, I'm a new believer. You know, I just joined to be a fly on the wall, but uh, I agree with uh, Thysus Divine on what he was saying. Um, you know, there is a there is a um, problem with the relationship between a man and a woman in today's world. I am 25 years old, so I guess I fit in the category of um, men who are lost. Because, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, Times change, but you know how you know. You just you just try to you just try to you know you try to be yourself. You know what I'm saying, according to what the Bible says. And um, you know this world, man, it's just it's just it seems like everything is trying to go backwards, man. But I agree with everything that that uh, Thysus was saying. Okay, yeah, yeah. When you say backwards, uh, what you mean backwards? Backwards from what? Um, as far as like Satan's work with um the genders and stuff, because a lot of that plays into a role too, with how the men might be lost and the women might be uh, misguided with certain stuff. Yeah. So what 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 do you feel the standard should be? You know what I'm saying? Biblically, you know what I mean? Do you feel like you know what I'm saying? We moving backwards from what they call traditional, or you know what I mean, or or or, or, or what? Uh, definitely moving backwards from uh the traditional way. The man is supposed to be uh head of the house, uh, as well as he follows the Most High, and the woman is supposed to follow the man. There you go. There you go. I think that that does kind of lead back to uh men being the prize, right? And, and and not the woman. You agree or disagree? Um, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all praise, all praise, all praise to the most high. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the, the brother basically affirming any moderators want to speak to that or or I have a I have a unrelated t uh, question. Can I can I ask it? Can I ask it? Uh, uh, how about you ask it and we and we debate whether we gonna respond or not? Um, just about the whole, just about the whole thing with uh Christ. Okay. Um, I'm on the fence right now because I don't know, you know, with the history behind Christ and how Christianity started. I'm just on the fence right now. Like I said, I'm a new believer. I have family who are Israelites. 
So I do have a, a flip side of the coin. So I, uh, I understand uh majority of the information that you guys speak about. But as far as like Christ, like, uh, do y'all think that he even exists? Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm not trying to be distracting or nothing like that. That's that's the only question I had. I wait until an, an extreme where I can. It's more relatable. All right, brother. One quick question: the 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 family you have that are Israelites, are they Old Testament Israelites or do they believe in Christ? Uh, they are Old Testament Israelites. That's why. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, brother. I would I would uh, advise you to get uh, to start studying your Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. You see, Christ is all in the Old Testament. All right. Okay. All right. Shalom. Gotcha. Shalom. It all makes sense. It will and it's all, all make one. Sense. And it's all one book. Old Testament, New Testament. No difference. It's all one book. When brothers and when brothers and sisters talk against the New Testament, it just proves they have a lack of, of scholarship and they don't understand the Bible. You got you can't understand the old without the new. Most Old Testament Israelites look at the New Testament like Christians. You look at it like you're a Catholic. You think John three sixteen means God loved everybody. You think love your enemies means God said um, uh, love the people that that murdered you or enslaved you. That's how Old Testament Israelites look at the New Testament. So I would I would advise you, brother, start studying. You might want to stay away from your those topics with your family members that are Israelites because they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to Christ and. Is gonna jack you up. Mute my mic. Hey brother, hey, what what's what state you out of? Uh, I'm in Georgia. Hey man, we got a school right here in Riverdale. Email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. We can help you out, bro. Shoot us an email, man. I think the email is oh they ain't got it up there. It's, it's biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. We got a school right in Georgia in Riverdale, if you know that area. It's funny enough, I live in Riverdale. Hey. Hey, all praises. Hey, you come through this weekend. We got a school opening up. I think the class started at noon. So, yeah, or 1130, I mean. So email us first so we can give you the proper context where you can reach out to and we can tell you what you should bring and what you should have with you, all right? Okay, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com, right? Yes, sir. Or you could DM Benjamin your information. He could um, he could uh, give you, gear you to the right direction. Okay. Hey, I just updated it with the link. It's at the top. Yeah, the email's right at the top. All praises. Pull down the refresh. Got it. There you go. There you go. That's 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 spiritual, man. He he in actually in Riverdale. There you go, man. That's crazy. All right. All right. So keeping it moving, man. Uh, you know, again, we moving back towards the topic. Uh, men are the prize. All right, not the woman. All right, do you agree? Do you disagree? You got something to speak on the topic? All right, we're moving on to uh, Brother Menace to Supremacy. All right, uh, you got something to say on the topic? Brother Menace, going once, going twice. If you try to speak, you on mute. I'm sorry, sorry, you know, I was on mute, man. I just wanted to big, big up my brothers, big you guys up for what you guys are doing. I wanted to big up Fies as well for what he was dropping, you know what I mean, over in the UK. One of the f- reasons why I even wanted to drop a few little words on this, because he's, he's 100% right, especially in the UK, like, you know, people just, the, the men are causing the women to remain in that state of feeling they don't need no man, right? Because they're putting them on pedestals and calling them all kind of labels that's making them think, well, I don't need a man if I'm a queen, if I'm a goddess, and I can do all these things without a man. And then, you know, so a, a lot of these men are weak. That's that's how I see it. 
Yeah, they didn't have no father, so they don't know what it is to be a man, be a provider, be a protector, and lead their household. Yeah, and then when you have these people, because you know, even 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 like our parents, yeah, a lot of our parents never grew up with understanding the word and going to church or whatever it is. I mean, the, going to church is a foundation that introduces you to the word at least. Yeah, and then we grow up, and then we can move on to whatever we want to be, like Hebrew Israelites or whatever. But it all starts from the word, and yo, it the reason why we're in this mess is because we got to blame ourselves. We got to blame our parents, and some even some of us are grandparents. Yeah, because I'm I'm in my forties, so I'm probably a lot older than a lot of you guys. But the truth of the matter is, this shit's been going back since you know, the 40s, 50s, and we got a mess that we've got to clean up, but it's the most high and the word that's going to make that thing happen, you know what I mean? So I just wanted to say that and say peace, keep up the good work, and I'm right here. All right, all right, all right, man. Hey, man, we appreciate that feedback, man. But the supremacy, menace uh, uh, to supremacy, all right? Uh, any of you moderators want to uh, comment on what the brother just said? All right, we gonna we gonna we gonna move right along. Hey, brother, we appreciate your feedback, man, and your support. Uh, keep learning, man. Keep learning. Uh, you know, this truth is spreading rapidly, man, uh, and what it's about. So, uh, brother Apostle J. Duncan. All right, you got something you want to add to the topic? You know, I, I just want to piggyback. First of all, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your platform. Uh, I like to uh, piggyback a ride off of uh, Benjamin. Uh, he said some powerful words there, you know, about we reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Now, back to the point, uh, I just happened to stumble into the room. Can you refresh me on what is it that you're, so I can be talking about what you're talking about and not be outlandish? Yeah, man, we talking about uh, the man is surprised, man. You know, the Israelite man, the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American man, man, we the prize. You know, not the woman. You know, a lot of times in, you know, the society, they teach you that, you know, the woman is a prize. You got a lot of men that fight for, uh, you know, the woman and, and all that, you know, but... No, the woman is not the prize. The man is the prize. Do you agree? Well, you know, uh, what I agree about, uh, uh, brother, is that, you know, uh, we have our place, but also we have women as our help meet. That is, if you're married, you know, uh, and if you're not married, then, you know, what I go by is what I'm reading about in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you know. Uh, they got the old that teach us about the new, you know, bring us into the new of things, you know. Uh, so, uh, hmm. So what, what, what in the old that teaches us about the new that show us uh, whether or not the man is a prize or is the woman a prize? I mean, like, what are you saying? Do you agree or do you disagree? Well, you know, what, what, one thing I say, uh, what I, 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 I'm a little torn in between that because, you know, I'm looking at Romans 12 and uh, verse 2. He said, Lord, renew my mind daily that my mind is stay fast on you. So um, I'm focused on the things of God, you know, uh, uh, where, 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 you know, if we're saying that, uh, 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 that, that, that a man is being rooted and grounded in God's word. So that's where I'm at in, in Bible, you know. I don't know if I'm making any sense to everyone or not, but... Uh, nah, bro, you ain't uh, making no hey, sense. You didn't, I'm you, confused. Didn't, you, didn't, you didn't answer the question, bro. Answer the question, bro. Okay, well, what are you asking me? Oh, you want to know, it's the man to pride. It's the man over the woman is what you're saying? Is he the, the prize? Yeah, your name. The prize. That's what he's saying. You know what? Uh, I I can't I cannot answer that. Oh I, I, I man! Hey, that. you don't want to get beat up at home, man. Hey, you married, bro? Oh no, no, bro, no, no, no. I'm not married, no sir. Yeah. I have been, but I'm not no more. <laughs> huh? I have been, but not anymore. No. 
Oh, uh, well, there so you go. So why are you afraid it. to answer the question? No, no, no. But see, I'm not afraid to answer anything what you're saying. You, well, I'm trying to, when you say it, the man, the man. But, but, but you know, that the, you got the man and the woman working together. Okay, so are they equal? The man and woman equal? Or the woman over the man? Or is she the prize? Oh, like, you got to pick well, a side. No, no, oh, 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 now, 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 now you say it like that. No, I ain't no be in the middle. No, no, no. When you say it like that, no, the woman is not over the man. You know, he's the head, but they work together in unison. You know what I'm saying? According to God's word. No, the man, he's, he's who he is. But like the man, if he's weak, then the woman going to take charge. You know, but I, hey, I, I'm true about who I am. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm striving. I got a street ministry. I've been doing it for 40 years now. So do, uh, so the thing is here, the man, he leading. That's why you got a lot hey, of women. Are you a up, pastor? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a prophet, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you're a pastor of a church? Uh, I got a street ministry. Been oh, doing that for 40 ministry. years. Oh. Yeah, re retired out of the Marine Corps uh, over about 50 years ago or so. So, you know, God bring me into the church to bring down the strongholds in, in, in the house of God. Okay, okay. Because what you guys are speaking right and you speaking something real here, you know what I'm saying? And I just stumbled into the room, but I said, let, let me hear what's going on here, you know? Because, no, you know, the man's the one that they, 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 they do what he need to do. The woman, she lines up. Now, she don't line up then, you know, you got you got an option, you know? So, so you say the prize, I say the man. Oh, so the man is the prize, you say? Yeah. All praise, all praise. That's what we're just asking. That was the topic. Well, well, I was trying to get to, un get to understand about things. I've been so much around church for twenty four seven, but then you know I I'm listening, hearing, and all the new different words and how you're saying. I'm like, okay, I feel. You. Well, there you go, brother Apostle man. So you, so then you agree that the man is surprised. Uh, you see the definition up top. That's the uh, the, the definition, of Lord. Do you believe that sisters should uh, refer to their men as Lord, or that they are the Lord of the house and all that, right there? You agree, brother Apostle? Now, now, now. One thing about you know, no, for see, see, see. A lot of people take it a different way. So, so the thing is here, the man, he's a pride. Yeah, okay, yeah. The God gonna deal with him. Look what evil she done. But he still deal with the man because, like you said, he's a pride. See. So they both come together. That's cool. But he's still who he is. And a woman has to respect that who that man is. If he lined up with God's word. So what that means is you saying like a 50-50 type thing or what you saying? No, I ain't no, no, partner. I ain't say that. No, sir. Okay. I ain't say that. Okay. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I'm just keeping it 100. And no, sir. No, sir. What 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 uh, what he said, uh 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 a woman, a uh, 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 Proverbs 30 word woman, uh, she know how to make ha make things happen in the household. It ain't all just on one person. You know what I'm saying? Don't put it all on a man. Let's work together and try to get some things done. But that 50-50 thing, no, 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 no. Ain't none of that going on, you know. If the person can pull what they can pull and you have, but you, you, you in agreement, you know what I'm saying? So what's the agreement? It's not fifty fifty. What's the agreement? At sixty forty? Or what you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm gonna just say it like this here. This what I've done. Get on my face and pray. Get on my knees. Me and my mate and pray and seek God. But yet the man is surprised. You see, so uh, uh, you never know what an individual can do and what cannot do, and you work with what you have. And if that don't work. Then if there's not some counseling, something to happen, or everything gonna be squashed, you know? Yeah. Hey Apostle, that wasn't clear. He asked you what the split was. Was it sixty forty? Is it a hundred percent the man? Fifty fifty? You know what? Let me tell you, you know, you know what? I heard everything he said, brother. I heard everything. See, let me tell you something, bro. After I've been baptized in that fire and God took took me out that pit, that horror pit, Jude. 123, snatched by the horror pit, brother, and been baptized in this fire. A lot of things has changed inside me. I know what you're saying. But the only thing, I can bring it through the biblical aspect of things, you know what I'm saying, with my everyday life. So I, I heard what the man of God said. 
to me, but uh, I don't have an answer for that. So they depend on the individuals. If if I'm being led by God, it depends on the individual. He's not saying that to me. Is that what God say though? He do God say? Me? Do God say it depends? No. Okay. So what God say? He's not telling me. Uh, see, I, when I pray about it, he's not telling me uh, 30, 40. He's not telling me 50, uh, 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 30. He's not saying those things to me. We work it out together. All right. Let's 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 read it. Um, go read it back in Ephesians again one more time. You, you read the Bible, Apostle? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's read it in Ephesians 5. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. What verse you want to start at, sir? Uh, let's just get Good to the right point. There. Submit to that. Submit to that. Husbands unto the Lord. Uh, yes, sir. Start at 22. 24. Yeah, start at 22. That's fine. We'll read yes, the sir. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 22. Oh, why? Yes. Submit mm -hmm. yourselves unto your own husbands. Come on here. As unto the Lord. So, yes, apostles, sir. Based on that verse, is it 50, 50, 70, 70? What is, what, is the, what is the way it should work in a relationship? Well, 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 well see, when you, when you said that, the bed is under file. Possible. We got to stay right there. What do this verse say? You're going all over the place. What do it say in this oh, verse? Oh, okay. In that verse right there, he's surprised. Okay, but, but in, is, terms, but in did, terms did, of how... Hold on. Okay. In terms of how a relationship works, do do a man and women split that, that decision-making power, power based on this? No. Okay. All right. So we're on the same page then. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Yes, sir. All right. So there go your answer, right? Because he asked, he asked you that question and you couldn't answer him. He said that, you know, the Lord didn't tell me that. So now well, we read it. Yeah, we see, we spoke, we went to the word though. Okay. Well, praise and, right. And, and when we broke that down, so I'm like, okay, I'm in. All right. <laughs> All, right. All right. Cool. All right. That's the answer, bro. So yes, sir. make sure you, you make that. Oh, I know about that right there. I know about that. When he went to that strip, I said, uh oh, I talk about that all the time. But I hear you, though. All right, Lion, I'll pass it back to you. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 man. I, I, you know, I hey, hey, Shim, you good? Huh? I said, you good? I hear you dying in the background, man. <laughs> <laughs> we trying to hang on, man. <laughs> hey, all prayers to the most high, man. Hey, hey, we glad that you, you know, you seeing eye to eye with the prophets, man. And, and we understanding that, you know, uh, the, the, it ain't no 50, 50, man. You know, the man is surprised. Uh, the man is the one who, who had the ultimate decision making in the, in the relationship. You know, and uh, if you don't agree, you know, speak up on it. Explain to us why. Maybe you can compel the prophets, man, through the scriptures and show us how we wrong. You know, uh, uh, bring it out. Uh, uh, Sister uh, Sister Ruth Benaya. Shalom, you shalom, shalom, shalom. You got something to add to the topic, sis? Yes, um, thank you for adding me to the group. Um, I just wanted to say I'm a, new, a newbie into the truth. And um, prior to that, I would have said, no, the man is not the prize. But that's, that was based on the men that were presenting themselves to me. I mean, also in the UK. And I was just listening to the previous brothers, not the one that just spoke, but the two, two from the UK. And um, I can see that they are good men, and I have come to find out that they are good men, and men are the prize, not the woman. And even on the scriptures that you've just quoted in Ephesians, it, and you asked the gentleman before if um, it's 50 50, 60 40, it could never be because then you'd be asking Christ, who is the head of everyone, if he's 50 50 or 60 40. And the scriptures clearly does not say that. So, I do believe 100% the, man, the men are the prize, but um, the men have to be worth it because some of the men are simps and um, 
they're not uh, <laughs> sorry am i allowed to say this <laughs> yeah you are are. yep yep speak, you Lord, could speak speak, speak. speak your they're, piece okay they're not representing what they should do should be doing and um it's hard to follow a guy or um have a say that he's a hundred percent um the head the well the head of the home when he's not doing what the Bible says what God says, and number one, he's not even following God. He's not even believing in God, or he's wishy washy in the truth, you know. And um, we, we, well, speaking for some of the women that I associate myself with, when we speak, we're like, "Where's these men?" You know, and um, the, the, we know that they exist. And even though now I'm in the truth, and thank God or praises that I'm in the truth, and I'm seeing that. This this is the type of ma uh, man that I want and I can have according to what God has ordained it to be, you know, because I, when I was in my uh, previous relationship and I'm, I was previously married, I was doing the things what according to the Bible, but I was in the church and I had that church mentality. Okay, I have to be submissive. I have to give him, the, the let him run things. But he was not the example. He was not being an example for me to follow. So we were always clashing. And I keep saying to myself, is it me? You know, but then he wanted all, um, all the role of I'm the head of the home and all of this, but he wasn't being the head of the home the way he's supposed to be so we were always clashing you know and um a lot of us um i'm speaking for as i said my circle that when we speak we're thinking no we can't follow this so when when um i got a divorce i was sad to say happy you know and i had said to myself that i would be quite content to be by myself because if these are the type of men that are out there, I don't want that. And I was married for quite a, uh, over 12 years. I was with this individual. And as I said, we kept struggling. Um, he wasn't going to church. He, he, he believed in a God, but then he's all over the place. Let's be Muslim. Let's go to ch church. Let's do this. Let so how can I follow something like this? And I knew this wasn't right, but you know, we had kids and everything. And for the kids' sake, I wanted to stay into the marriage, but I was always told. So now I'm in the truth and I can hear what the, the my bishop is saying and my captains are saying and yourselves are saying, I have these platforms. I'm knowing that this is how it's supposed to be. The man is 100% the prize. I can never be the prize. I, I, came, from, I, I came from the man. You know, so I have to respect his decision. I have to do this. I'm his helpmate. When he comes home, I'm supposed to have his meal ready, his bath ready, whatever it is. I'm supposed to be doing these things. And when so even some of my family and friends, when I say, oh, no, who are married or dating, even dating. And I know we're not supposed to be fornicating when they're doing these things. I said, well, OK. And they come in and they're saying, oh, I fell out with my partner, rah, rah, rah. I'm thinking, well, of course you're going to fall out because, A, you're not supposed to be fornicating. But, B, if those of you that are married and um, you're not doing the things, you, you you want to be neck and neck with him and you're calling and you, you're, supposed, you're supposed to be helping him, easing his low workload because he, we're in the land of our capture still and if, when he comes home from a hard days of work he, you're supposed to be easing that man's um day he wants to be looking to come home his home is his domain and if he's coming home to more stress he's not gonna want that you know you're supposed to be raising the kids keeping the house clean these are the things i was doing so I, it came easy to me but then i felt unappreciated you know i and he felt um to me he just took all of this for granted and went out and cheated several times but because he knew how much i wanted the 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 marriage because i'm thinking when i'm married it's a better for worse still debt do part etc of course um I'm going to do what I have to do. But as I said, no, I, I lost respect. So that right there was not going to work out because I have to respect whoever is my Lord. I have no problem calling him 
calling a gentleman, my Lord. I have no problem because Sarah did it. But Sarah had a man that was worthy of that title. So when you find a man that's worthy of the title, of course you think. And if he's, he, he can teach you, which I do believe it's a man's role to do, he has to teach you, but he can only teach you if he's in the word and if he's he's do, he, he's um, following the law and stuff. And I know... The other day I was realizing that it's going to be so hard for a lot of us sisters to get into the kingdom, you know, because of what society has, is showing us and has made some of us, you know, but I, uh, I'm all over the place. It's my first time on the stage. So I thank you and I'll let you guys go back to it. But I 100% I do believe the man is the prize. Well said. All right, sis. Yeah, man. You said a lot. Yeah. You said a lot. But you did say some good stuff, man. We appreciate your feedback, man. I know a lot of sisters, man. It might be uh, some people that don't agree. Can y'all hear me? Good? Yeah, we can. can hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It might be some, some sisters that don't agree. Maybe I don't agree, man, that, that uh, you know, men are the prize, man. The sister said it well, man, you know. From her own personal experience, um, and you might have got anything. That you, do you want to respond to what the sister said? I just disagree with men being the prize. That's uh, it. That's it. That's it. So who disagrees? Hello, my name is Mary. I'm new on this platform today. It's my first time. I do. I disagree because I believe... Wait, 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 sis. Were... Hold on, hold on, sis. Hold on, sis. How, how did you find this platform? You just scrolling and you saw the title? Yes. Oh. Just because I... I'm in this journey myself spiritually. Oh, So I okay. decided to join because I'm trying to learn and connect with people and discuss. Okay. Okay. All prayers to the most high. Well, uh, you say you disagree that men are the prize? In this time, yes, I do disagree. Maybe if we're talking about back years and, you know, in life and the generations back then. But in this world we living in now, yes, I disagree, unfortunately. Okay, I well, do. hey, sis, 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 hold it down. Look, look, look. I got you, and I, I, I want to hear what you're saying. But, but, but one thing, in, in this room, we do do things decently in order, and there is one person ahead of you, and I want to make sure that I give them an opportunity to speak. Um, uh, and that's uh, Brother Pedro, 777. Real quick. Real quick tonight. But I want to hear what you're saying, sis. Don't go nowhere, sis. Hold it down, all right? Yeah? Okay, no problem. I'll be waiting my turn. Thank you. Okay, all praise to the Most High. And that might be real soon if Brother Pero ain't got nothing to say. Brother Pero, you got something to say on the topic? You got something to respond to what the sister was saying? You agree, you disagree? All right, Brother Pero ain't got nothing to say. So, uh, so yeah, Sister Mari, man, what was you saying, man? You said, uh, you said you don't agree? That's correct, brother. Okay, right. and, and, and you believe in the Bible because it's biblical smoke. So according yes, to the I do. According to the scriptures, you know the scriptures talk about you know the, the the role of the man, the role of the woman, and what you're saying is is that you don't agree that the the man is the prize. That's correct. I think now, and I agree with everything in the Bible. I'm not disagreeing. I just believe from experience and I got, I converted in 2016, 2016, yes. Yeah. So my thing is that I feel like this is all within, within self. Now in this world, just because of all the nonsense that's going on, especially with men who are supposed to be the head. And unfortunately, us women, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing it. Even if you do come across a man who claims to be Christian, who claims to be baptized and things of that nature, 
and you're put in a situation with these individuals and you're like, hold on, you're listening how they speak, you're listening to things they're saying, you're watching things they're doing, but they're supposed to be the head. So for me, this is why I disagree. I just believe it's within and it's no longer a man and a woman thing until you find that individual, that one individual where you both are on the same headspace and are going the same path. That's the only way that I would then go to agree into that. So once again, it's within self. Hey, Sister Marie. Sister Marie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Do you see the title of the room? Yes. All right, this is biblical smoke, right? So when we talk about men, do you think we're talking about biblical men that's following the Bible or worldly men? Biblical. Oh, so the biblical man, <clears throat> the prophet, they would not be the prize. It would be their wives. Again, that's what I mentioned towards the ending. It will have to be once you connect with that individual. Yes, they will be the price. However, we're not seeing that. Who's we? Well, for me, I guess I, I was. I know plenty. I, I know plenty of sisters that are seeing that. Okay, so maybe I just will continue on doing this. Maybe I will be blessed soon because my experience has been horrible with Christian men who has been baptized. And this is why I'm speaking out of experience due to the situation where you're just like, you're coming into a relationship and a situation. You just, me, myself, just converted, not being baptized. However, it's an individual who is claimed to be Christian and baptized, but can be the price as a man because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So that leads to the woman turning over and taking over and taking control and leading, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Uh, Brother Benjamin. Hey, sis, she been mentioned mentioned baptized. What baptized are you talking about? You talking about water? Yes, that's correct. Water baptism. Oh. No, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Acts 238. Yeah, you 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 you're going with the the water baptisms. You uh, so your experiences is not what is not ex- the experience what Benjamin was alluding to earlier is uh, the biblical men, men that's actually ab- ab- abiding by scripture. So that's one of your first errors is you're, you're attracting the wrong types of men. Well, typically what all, most all women do for the most part, because they don't know, they don't, they don't know who what, the right men on earth today. It's sad to say, but that's pretty much what, you, what you're dealing with now. Hey, Not can, for hey, me. Hey, can I Jay. fix that real quick? Uh, uh, Mari, Not hold on. Me. Okay, sure. One sec, Mari. Look at Sirach 37 and 12. Now give me that one. Because Mari's situation is not uncommon mm-hmm. to most women, old and young. The problem is, most of our women don't know how to find a godly man. Most of our women think going to church, they'll find a godly man. But guess what? Guess what we find out? Once we read the Bible, we find out those men in the churches and those women in the churches are not godly. That's what that's what Marie found out. Oh, they're supposed to be living by the Bible. Oh, it was what this one was baptized and this and that, and he's following the word, he go to church on Sunday. No. Those brothers and sisters that are still in Christianity and idolatry just finished celebrating New Year's and Christmas are wicked as hell. And they don't follow the Bible. Read what you got. 
the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37 and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. Okay, well, the scripture says be continually with a godly man. Well, how does one identify a godly man or a godly woman? Most of our people don't know how to do that. They go to church to find a godly man and it fails. They go to church to find a godly woman and it fails. You got to find a, a, bro, a spouse that is keeping the commandments of God with faith in Jesus Christ. That's a godly man. That's a godly woman. Because that man or woman will have the fear of God on them where they will not transgress his laws and do you dirty. That's what you don't want. But because we don't know these things, we just wing it. And then now we're on we're on this app and, and brothers and sisters are talking about, oh, the man is not the prize or this one is not the prize or whatever. Why? Because of bad experiences that you had with those those partners that you had when you was winging it in life. Mari, you going to say something? Yeah. You know what's funny? That. I have never, oh, to, oh, rephrase that, as of yet, have met any of my partners in church, actually. I'm like, I was in the street, so I found Jesus myself. So it's you did like, what? like, when my younger years, I'm 40 years old. So back in the days, I was in the streets, right? So when you just said, like, a lot of women, that's where we mess up, like going to church and thinking we're going to find godly men, X, Y, and C, et cetera. For me, my experience has not been like that. Like I have never right. found or have went when I was in the congregation prior to me moving to a different state. I, have I bought never that up. Met Maury, or dated. Yes. I bought that up because you mentioned that the, the man you had was baptized. Right. That's this is it. how I met him at work, though. And as us being okay. friends first, right? And I always, that's like my thing. My first thing is God. Like I always, I'm always talking about the Bible and my testimony and things of that nature. So while we were friends and conversating, this was brought up to me. So I'm just saying, okay, so this is an individual, you know, who I see praying, listening to sermons and things of that nature. So that's why I went with the, I disagree with men being the price. And I just believe that you are put in certain situations in life. Like God may place you with certain individuals to be a blessing to them and help them out and things of that nature. However, after some time, again, this is all a within a self thing when that individual is like nothing is changing you're trying it's just time for you to back out and just continue on praying for them sister marie sister marie let me ask you then because that's not your situation with uh the christian church where would you find a godly man at now how do you recognize a godly man honestly if i give you an answer i'll be lying I don't have an answer because I'm not like that's it's a not good in answer. My mind. Like I just my connection is just with God. I don't even Marie. look or look for men or just I just Marie. don't. Uh-huh. Now you just said you don't know, which is a good answer, but it also says you wasn't listening to what I was telling you. I just told you what a godly man was, didn't I? Yes. You missed what what's a godly man says? You said a man who's into the scripture and reads the scriptures. That's Is it. That That's not what I said. It's close, but it's not what I said. Can a man that's please? keeping a man that's keeping God's commandments with faith in Christ. Okay. That's the kind of man you need. <laughs> Okay, I agree. Um, I I wouldn't say need. Maybe I want, but I don't need need that kind of man. Oh, so you don't need you, you don't need a man. No. Nope. Oh. oh. <laughs> I just. So so God is your husband. 
right now, yes, in my season for now mm. until mm-mm, yes, that's mm. just the way it goes. So that's Yo. another thing that we have so you're, to. What's this? Mm-hmm. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Yes, definitely. I am a Christian. What color is Jesus? No color. Oh, now we're getting somewhere, y'all. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Bronze. Wow. So wait a minute. There was a man with no color hung on a cross. Is that what you're telling me? That, that's my answer. No, no, no. You said you read the Bible a lot. So my question is, let's be logical now. Maybe Does I Christ... haven't reached. Hold on, hold on, hold on, uh-huh. hold on, hold on, hold on. Mari, hold on. Was Christ the only human being recorded that had no color to his flesh? Does that make logical sense? Be honest. No. Okay. So you want to give another answer to what color is Christ? I'm not gonna be. A, I'm not gonna give an answer because I don't. I don't have one. And if I give you an answer, I'll be lying, and I don't lie. So I'm just okay. being honest. Let's get the scripture. Revelation one fourteen for Maury. Now you're gonna recognize. Matter of fact, before you do that, give me Isaiah three and twelve ASAP. Mm. Give me that first. Yes, sir. Give me that, and then give me. Damn, I have one in my head. Give me that first. Yes, sir. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people. No, no, no. 3.16? You know what I want? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Bruh, what is it? Um, the, the sons of God. Come on, man. More precedent than, than, than oh, Ophir. Yes, sir. Old, yes, sir. Come on, 13. man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, Sister Maury, guess what? The man is the prize. The man is the prize. Read it again. Nice, and loud, and strong. Yes, sir. Isaiah 13 and verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Uh-huh. E- even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. You see what God said? I'm going to make a man more precious than fine gold. You're talking to one right now. Hold that. Give me Lamentations 4 and 2. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 2. The precious sons of Zion. Who? Come- who? Sons of Zion. The precious. Guess what, Sister Marie? You're talking to the precious sons of Zion. The precious sons of God. Read. Comparable to fine gold. See what God compares the black man to? The black and Hispanic man? The Israelite man to? Not the Christian man. We ain't talking about the Christian man. You could attest to that. You, you've been talking bad about the Christian man. So you got firsthand experience with the Christian man. We ain't talking about that. We talking about the black and Hispanic man, the Israelite man, comparable to fine gold. That's what God said, sis. Now, Revelation 114. Yes, sir. So the black man in his right mind repented black man, Hispanic man. Yes, he is the prize. Give me that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Watch this now, Sister Mar. You can unmute your mic, too, because we're going to talk about this scripture here. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So we're talking about Jesus the Christ. Read Revelation 1 and 1. Go to verse Revelation. 4. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to my Bible, too. You said that was Revelation what? Chapter 1. Mm-hmm. Chapter 1. We're going to read verse 1 now. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revealing. That's what the root word of revelation is. The revealing of who? Of Jesus Christ. Okay, so now we're going to reveal Christ. This is John the Revelator, right? Revealing Jesus the Christ. Go to verse 14. Verse 14. His head 
and his hairs were white like wool. He said the hit the head mean the hair on his head and hair on his face, his beard was white like wool, meaning white is the color and wool is the texture. My sister Marie, let's stop right there. Let's 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 do a simple process of elimination here. Which people on the planet Earth have woolly hair? Us color people. I can't, I can't hear you. Color people. Colored people? What is it, the 50s? <laughs> what do you mean, colored? <laughs> where are you from, Maury? Where are you from? Where are I'm you from? from? New York. I'm from New York. From you, the you ain't from New, no New York, yo. You're not from <laughs> yes, New York. Yes, I am. From the Bronx, nah, from, the from Jersey or something. You from uh, where? From the BX. From the Bronx. Damn. We're going to throw you to Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Listen. R read that again. Revelation 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, so you understand, Maury, that white is the color and wool is the texture, right? Black yes. people have woolly hair. Woolly textured hair or afro or kinky hair. You agree so far? I agree. Let's read on. As white as snow, fully white, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So the Bible says his eyes were as a flame of fire. Does that mean he was shooting lasers out of his eyes like like uh, like Cyclops or something like that from X-Men? No. It means Christ drank wine. I'm going to prove it. Give me Genesis 49 and 12. Yes, sir. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Oh, so the prophecy is all the way from the book of Genesis that Christ will come with red eyes. From what? Because Christ drank wine in moderation. What happens, Mari, what happens to the whites of your eyes when, it's, when you drink enough wine? Black people. Get red. Oh, very good. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. Go back to Revelation 1. Yes, sir. Revelation 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet Stop. like a... Stop. So now, Marie, John the Revelator, remember now, John the Revelator bowed down to Christ. Christ didn't have a pair of Air Force Ones on. He had some sandals on. So he's looking at the top of his feet. So he's going to describe the top of Christ's feet, what they look like. Read that part again. His feet what? And his feet like unto fine brass. Marie, what color is brass, my sister? I don't even know, to be honest. I'll be lying to you. Is it green? <laughs> Oh, well, let's find out. Somebody pin, the, pin brass to the top, please. Can one of y'all do that real quick? I want to make sure Sister Mari gets this because what we're doing for Mari, Mari said you're about, what, 40 years old? Yes, I'm 40. Okay. And 40, you, how long have you been going to church? So here's the thing. I'm not congregating now. Um, I converted in 2016. Um, I was going there to church in Jersey. My church is still in Jersey and Patterson. It's called CCOP. Uh -oh. However, okay. I moved to the state of Maryland. So I'm in the DMV area now. And I haven't been congregating since I've been here. So you lied and said you was from the Bronx. You're not from, from the, the Bronx. Bronx. Yes, I am. Born uh, and raised. I was born in the Bronx, New we, York, at Lincoln Hospital. We, we don't you to Jersey, to, and now we I'm don't you to Maryland. No, nah, I'm in we're the throwing, I'm never from Maryland. No, nah, I'm we're, sorry. We're throwing you to Maryland. <laughs> now, with that being said, uh, can one of y'all brothers pin that to the top? Jay? I'm working on it right now. Huh? Yeah, we got you. We got you. All right. Just again, real quick. Um, and while we're getting that bronze, I'll just, I'll tell you while, and, and we'll click on it in a second. All right, there you go, the image. There you go. So, sis, if you could click the top of the image, you will see what color bronze is. Give me the burnt brass. 
burnt brass. Because <laughs> what you're going to find out, sis, you're, you're, you're in your 40s. And the, the, this has been the Bible since the Bible has been long before, many moons before us. And you've never, they've never read this to you in a church building. Your pastors have never read this to you, that Christ is a black man, Mari. So they're doing you a disservice, because that's what we're going to read to you. That's what we're proving to you, that okay. Jesus Christ, listen, the greatest mm -hmm. man to walk the planet Earth is a black man. A black man, dark-skinned brother, your Lord and Savior, your King, is a black man. I'm sure, Mari, when you went to church in the Bronx or in Jersey or Maryland, they had pictures of white Jesus all up on the walls. Or they had some pictures of white Mary, Mother Mary, and the angels white and all that kind of garbage. That's called white supremacy. Do y'all got the image for me? Yeah, okay. This is interesting because now, I definitely Mari, would like to see this. Very good, Marie. Now, look at the top, click the link at the top, and press go to link. And tell me what color that is. That's burnt brass. Now, read Revelation 115 again. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. So now, Marie, did you, kick, did you click on the brass? Yes, I'm okay. on it now. Mm -hmm. So now, Marie... It says his feet mm -hmm. were the color of fine brass. What color is that? Like a dark brown. Excuse me? Like a dark brown. Like a dark, kind of like yourself, maybe? Well, actually, no, I'm just red boned. Sorry. Okay. But in other words, like a black man, maybe, sister? Yes, that's why when you asked me earlier about the white, the texture, I said color people. Meaning like us, like black, well, not Latinos. 50s. Black people. Black people. You understand? So Christ, so wait, if his feet were black, remember John the Revelation bowed down to Christ. If his feet were black, what color was his arms? They have to be the same color. What about his face? The same color. So what color is Christ? I... I see where you're going, uh, 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 a black brother, but I just need to dig into this some more on my own time. Oh, you got me so started, and I'm going to continue because I have so to I want you to, I want you to think about something now. When you was in church and you saw mm -hmm. white image, did you ever question it? I never questioned it. Be honest, be honest, be honest, be honest I sis. No, I never. Okay, no, stop, I stop, never. stop, 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 stop. Mm -mm. Here's the problem with that. Let's listen to what you said. When you saw white images in churches, you never questioned it. But when you actually read what Christ looks like in the Bible, you have to question it and say, eh, let me do a little more research. That's a sign of a slave mentality, sis. You got to break out of that. You understand? When Christ, you find out for the first time in your 40 years, Christ looks like you and like your people. Now you got to question it. Guess what, sis? The Bible, once you study this Bible, you're going to learn that your pastors have been lying to you. They are a bunch of lies. Get, watch this. I'm going to show you some more. Real mm -hmm. quick. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Watch this. In Jeremiah 14 and 2. And give me Lamentations 4 and 8. Yes, sir. This is the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourneth. So we're talking about the tribe of Judah. What's your nationality? Are you like African American or are you his you Hispanic or something? I'm Afro Latina. You are okay. You're a La Latina. Are you from like Dominican Republic or are you from well, Puerto so Rico? Afro Latina. I was born in the Bronx, New York. My background. I don't say I'm Dominican because technically What's your father? I'm not Dominican, and my your family is from DR and PR. Your father's from where? Dominican Republic. Okay, so you are what your father is when you read the Bible. So you are from the tribe of Simeon. You understand? One of the one of the twelve tribes of Israel. You're an Israelite, like many of our brothers and sisters over there in that section of the of of um the X, right? So watch this now. Read it again. So we're talking about Judah. 
remember we're talking about Judah. Read that again. Which yeah. which tribe Christ comes from? Christ comes from the tribe of Judah. Read that. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. Wait a minute. It says they, the Jews, or Judah, <clears throat> is black unto the ground. <clears throat> so we just read that Jesus Christ is a black man. Now we just read that his tribe is black. So let's put two and two together, my sister. If Jesus is black, what color is his daddy? Black. Really? What color is his mama? <laughs> Sis? Black. Well, what color would his tribe be? Because Christ is a black man from the tribe of Judah. Would he be the only black Jew? Or would his tribe be black? The tribe will, the tribe will be black. Very good. So you see... You've been lied to. And a lot, listen, I know we can't, we, I don't want to drag it on with you, but you can see what's going on right now by, by these scriptures not being taught. Look at what the Dominicans are doing to the Haitians in, in DR right now. Look what they are doing and have been doing. Look at the divide that is created based on Catholicism and white supremacy, Christianity being taught. To the Dominicans that the Haitians are evil and are not your brothers. <clears throat> you understand? That is all based on what? Christ not being taught in the earth. You know, you understand? That the Israelites not being taught in the earth. Because guess what? Those are your brothers over there in quote unquote Haiti, which is the tribe of Levi. You understand? Y'all are on the same island, two different tribes on the same island, one hates the other. Based on what? Christianity, white supremacy, Catholicism. You understand? I'm going to rest it there. Right. Sis. You just got to do some learning. Hey, I, what you should do. I wanted to you, just mention when you said that I never questioned about the white guy when they had, you know, when I saw the images and things of that nature. But I'm questioning it now that he is black. It's not that I never questioned it back then. It was always in my mind. I just never came across till today that I did, which I love it, where someone has explained or pointed out, because of course I haven't read the whole Bible or a whole lot, lot, lot. So that can kind of like point out to me in the Bible, but have I always questioned it? Yes, I always question it to myself. Why people go back and forth debating what color is God? And I always said to myself, I just believe this is a spiritual thing no one has ever seen until today as we reading these scriptures where you are pointing out. So that means that I myself will do some more research and continue all praises to the most high says, here's what you do email us at biblical smoke we can get you some materials for you to study and learn and figure some things out and help help you along your path all right biblical smoke at gmail.com hit us up and we have a we have a um we have a congregation in mount vernon not too far from you all right what section you in Marie. In what section? DMV. Oh, you're in the den. Okay, so yes, we have not, we have a school in Upper Darby. Mm -hmm. We have a school in uh -huh. Upper Darby, Maryland, and we're going to open a school in Baltimore pretty soon, within the next half a year, Lord's willing. All right. So go, and we got good brothers, good sisters down here. You can get with them, link up with them. Just hit us up at Biblical Smoke. We can get you all the info. All right. Sounds good. I'll send an email. If I click on the link, it should take me directly to the email. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's giving me an error. Clubhouse was not found on this Get rid server. of that Android, sis. What was that? You got to get rid of that Android, sis. 
I don't have an Android. Actually, I'm waiting to buy my Android because I'm team Android. I have an iPhone and I don't like iPhone. I want Android. All right, so I'm just messing with you guys. Sis. No, you're fine. I'm done. I'm just trying to get to this email, but it's giving me an error. I'll just type it in manually. Lying. You there, sir? Lion, you there? All right, we have Peril next in the queue. Peril, the topic is men are the prize, not the women. Agree or disagree? What's your thoughts on the topic, my brother? You there, Peril? All right, let's move to cool. Cool, what's your thoughts on the topic? Hey, man, I, I think that it's subjective to the individual, man. Uh, I think it's about the person and how they value themselves. A lot of people don't value themselves, so they'll think somebody above them, and they'll think people outside of them are prize. If you know you, and you know what you mean to... I guess if you know your origins and you know who you are to yourself, you'll know your value to other people around you and you'll think you're the right. So I think that's subjective. Me personally, man, shit, I don't take from nothing. You know what I'm saying? If, if anything, if I'm a part of anything or anybody, I'm, I'm the one that's either coming with something or if I do take from it, it's going to be knowledge. It ain't going to be nothing detrimental to wherever the source is. So... I never consider myself nothing less than a prize, bro. All right. So when you say when you say subjective, right? Uh, do you believe men are the prize over over women, or what? You disagree with that statement? No, I don't disagree with that. Okay, okay. And you basing it on on yourself? Yeah. Like how you, based on how you think about yourself? Okay. Um, any of the moderators want to deal with that? Because we 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 in here uh, on biblical smoke. I don't know. You been in this room before? Nah, I ain't never been up in here. Okay, yeah. So we base everything on the Bible. All right, so we're always going to go on the Bible to be able to uh, explain to you why we're saying what we're saying. Right? Um, so how long you been in here? You heard anything come out today? Nah, I've only been here about like 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Okay. All right. Um, so long story short, we'll get to the point, right? Um, let's go to Ephesians one more time. Let's just read that one. Stay there. So this is what we base it on, right? We, we're always going to look at the Bible uh, and explain. Uh, and Benjamin, if you got anything, uh, feel free, sir, if any moderators want to talk. But let's go there. Ephesians 5, one more time. Yes, sir. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, and verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Right, so from the beginning, right, it was it was Adam and Eve, right, and Eve was in subjection to her husband, right. That was what was ordained. So even today, it's the same thing, right. That's what we're reading. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So, uh, yeah, the woman's connection to God is through her husband, right, through her having a husband, through her having men of God around him. So that's what we've been saying all night. It's just when it comes to being a prize, the man is the prize, right. So. Uh, thanks for your thoughts on the topic, my brother. Just stick around on the stage. Um, you know, we'll continue to go through things and uh, maybe you can learn something, right? All right, for sure. Uh, uh, Daryl, what's your thoughts on the topic? I'm in the prize. Yeah, I was, uh, was kind of backtracking. I know when you all were describing Christ, I was going to say, you know, Song of Solomon, you know, 511. You know, I know the Song of Solomon might be a, uh, it's a parable between, you know, the love of Israel and Christ. And I was, you know, wanting to bring out that uh, so <clears throat> Song of Solomon 511 was another description, you know, that one could, you know, point to as well. Yeah, that's, 
I mean, we were trying to get to the point uh, with Mary, right? But there's a bunch of color related scriptures, right? Um, so there's there's many, right? You got Genesis 2 and 7, Song of Solomon 1 and 5, but. Uh, 5 and 11, Song of Solomon 5 and 11. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying there's a bunch of scriptures that define color in the Bible, right? So we just went to that one to, to get to the point. Right, I to got get to you. The point. Right, but yeah. you got anything on the topic? What's your thoughts on the topic? Uh, on the topic? Oh, I mean, well, a man of understanding is, you know, definitely the prize. Um, you, you know, not only is there protection, but, you know, there's wisdom as well. You know, I have to drop off in a, in a, in a bit, but yeah, definitely uh, men are the prize. As long as, as long as we are, you know, submitting to, you know, Christ. So. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let me uh, ask anybody on the stage. Um, uh, anybody got anything to say that's on the stage that's been listening? What's your thoughts? What's your taking away from what we've been talking about so far? I know I learned this. You were saying earlier you were just here to listen. Um, but what you picked up on so far? You hear anything stood out to you? Uh, just a des- description of Christ, man, really stood out. And um, um, <clears throat> talking about um, the, the 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 differentiation of a Christian man versus a man of God is very uh, distinct, and I didn't realize that until uh, Brother Benjamin said something about that. I found impressive. Yeah, and I, you know, I I think that's important, right? To um to the topic. Right, because when when some sisters are coming in here reading it, even brothers, right, they reading it and they thinking, um, you know, we talking about just any old brother, right, that's not doing anything lawfully, that's not keeping any commandments, uh, and just behaving himself any type of way. But when you really put it in perspective that Christ was black, and we talking about men who carried themselves in the character uh, and the and the integrity that Christ carried himself, right, or, or strive to be that way, uh, it's a whole different conversation, right, about who's the prize. And what that looks like. Um, anybody else on the stage got a thought? And remember, if you're in the audience, you can raise your hand uh, and come up. Right? We want to hear your thoughts on the topic. Right? We've been talking about men are the prize, not the woman. Uh, do you agree or disagree? So, if you're in the audience and you got a thought, if you disagree with everything that's being said right now, feel free to come up. Uh, Marie, I see you came off mute. Yeah, I had, I'm confused with all this men, men being the prize, and how the brother Landish just mentioned. What is the difference? Aren't it, it's not supposed to be the same with a Christian man and a man of God? If you're a man of God and Christian, mm-hmm. I'm confused there. What's the, What's the difference? difference? How, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any moderators want to deal with that? Yes, sir. All right. Good question, sis. We're going to clear it up for you tonight. Let's let's look at uh, the last two weeks, for example. Um, most Christian men, what were where were most Christian men last the last two Saturdays? Where would you say December twenty fifth and um, January first, or December thirty first? I'll say that. Where were they, and what were they doing? I would say church. Doing what? What day? What day was it? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Okay. And what's and the Christmas. other one? Christmas and Christmas. Eve, right? Okay. Christmas. Now, are those pagan holidays, or are those ordained by God? Can answer that. I'll be lying. That's something that I struggle with too. I, I just—it's been a few years now. I don't do no holiday, but when it comes. To that there, I haven't gotten any clear clarification on that there. Okay. Give me Exodus 20 and verse 3. So, you know, when you look at America, every last, not every, but the majority of their holidays have pagan origins to them. Are you you aware of that? Yeah. Other gods. You're aware of that. Christmas has another god. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, they celebrate Nimrod, 
January uh, January 1st is the worship of the God Janus. Okay, the God of time, looking forward and back. All right. Uh, Valentine's Day is Lupercalia in ancient Rome. Christmas is Saturnalia in ancient Rome. All right. So these things all have um, underlying evil, satanic, demonic, idolatrous practices uh, attached to them when you do the research. Now, watch what the Bible says. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That what, what commandment is that? That is the very first commandment. Christians break the very first commandment willingly. Now, this is Saturday night. What day of the for the Lord is it on a Saturday? Are you aware of the Sabbath day? Yes. Okay. What day is that? It's the resting day, right? Yeah, but what what day would it be today? In this time, what day of the week do you think that would be? On a Sunday. M matter Saturday. of fact, wait a minute. The word. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What is the word sabado? You speak Spanish, right? Saturday. What is sabado? Saturday. Oh, where you think Sabbath? Where you think Sabbath do comes from? Sabbath. Yes, Saturday. Okay, I'm getting there. Okay, okay, I like this platform. Thank you. Yes, you understand. So now let's think about this. Now, most Christians said to hell with the Lord's Sabbath. That's written in the Bible, but they all had Christmas trees in their houses. And celebrated New Year's with mistletoe. Am I right or am I wrong, sis? You're right. Be, on, be honest. You're right. It, it is what it is. I used to do it too. All of us used to do it too until we found out that was wrong. And we 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 had we grew a backbone and stopped doing those idolatrous practices against the Lord. You understand? Now, I'm going to let you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the scripture real quick. Jeremiah 10. You have, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to prophesy. You had a Christmas tree in your house and probably still have it up right now. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Yes, you're right. Okay. So you got to repent. Right now, watch what the Bible says. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. He talked to all 12 tribes. You are an Israelite from the tribe of Simeon. Read. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So God says, don't learn the ways of the heathen. A heathen meaning the nations outside of Israel. Don't learn their ways. So we're going to find out as we read on down, it's going to name one type of way, one type of way of, a, of the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen like astrology. Are, Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. They deal with that. Go ahead. For the customs of the people are vain. So it says the customs of the people or the customs of the heathen are vain. So now. Is going to describe one particular custom. Let's see if you can identify what this is talking about. Go ahead. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So now it's talking about a custom that involves a tree cut down. Let's see what we do with this tree, sis, and if it lines up with anything we do today. Go ahead. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Read. They deck it with silver. And with gold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sis, let's take you, for instance, Marie. When you put that tree in your house, did you decorate that tree? So here's the thing. So I don't decorate the tree. I only put, like, the candy cane and, like, little. I don't That's put no the balls and stuff. But, yeah, so, again, I guess I haven't reached to that point once, like I mentioned earlier, I stopped celebrating all the other holidays except that one, Christmas, 
just well, because uh, from not having all the complete knowledge and i'm being honest okay good good it's good to be honest right but now because guess what in our ignorance we didn't know we did the same thing but now you know better you could go and take that tree and put throw it right off the fire escape I sure, yeah, I'm taking that tree down all the way down as soon as I finish in this all praises. podcast. <laughs> all praises. Keep reading. So now, so wait, wait, wait. Let's identify what's being spoken of, though, sis. We're talking about a custom back in the time of Jeremiah. This is Babylon. Way before Jesus the Christ, they were doing these things with trees. You never ask yourself, what does a tree have to do with Jesus? But what is the point of the tree? You never asked yourself that? You never I, asked I your pastor? I didn't, honestly. Mm -mm. I just, I didn't. You blindly because followed, right? I was, I just viewed it as, a, like, just to be in a decoration, but I never really questioned it. Okay. But you should, because we should question everything. But now, read that, read that part again. Read that last part about the tree again. Yes, sir. Yes. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. Go ahead. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So I guarantee, Sister Marie, you, you got a Christmas tree stand, right, to make sure the tree don't fall over. Read. They are upright as the palm tree. So in ancient Babylon, they used the palm tree. Today, you use the pine tree or the evergreen tree. Go ahead. But speak not. Read. They must needs be born. So you had to carry it. B-O-R-E-N. Born. You had to carry it from Walmart, whatever store, and carry it up the stairs into your apartment or your house. Set it up. Put it in a Christmas tree stand. Right then on December 20, before December 25th, you run around like a like it's a rat race trying to get gifts for this one and that one. You put it under the tree. Then on December 25th, you are going to reach down, look down, bow the knee and bow down to that tree and go get your Christmas gifts. Am I right? Am I wrong, Sister Marie? You're right. It makes a whole lot of sense. OK, I'm going to mute my mic. Hey, that makes sense, Marie. Hope that's, hope that's sinking in. Uh, that was a great question you asked. Um, yeah, fear, fear. You just came on the stage. Um, just to plug the room, the topic is men are the prize, not the women. Agree or disagree? Uh, remember, you can uh, hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter or email us biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. Uh, if you got questions, we got a beginner booklet we can send out to you. Uh, fear, what's your thoughts on the topic? You there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Sure about that. Um, I, I noticed that he said that all Christians celebrate Christmas, and that's not true. Because I'm a Christian. That's Christ not what I said. That's not what I said. Really? I, I, I thought you said something like that. So you did say all Christ Christians, right? I know most Christians. I know certain Christian denominations don't celebrate Christmas. Oh, okay, well, my apology, because I, I don't celebrate holidays, you know, because those are the lukewarm Christians. Why not? Why not? Because they're they're pagan. Okay. That, that's why Jesus, I'm sorry, that's why Jesus says, many people will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, and I will reply to them, I never knew you, because they weren't never saved. What's your, what's your denomination? I'm just I'm 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 not a Baptist. I'm just a Christian. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what colors? What colors? Christ. Well, um, well, um, well. I know he was a Jew. You know, a you know, Jesus, I have seen Jesus before with my own eyes. It's in the Bible. 
I mean, you believe in the Bible? Yeah, I do believe in the Bible. All right, it's India. Are you, are you talking about Revelation? I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the Bible, period. It's in there. But the, does it matter? What's your, fear, fear, what's what's your nationality? Um, I'm Arabic. Oh, you're Arabic. Okay. So what color is Christ? But, but does it matter what color? Yeah, it does. Because the Bible says that God looks at the heart. Not not the 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 nationality. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You are in your Arabic? Wait, wait, yeah. what country are you from? Um I'm from Boston. My my parents well my parents are born in Syria. Where? Syrian. Syrian? Syrian. Yeah. Okay, but you're you're, you're you're Ishmaelite, basically. You know, you you you're Arab, you're Ishmael, right? No, well, because, well, why? Because of my parents, they're born in Syrian. No, you said you're Arab. Arabs come from, in biblically are Ishmaelites, and the Ishmaelites have done a lot of evil to black people. Not, not all, not all Arabs are bad. I say all. Yeah, I know. I know. But as a as a group, y'all have done a lot of evil to black people, mainly the tr the sub-Saharan slave trade, and Arabs are selling black people in Libya, Mauritania, Yemen, um, Saudi Arabia right now. Four hundred dollars. The the uh, um. Uh, uh, got them on slave auction blocks right now. So Arabs have done a lot of evil to black folks. Then y'all go to the hood, claim to be Puerto Rican, um, going to Bronx and Brooklyn in, in your bodegas, selling Lucy's and blunts to the black folks. And y'all claim to be brothers. Well, I claim to be a follower of Christ, Jesus. All right, bro, keep the commandments. You know, I, I claim to be a follower of Christ, you know. Yes, um, God does look at the, the heart, you know. But what that's, what that's talking about is, is that the, the height. You know, it's not about what height you are. It's not about... Um, All right. He was talking nonsense. Yeah, we're gonna move on. Uh hey, see something real quick. Go ahead. You see we got um a lot of um brothers and sisters up here that may not know their nationality, right? Or know the Bible as well as the brothers with the green beans know. I want to show y'all one scripture real quick. Psalms 147 and 19. Never let nobody from another nation teach you anything about God, especially when that nation that's trying to teach you something has in, in, enslaved, oppressed, stolen, pillaged, raped, done all manners of evil to you. Then they want to come up here and teach you anything about God. To the hell with that. Don't let them teach you nothing about God because they don't know it themselves. They winging it. We the only ones that could break down this bible period i'm gonna prove it watch this read that the book of psalms chapter 147 and verse 19 he showeth his word unto jacob his statutes and his judgments unto israel so the bible says he showed his word unto jacob you are jacob he showed the word, meaning the understanding of the word. The understanding of the Bible was only given to you, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Read that again from the top. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments. Unto he said his statutes, his statutes, a statute is a law. He showed the law and the judgments, meaning the penalties for breaking those laws, unto who? Unto Israel. Read on. He hath not dealt so with any nation. 
See, I, I just proved it. According to the Bible, they can't teach you a damn thing. No Arab, no Caucasian, no East Indian. None of them can't teach you nothing about God. It says they show he showed his word unto Jacob, the law unto Jacob, and the penalty for breaking the law unto Jacob or Israel. And he ain't dealt this way with any other nation. You my wife. Hey, that's a heavy, heavy point. Heavy point. You know, um, that's where we get we get confused because we let other people come and teach us nonsense, uh, collect our money, and then and then confuse us, right? And and sometimes you just got to stop their mouth so we can focus on what we need to focus in on. Uh, Shada, Shada, it's on you. Uh, the topic is men are the prize, not the women. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, yeah, I most certainly uh, do agree. Uh, just off my own experience, you feel me, uh, being a man myself, I know how to cook, clean, wash my own clothes, get up, go to work every day. Um, and a lot of times I tend to meet females that, uh, don't really have all those qualities that like, I already know how to do for myself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, either she don't want to cook, don't know how to cook. Um, they already got kids or baby daddies in the picture. I don't have kids, so that's definitely a, a prize, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I totally agree with that for sure, for sure. So so what you're saying is it's not a prize for a woman to be able to uh, cook a meal for you? Wait, say that uh, no, most of, no, definitely a surprise. It's having a woman, having a woman that uh, that does everything. Um, is it a prize or is it expected? It's expected. It's what should be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like the man is to get up and go, go work, make money for the house, um, do all the heavy lifting, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, the man is for sure the prize. Um, the woman is the help meet, of course. Right. Right. Uh, moderators, I don't know if y'all want to comment on anything he said. I just, I just can't get with this. Um, hold on, Marie. We're gonna come to you. We're gonna come to you. Hold on, hold on. I just want to comment on the brother. Uh, see if anybody got anything to say. Real quick. Um, uh, just just look at this, right? Real quick. Genesis two and eighteen. Um, or seven, then we're going to jump to 18. The book of Genesis chapter two and verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life and man became a living soul. All right. So Adam was created right here. Now jump to verse uh, 18 and then we're going to read verse 19 too. Genesis two and 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Go ahead. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So shout out to what you just said. When Adam came on the picture, man, he named everything. He set up everything himself. He was good, right? But the Lord said, you know what? He needs help. He was naming the animals, right? He was naming everything over the earth. And then when a sister got brought into the picture, his wife got brought into the picture, she came up. She came into a world that he already ruled and he had everything all the way put together. So, you know, when, when I think about it, right, and we look at the Bible, we see that the man is the prize, right? Because the sister came in and, and she didn't have to do nothing but help him out with ruling everything. Exactly. Just uh, put her little two cents in to support him in the areas that he needed support in. But, yeah, he already had everything and uh, the him being lonely was the only problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, Marie, what's your thoughts? I know you wanted to uh, rebuttal to what Shada said. I want to give you the floor. Marie, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just, it's just a lot running through my head right now. I just, and I agree with everything that's in the Bible. Once again, it all depends on the situation you're in. And 
the individual. It's a within. It's a self thing. Cause a man could a man is stated here. Yeah, the man is supposed to be the price. However, as I mentioned earlier on the platform, that not all the time that's a situation. That's for myself, right? I've been working since I was fifteen. Like I have everything on my own. So when I do come across some men, they they tend to be like intimidated or like the individual. He's like, oh, you got to bow down. It's in the Bible. So I just listen to things like this. And in my head, I'm not bowing down, not in a negative way, to no men, of course. And we're talking about what's in the Bible, as I mentioned earlier, a God man and a Christian man. When they're talking, what were you doing in a situation and you're trying to help and you coming in, you're not trying to come in as the head. However, you within yourself, you know you the head because you got everything. You the breadwinner, you do everything on your own. So this is why earlier when it was mentioned that I need a man and I said, no, nah, I don't need him. I want, I want one just because in the like the individual that I am, so I think for me that's where I have a difficult time relating yeah. so, to. That so, sis, let me mm-hmm. let me ask you something, Those, uh and, and Benjamin, feel free to jump in if you got anything or any moderators. Um, when you think about being uh, over a man, does your finances put you over a man in God's eyes? No, not at all. Okay, so what you just said there was was. In your mind, you over you was over him, right? You were the breadwinner because Not, uh, uh-huh. because you had the money and you brought the money to the situation, right? The the money don't put you over him in terms of uh, order, right? Uh, right? What's that? And Toby, real quick, where Anna had to work. I don't want to read the whole story, but I just want to get to the point real quick. Toby, I think it's two. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Toby, two and eleven. Yes, sir. The book of Tobit. Look at this real, look at this real quick. So in, in the Apocrypha, there's a book called Tobit, right? Uh, to speed it up for you, Tobit, at some point, right, he's the breadwinner. He's running the family, but he goes blind, right? He goes blind. And because he goes blind, his wife has to go do something, right? So Tobit 2 and 11. Tobit chapter 2, verse 11. And my wife, Anna, did take women's work to do. Right. So Anna went and she said, I'm going to do women's work, right? I'm going to go make money. So that I could support my family because my husband's blind. Right now, jump down to verse 14. Start at verse 13 now. Not start at 12. Let's read 12 all the way down. Yes, sir. Verse 12. And when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. A kid. I think a kid is a goat, right? I got to look it up, make sure I'm right. That's it, Zeke? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So a kid is a goat, right? So she got a goat for her work, right? So food for the family and money. So watch what happens now. And when it was in mine house and began to cry, I said unto her, from whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? So he's listening. He hears the kid. He's smelling. He said, nah, this is stolen. Go ahead. Render it to the owners. For it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. So he told her to take it back. Right? So now, if that was today, and the sister was working, and her husband said, take it back, you think she would listen? Hell no. It'll be all types of uh, fighting going on and rebuttal. Yeah, that's what, well, Marie, I'm asking you. Shada said not. She wouldn't listen. So, Marie, what you think? You think she would listen, or she would say, nah, I'm in charge now. I run the house. Nah, she will listen once again. It's uh, within self. So I I think she will listen. You think she will listen? Okay, read the next verse. Verse 14. But she replied upon me. It was given for a gift of more than the wages. Howbeit, I did not believe her. Tobit said, I don't care what you're saying, right? It It sounds good, right? He said he didn't believe her. Go ahead but bade her render it to the owners. And I was abashed at her. So he made her take it back. He corrected her and he made her take it back. Right? So she never, she didn't stop and say, hey, I'm making the money now and I'm over my husband now. And I think that's where sisters get, you know, it confused. Just because you had to take women's work or because you're making money, uh, it doesn't put you over 
uh, you know, the person that's leading the house, right? It was always the fathers who led the house. Even if a woman brought in money, she wasn't over her father. She wasn't over her husband. You were always put in a place of help, right? But I think that's the that's the battle, right? That all sisters got, which is which is they want to be in the leading position. It's the same issue Eve had, right? And I, I get the battle you have, and you hearing it, and you saying, man, what if, what if the dude is like this? What if the dude is like that? But, you know, Benjamin went over that with you. We're not talking about nobody that don't got their stuff together. We're talking about a man who comes in a situation. His money is together. Right. Um, you know, he got a place to stay. Read that. It's a rock real quick. This is what we're talking about. So rock 29 and uh, 21. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 29 and verse 21. Yep. The, the chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing. And in house to cover shame. So a man's supposed to bring these things and make sure that his wife has this, right? He ain't supposed to be marrying no woman. He don't got a place to stay. He don't got no food, right? He don't got no clothes. All of this should come with, with a man that you're going to marry, right? And that's what we're saying. When sisters start to look in the Bible and, and, um, and understand what the Bible says about how to even pick a mate, then they're not going to get a man where they feel like I'm paying for everything and I'm taking care of everything. That wouldn't even be a dude you look at because you look in the Bible and you understand how to choose a mate. But right now, sisters deal with anybody and then they're the ones making the money while the dude lay on the couch and play PlayStation. And then when we talk about the men being a prize, that's what's in your head. Right. So we got to we got to remember uh, we got to come back to the Bible and change our mindset. Right. When you change your mindset on what to look for, because to your point, just because a dude is going to church don't mean that he has these basic things, these basic necessities that we just read about to provide for a woman. Right. And, and that could be an issue. Um, you know, we, we don't disagree with that. But a man is a prize when he's doing what the Bible says. Hey, hey, real quick. Um, let me ask Sister Maurice. That was a good point, brother. Let me ask Sister Maurice something. <clears throat> um, you grew up with your father, sis? Um, not really. And yeah, no, honestly, um, I was with him as a kid. I left, I was, I've been amongst, I was 14. So I don't know how you want to. Okay. That if it will be considered. Now, now, now watch this. Mm -hmm. Understood, sis. So watch this. In Babylon, the great, where we all live on his Western hemisphere. A lot of our lives are out of order. And I'm going to show you why you have the mindset you do. Why you say, oh, well, if I'm bringing on, I'm the breadwinner, things of that nature. Uh, I don't see me. I think you may, may mention you don't see you submitting to a man if he's not doing this, that, and the third. Something like that, you said. All right? right. Not to cut you off. Let me just add. In there, not only the bread when I do everything, cook, clean, everything overall, just not only bringing in the bread. Okay, cool. Now, watch what the Bible says. Watch mm -hmm. this. And I want you to tell me what you find out of these two verses. Read, read Numbers 30 and 3. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 30 and verse 3. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond. So she prays to the Lord and she's vowing a vow unto the Lord, right? Being, go ahead. Being in her father's house in her youth. Stop. Where's the woman? In her father's house. Okay. She's in her father's house, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go to verse six. Verse 6, and if she had at all an husband when she vowed or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul. Stop. So, this woman went from her father's house to her husband's house. What you notice about the women in the Bible? There's no such thing as a single, independent, strong woman living alone, being a single baby mother. It's not in there. The woman is supposed to go from her mother, her father's house mm -hmm. and his, the father being her head or her leader mm -hmm. to her husband being her leader or her head. In her husband's house. She was never supposed to be alone. 
agree. So when our women are now saying, oh, well, I can't submit, I can't do this, you got to see the games that's been played on y'all. They split up the black family. They split up the Hispanic family. They got us in jail and on drugs, and y'all left to fend for the children to raise boys and girls. You raise boys and you raise boys to be so often effeminate, and the girls to be independent. And the cycle mm-hmm. continues. Great point. You know what I'm mm-hmm. There's no such thing in the Bible as, oh, you could be a single mama and she's gonna do no, no, it no. So it's all of this is out of order. Done. <laughs> it again. I said, sorry not to cut you off, brother. I said, it's not in the Bible. However, it can be done because I've been doing it for all these years with my three. And, and I mean, well, let's now, think about but... this. Okay, mm-hmm. yes, you've been doing it for all these years, right? Now, mm-hmm. how's that been working out for you? I'm tired. That's why. Oh, I'm ex- I'm ex- exactly. Hey, you know why you're tired? <laughs> You know yeah, why? You need the help, right? I know why. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Ahead, I want to hear you. So, hear in you. other words, you're, you're you're not in your divine order because this is not meant for you. Right. This, the life right. you li- you're living is not meant for you. Is is not is is your the the life you have is out of order. Right. Like most but most of our too. listeners. So right. with and, what this does, mm-hmm. let me tell you what this does. It mm-hmm. puts a masculine spirit on y'all. Mm-hmm. With now, uh, yeah, yeah. Y'all are, y'all are masculine. Uh, you hang out with men now. You you angry. Most of y'all, I'm not saying you personally, but most of our sisters, and I'm sure you know, because you're from up north, angry, loud, I'm angry. I'm angry frustrated, too. bitter, manly, masculine. You wear Tim's? <laughs> I do. Okay, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, I think, let right. me let me just bring this back. I think this is all once again, it all depends on the individual, like from my situation, my background. So this is why some people's lives be out of order and continue to be until you within yourself choose to make those changes and seek the right path. Cause it's sad to say we didn't have control with our younger years. You know what I mean? So you were put in a situation in life where you just had to figure it out. So for me, that was my testimony. Just well, here's what you could do now. And sis. just finding sis. Christ on my own. This here's what you could do now. Now that you know better, you can mm-hmm. show your children better so they don't make the same mistakes. Yes. That's why we have this mm-hmm. platform right here. Because guess yes. what? If we don't start breaking, if we don't start teaching our children different. We're gonna, they're gonna continue on these generational curses. That's a fact. I definitely been right. doing that for some years now. Thank God. So that's you, been a battle for me. <laughs> when right. they, like seeing Not me with go that. from hey, the street person yeah. to this holy, nice, peaceful person, and like looking at me, oh, oh, why you don't, why you behave this way? Because I'm just changed. So I definitely do that. Was one thing I do is just embed that word in my kids. Like all the time. All right, sis. Me and my mic. No problem. Um, hey, Mari, man, definitely hit us with an email. We'll, uh, you know, continue to answer your questions. Uh, D Money, what's your thoughts on the topic, my brother? Welcome to the stage. Shallow one, shallow one. To the room, to the mighty man. Yahweh by his him. Masiya, Barakata. What's your thoughts on the topic? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. I was uh, listening in, man, and I just wanted to, to kind of say I, I heard the sister speak, and it just made me think about the spirit of, you know, I'm, I'm 34, and I kind of see, I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> I kind of see um, a lot of our sisters. I like to, you know, there's a lot of more brothers on here that's better with scripture, but just in worldly common sense, I hear a lot of sisters say that, like, when it comes to earnings or, you know, well, I still do this and do that, but they don't keep in mind uh, they want to be the head until something dangerous happens. You know, I like to use the analogy of someone running this house, you don't want to be in front of me then. 
So even in the sense of protection, uh, you know, in divine natural order, the man should be in the front because if something happens, he's taking the blow or he's taking the grunt of it. Um, I don't totally blame, like I say, I know how wicked this world is. And as I uh, feminized our men out today, especially in social media, movies, and all the tricks of the devil that we see. But uh, just dealing back with the topic, brother, I totally agree. Uh, men are the prize. Um, but within being the prize, we got to carry ourselves like one. We got to follow the God's law, statutes, and commandments. We don't have to demand for our sisters to be submissive if they see the actions. If we're walking in our purpose and in the truth, it's a natural order that will occur in the house. And, you know, if you live by the principle, then your woman, uh, hopefully God willing, if she's a sister chosen, she'll, she'll see that and she'll fall in line. You don't, you don't even have to raise your voice, you know. I think it is in Colossians that speak about a man uh, being gentle with his wife. So you don't have to rule with an iron fist in your household, but you just got to live by those principles, those statutes and commandments that God has all through that book. And uh, I feel like that's the principal thing. Thank you, sir. No problem. Yep. Uh... Yeah, we you know we 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 definitely agree, right? When you when you behave yourself a certain way, uh, sisters will fall in line, or you just won't pick the sister that doesn't, right? That doesn't submit. So that's that's the biggest thing. Um, man, got to understand their value. Uh, sisters have value as well, right? We ain't saying the sisters don't have value, but they got to understand how to pick a man with value, right? That's something we've been seeing uh, through the topics all week. Um, but yeah, if nobody on the stage got anything to say uh, on the topic, we'll go ahead and shut it down. Um, give y'all a second if anybody want to make any last comments real quick. Um, but if not, let's go ahead and get Matthew 26. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she have wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done, be told for a memorial of her. So whenever we bring out this gospel, we give honor to this woman as Christ commanded us. Um, so thank you all for joining. Um, the replay will be made available. And y'all can reach us, biblicalsmoke at gmail.com, uh, hashtag biblicalsmoke on Twitter. Uh, follow the room, follow the moderators. Uh, we on Sunday through Thursday every week. Um, so definitely uh, look to check back in next week. Uh, with that, I say shalom. Go ahead and shut the room down.